Bro, there's no way this is what the audio is supposed to sound like in CSGO, right? Why is it so bit crushed, man? Like, that's not right. What is this tin can audio? It's, it's coming through my headphones. I don't know, let me, settings menu. When I open the settings menu, it sounds amazing. It's only when I'm at the, the default screen, it sounds horrible. In the settings menu, it sounds cool. You know what? I bet it's a bug. I bet it's just a bug. Or maybe it's because my, my guy in the main menu has, a, uh, has some headphones on, so it's muffling the sound. We should get alt tab, but keep the window up. You know what I mean? Am, am I, yeah. Maybe I am a boomer. It's probably because I'm on full screen instead of full screen window. Daniel, are you still here? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just. I got a question and preject. Yeah, don't don't worry about that. I think my game crashed and I'm going to be banned from competitive for an hour. No, you can't rejoin. The game. The game simply crashed. I don't know, but if you reload the game. Okay, I'm, I'm booting. It's crazy. They play like million dollar tournaments in this. I think you're chat saying you can rejoin. Okay, it's loading. All right. So as you're loading, are, are you focused on? Getting in the game? Yes. <laughs> okay. I won't ask you the question. Let me let me get the screen region up first. And then I does this full screen window and I can't even access my fucking audio settings, man. My freaking audio settings. Sorry, sorry. Are you good? Give me my audio mixer! Look, listen to this. That's just out of the headphones. Chad, we're, we're, Chad, we haven't even got our boots on the ground yet. You're already getting moments left and right. And alt-tabbing still doesn't... Okay, well, you know what? It is what it is. Here's some MS Paint for you. You're Ladies in the game. Gentlemen, we're I'm in. Okay. You. you gotta respect it, Green. You gotta respect it. Oh, it's so loud, dude. It's so... What is it? da 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 what is that? <laughs> Little kids bacteria grows. Anyways, I, I watched SpongeBob for the first time. Like, there's some pretty serious themes in that show. Like a, a but, van will pull up and be like, Hey, your mom, I don't, I, I, what am I getting listen to this? Gunman taco truck? What is this? What is that? Are you hearing it? Yeah, I heard it. Um, I know I can mute it in settings, but I don't want to go to the settings menu because this game 10 years old It probably puts your address on the screen as soon as you go into settings And then on top of that if I alt tab to turn the screen off then you're gonna see my MS paint window Because it's on display capture because they don't let you have a, a, any third-party apps capture the game In real life you don't like make fun of other people. No, not at all. I'm people like me. I get along with them No, oh, what the heck is this you can't play this song on here. There's no this definitely like DMCA man. Holy cow. That's when it pays to have a mixer, chat. You just hit one button and you it know goes what? away. <laughs> Fair enough. But well, what are they known for if not that sign? Being the first capital, which is like not that much more impressive, but... Oh! What's, what's their industry? Oh, the, uh, they make <laughs> neck deep the low life pack. I'm, pa I'm planting for more money. I'm planting for more money. Oh, I don't think I got it. <laughs> See, but Michigan's called. <laughs> it gets me every time. Oh, oh man. That's good stuff. Go ahead. Oh, what? Really? Oh. Really? I thought you had him. I heard my, my gun go. Peaker's advantage. Oh! 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 So worth, so worth. Oh, uh, dude! Now I got like a like a dopamine release whenever I hear the song. Now I can't even examine my gun. Look at this! How sad is that? I don't even think it's default. It's like worse than default. Oh no! You definitely can't play this. Are you crazy? What is this? Uh, Battle of Thirty Minute New Tracks ride? Uh, he's picked up the bomb. We've lost sight of the bomb. Oh. I am the one, the up. one with the gun, I'm the gun with the one, and the ooh, off me. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
You had to see that little limb just slow walking like a crab and just salivated. <laughs> what the heck is a technical timeout? Is this the NBA? Speaking of Smash, what did you think of the Mario movie? I, I haven't seen it yet. My kid's still in that age where like they can't go to the movie theater, I think. What about you and Kate? What are we supposed to do with our kid? You want to pay a babysitter 15 bucks an hour so I can go watch the Mario movie? Like, what do you do? Like, do you go on dates with Kate? Uh, like, when we were at my parents' house, so my parents could look after her, we, we went yeah. on a couple date nights, for sure. We went out and Here, saw I'll, Malf as well, but... I'll, I'll fix that. Look, anyone in Northern Lions chat lives in Vancouver that wants to babysit, <laughs> just add him right now. Get this guy a babysitter so he can go on a date with Kate. All right, chat. Ryan, there you go. I'm sure. How many, how many people it. just added you? Um, a couple. Why am I taking the silencer off of my gun? What did I click that takes the silencer <laughs> off of my gun instead of shooting it? This is really good content. Boomer CS lol. Let's go. You guys should see how good we are at parenting. In video games, you just see, like, you're like, oh, how would these guys do anything? How do they tie their shoes? Grenade. Little smoke grenade there, I think. In, um... I'm elite at parenting. There's a thousand. Okay, that's just we. That's how we're supposed to keep the whole flood from coming to the riverbanks. <laughs> yeah, we. Got, I got one. I was kind of losing it when we were talking about you know how we don't have time to put five thousand hours in the games anymore. People in chat were like, "That's why I'll never have kids." Do you, you remember if your mindset was ever like that? You're like, I don't want to have kids so I can be gold in Counter Strike instead. I mean, I'm, no judgment, right? Like, no, because, like, I will say this, like, having kids is, like, uh, wouldn't you say it's the most life-jarring experience? Yes. Like, getting married is, like, you know, Changes Richter nothing. scale. Yeah, like, <laughs> 0.5 on the Richter scale. <laughs> having a kid, I mean, it's, you, you gotta stand in a doorway, make sure the bricks don't fall on your head, you know? This is but, I couldn't agree more, yeah, for sure. At the same time, you're like... I don't think I'd want to live in a world with no earthquakes, you know? I, I think that's where the metaphor falls apart, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever run track? I think I've told you this story before, but when I was in like the second grade, I joined cross country. And uh, at the first cross country meeting, I don't know, do you have cross country in, in the US? Do you yeah. Call, do you call it something different? Okay, so I, I joined and um, the cross country coach said, everybody that's here is gonna be working really hard, so don't join unless you really wanna work hard. And I just quit. I, I walked back into the, the gym and then the coach, the coach was like, what are you doing? And you said, well, like, don't be here unless you're all about it. And I'm like, well, I was just kind of like joining for something to do during recess, so I left. Or just kind of gave you a shrug and be like, all right, kid knows what he wants. I, I think that they respected it at the end of the day. I mean, I'm in the second grade. It's time to get serious, right? I must have missed like the day in school where they explain the physics of how bridges work. I would describe myself as being about 50 IQ when it comes to when like understanding why bridges work. Like this to me. I know that this looks like a bridge, but if I didn't, if you, if bridges didn't exist and you said, hey, could you stand on this thing? I would be like, no, as soon as you stepped onto it, it would fall into the ocean. It just doesn't make sense, man. I don't, I, I don't, like what, what happens if you put the triangles on the bottom? Does that, does the bridge still work or do the triangles have to be on the top? And then don't even get me started on the cables. Like the, the cables I barely understand. It also works on the bottom. Holy cow, I had no idea. Okay, build your first bridge. We gotta get a moped across. Did we not succeed? Maybe I, you know what, let's do it again. Why don't you copy paste me? Oh, it's a little longer this time, okay. I understand, incremental learning, we'll do that. I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll put another triangle on you, excuse me. Another triangle on you right here. I've screwed it up. I should be able to move you, right? I'll select this joint. It's already falling apart. Okay, how about this? How about this? <laughs> Dude, it's so similar to the first bridge. How does this one fall apart? 
Okay, re try again. See, like, th this bridge and this bridge look so similar. And yet, it's like, it's obvious that this one wouldn't work, but this one does. That's crazy, man. And then we want to go a little up. The more you can arch, the better off you're going to be. And then you can go down a little bit. Arches and triangles are the name of the game, right? So that wasn't even close. Like, we, we could easily cut some corners on that. And as long as nobody ever drives a heavier car. But they don't make heavier cars than this, so this is, this is fine. Okay, I see you got some steel that don't impress me much. So you got an alloy, but have you got the touch? Don't get me wrong, I think you're all right. But that won't keep my bridge alive on a windy night. That don't impress me much. Steel is an alloy, right? It's not just something that you, you get from the ground. Oh, this is too easy. We're gonna be like bottom 10%. Top 36%? People are horrible at building bridges, man. All you gotta do is make wood arches. We beat the whole game with wood arches. Well, well, well. Oh, it costs more than we can afford. Bottom 8%. <laughs> you know what I'm also thinking? Now just hear me out here. Haters will say it's fake. We're gonna be well over budget here. But can't you just go crazy on the triangles? Like, why wouldn't this work except for the fact that it's over budget? Because we're not allowed to raise taxes. That's not how I want to go. Wood is heavy. Not as heavy as my truck, though. You could lower the triangles. Yeah, but wait, is it, aren't, aren't bigger triangles stronger, though? No? Any, oh, oh, we, you know what we could do? We lower it and then give myself a little arch because that's, that's the free lunch of engineering, right? Is, is arches. How about this? And then we'll simply make your triangles larger. You told me that the smaller triangles don't matter. Smaller triangles are obviously worse. Top 31%. That was just one guy. Find him. I'm on a different level today. I, he will be removed from chat forever. A cable state bridge is a bridge with vertical towers and straight cables at an angle. Supporting the bridge deck. They failed. Their tutorial failed. They're, even the start of their bridge doesn't work. Okay, you know what? Forget about all this. Get this garbage out of here. We don't need it. All you need is to make an arch. <laughs> Stop me if you've heard this one before. And then place big wooden triangles on the bottom. And, like, make it a bridge straight out of Wild Wild West, man. Hey, I beat a new level in Poly Bridge. New level or just arch with triangles again? Arch with triangles again? It's too easy. Top 3%. <laughs> the best I've ever done in any engineering challenge in my whole life. Keep it simple, stupid. No anchors in the middle. Try resting your bridge on the island. I'm sorry to tell you, I don't think that's going to be necessary. Here's what I'm going to do instead. And these are people's lives at stake here. We're going to do like a bit of an arch. And fill it in. Engineers know about this, right? Like, I didn't just revolutionize the world of building bridges. So I feel like they probably spent so much money, like, building the Golden Gate Bridge. 
They literally could Oh, never mind. I guess they handle some trucks, huh? Well, hang on. Here's my problem. I didn't make the triangles as large as possible. Honest question. Can't we just say that only vehicles that are less dense than the road can drive on it so they float on top? <laughs> all right, all right. Um, little over budget, but so be it. Okay, that's a gimme. We're over budget, though. We're going to do what we in the business call a balancing act. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dude, it's like the internet. You know, this is like... Uh, the iPhone, Wikipedia, Twitter, Twitch, and then like this is like Amazon Web Services and Azure and stuff like that. And then this is like local ISPs, TCP, IP protocol. And then this is one piece of software written by a dude in 1971 in a bunker somewhere in Nebraska and no one's heard from him in 10 years. Foundations add an anchor in the river in Lego City you can build from. However, they are very expensive. Mm, they're not joking. That's pretty pricey. You know what's cheaper than a big foundation like that? This is like a perfect situation. I've, I've never seen a situation more archable than this. Arch for wood? Can you... Is that something you can do? <laughs> hey! That's looking pretty good right there. Don't arch the road. It doesn't work like that. Mm. I think you'll find it does work like that. Welcome to Super Hexa Bridge. How does this not work? It's too heavy? But all the heaviness is adding stability. The far left. Oh, no, you're right. The far left is a square. My mistake. That, that, that should be fine now. It's exactly the same. <laughs> Extend it. Oh, too much weight, you say? Oh, really? Top 1%? Oh! This doesn't look strong to me. This looks like a, like... If I saw this bridge, I would not walk over Lynn Valley Canyon. I would be like, this thing's about to collapse. If I saw a bridge arch up, I would be like, no problem. By the way, I, I think I recently discovered that I'm scared of heights. I had to walk over one of the bridges in Vancouver to get back from downtown. And I was like, I, I've done it before and no big deal. But I was walking over one of the bridges. They're probably like 500 meters long or something like that. Like they're pretty long. And I was getting the, like, I was not comfortable being up on the bridge. Like there were railings on the side of me. And like people were just talking, having a conversation like on their phone and stuff like that. I was looking at my phone for like a minute. I had to put it away. So I was like, I just feel like my hands are gonna like get possessed and be like, Ugh! I'm gonna drop it out uh, down into False Creek or something like that. Like I had to, I had to put it in my pocket and just like focus on moving straight ahead. And e also, every time that like someone passed me, I was very uniquely aware of the fact that they could like a big person could just pick me up and toss me over the side of the bridge. I had no reason to believe that they would, but, and I guess at any point someone could just like kill you in a lot of situations, but like, I don't know, the bridge got me, got me primed for it. Let's just put it that way. How do you feel walking across Capilano? I don't go to the Capilano suspension bridge, but I'll tell you, I did go to Lynn Canyon, also known as the free Capilano suspension bridge. And like, me and my dad were hugging the ropes on the side of the bridge the whole time. 
and then Kate was like, let's take a selfie. Like every, she took out her phone and was like, everybody take a selfie. Uh, and I was like, I don't want to like, take the selfie as soon as possible. She's like holding her phone over the edge of the bridge. And I'm like, take the photo, take the photo. <laughs> that was my mom. Oh yeah, that sounds right. But then I can handle like a gondola. Like I used to not like the part of skiing or snowboarding where you go up in the ski lift. I st I'd say I still don't really love the chair, but in the gondola, you're a little bit more insulated, so I don't mind. But uh, the people who are on the chair and they get like, and this is a recycled bit, so I apologize, but the people who don't put the bar down on the chair, bro. And they're like, why would I even put the bar down? I'm like, so you don't, you're not like, just raw dog in your own death or at least like broken ankles or something like that like i get that the bar is like super it's not gonna stop you in a lot in every situation but still i do be telling him to stop being up stop being up meow yeah but like i need the i need the bar otherwise i just wouldn't go snowboarding because i gotta put the bar down i don't even like the part when you get to like with the bar down I don't like when you get to the top and there's like 20 feet where you put the bar up and then you're just raw dog in the air again. But you got to do it because otherwise if it takes you more than half a second to get off the ski chair, some 45 year old dude who's never had a real job is going to be like, get off the lift, get off the lift, man, get off the lift. If you ever take more than an eighth of a second clearing the lift, come on, man. Bro, you're born in the 1970s. You gotta have a little bit more patience, okay? Use hydraulics to create a drawbridge on your own. Oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, you know what you do. And then this bad boy gonna cut you and paste you <laughs> oh man flip it where's the where's the flip cop flip flip horizontal with F Ooh. I didn't cut it first though hang on okay let me let me get a Copy me. Flip me horizontal. And run me. It's just that easy. I did it myself. <laughs> He's a genius. You didn't learn anything? Excuse me, I learned how to build it in the tutorial. That's also where I learned how to copy it. Programming legend. Dude, that's what I was thinking. You ever think about, like, I, I'm a friend of the computer programmer. I just get annoyed when computer programmers get smug. Like, I, I can't believe that there's some computer programmers who would consider, like, flipping burgers to be an unskilled job. You understand that, like, I'm sure at a high level, computer programming is hard. And I'm sure making a project is hard. That's why they have multiple people doing it. But like, for the most part, is programming not like just Googling how to do something and then typing it into the editor yourself, but changing the words to be what you named your variables? That's pretty, like, I thought that programming was going to be really hard. And the first six weeks of the first programming class I took, I was like, this is hard. And then I kind of realized that conceptualizing the best way to solve a problem can be difficult but when it comes to like oh it's so hard to get your computer to play music no it's not you fucking google c plus plus music playing library and then you download it and you import it into your project and then you type like play you know like music dot play open parentheses the string of the file path and then you just fucking send it dude Flipping a burger is hard. How are you supposed to know how cooked it is on the side that you can't see because it's touching the heat? 
That's a problem that's hard to solve. They should have like a glass bottomed grill or something like that so you can see how cooked it is. Im import burger. I didn't take programming 101, okay? I took programming 101, 102, 201, 202, 2614, fucking 3512, intermediate Java, C sharp networking, which I don't even know. It wasn't, it was like advanced project development in C sharp, but the professor didn't teach us anything at all. He just basically told us to like go work at his startup. I learned how to make uh, shit in Swift. I don't even know if Apple still uses Swift. It's the worst programming language I've ever used in my life. They do. That's crazy that people are making stuff for iOS if they have to use Swift. Is there something where you can just like write it in Python and lint it into Swift? Cause like I just, I couldn't figure it out, man. I mean, I, well, I could figure it out. I was just annoyed by it like the whole time. Did you have to learn React? They had React classes, but I was kind of, I mean, I just made a mistake. Uh, I had a choice between Angular and React and Node.js, and I took Node and Angular. Because at the time, the mean stack was like the industry standard, but I think that they've now moved past the mean stack because React has stuck around and nobody talks about Angular very much, at least around me. Now it's the Mern stack? Node.js was good. That, honestly... Learning C Sharp was probably my favorite class because we started in Java and then in my third semester, I, I went to a C Sharp class and I was just like, holy cow. It removed all the, part of, all the parts of Java that were insanely annoying. It was like you could pretty much just type English and your shit will compile. But Node.js was like this, the, my second favorite class. I was like, it, I felt like I was Hacker Man's. Initiating a project from the command line and then being able to like spin up a web server and and an API I was like, I'm 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 Steve Jobs. I'm Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs ain't got nothing on me Then I took another Java class and I said I don't really like this that much. I think I'm gonna take a semester off and uh, then the pandemic hit and my wife got pregnant and we had a kid and uh, I mean, you can't really complain about how streaming's going but like that was it's you once you get out of the habit it's easy to stay out of the habit let's just put it that way just go learn bash my school wants people to get jobs so they didn't have a bash course they did have a c course though so i guess my joke doesn't really hold water <laughs> i'm crazy Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, we'll just lower it a little bit. Lower it a little bit, lower it a little bit. Can I get it like a, a 3x speed on the simulation here? Well, I don't know how they thought we were going to get hit by the airplane. Top 15%. You know, this game sometimes is the perfect embodiment of the uh, the mid-cell meme, right? Or the brain cell meme. Super genius. Use hydraulics and cables. Huge idiot. Use hydraulics and cables. Me at the peak of the... Wait, no, I've got it inverted. I'm the brain cell. <laughs> Should be super genius. Just use wooden arches. Super idiot. Just use wooden arches. In the middle? No, you have to use hydraulics and cables. There you go. That makes sense. Okay, give me a second. Let's 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 start here. We know we're gonna want a road. I guess we could try to just do a huge arch. <laughs> but no, we let's let's take an opportunity to learn, okay? And then a hydraulic here will like push this up, and like a hydraulic here will pull this back. I'm thinking. Maybe you're gonna be a split joint. It's not even close. <laughs> okay, so you, a foundational element of every bridge. Oh. And you're gonna frickin' you're gonna contract by fifty percent. Let me just get the arches on here. We're just going to do a 
some unit testing, okay? <laughs> then we know that this setup right here is goaded. How about one of these? Great start. Now... <laughs> oh, man. The comedic... T the comedic timing. <laughs> what did you expect? Like, why doesn't it fucking pull the thing up instead of pulling itself down, you know? But if we don't try, then what the fuck is stopping us from just throwing ourselves off a bridge and giving up and saying, yeah, the planet is dying, the government hates us, the animals are leaving, the aliens aren't contacting us, we might be alone, it just might be you and me, but that's okay, because do you really need anyone else? Oh! Oh! Bury me, bury me, go! Oh, oh, I'm dragging him! I'm dragging him! Did you see that? Joe! Oh no! But this is not. Wait, wasn't Joe, Joe, my talkie, not Joe. Mo Taiki? What did he use there? He's got more speed. What am I. What am I. I'm doing nothing. Uh, just wash me, round one. I should not have even spent a single card. Smoke me. Throw a bomb for luck. Well, well, well. <laughs> Holy. Boomer reactions. Millennial aim. Get you a man who has both. <laughs> oh man. Okay, you got me, you got me. Hide your heart. You won't be hurt, but you'll slowly lose health. I'd rematch you on rooftop for sure. Oh. Boomstick set everything on fire. More speed. We're chilling. More max health. Be nice to catch him. We have not neutralized his, his advantage there. I'm on freaking fire. Go ahead, be on fire. I'm insane. I'm quake pilled. Bro, oh, I'm dragging him. I'm dragging him. Did you see that? <laughs> Thank you, Kovacs. Thank you, Kovacs. Good shooting, kid. Don't poison me. Molly, Molly. Oh. Okay, reload me. I'm cracked. That was a panic. Good sense would tell you to change positions at some point. Oh, sorry, Joe. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Sheesh! What do you think about a little a little rooftop? I like rooftop, man. Run. Run into the truck. Let's go! Outplayed! Outplayed! What? Oh, he slowed- I slowed time. I thought he died because things slowed down. <laughs> what was I thinking? He's good. Really? I need some help. <laughs> okay, okay. Ooh. Oh! Bury me, bury me, go! Oh. I'm, I'm giving everything I got here. Oh! Situational awareness, not so good. Trying to create some space. 
I'm dead. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, man. They should really put, like, a railing on that thing. I'm smoking. I'm gonna make you come to me, brother. Little head mode. He slowed time briefly. Holy cow, he was blowing me away. I think that the turret shot my sticky bomb, which blew it up faster, which might have allowed me to get the kill. Fucking tiny ass head, bro. I don't believe it. <laughs> You're steambagging me, too. That's all right. He used a lot on that one. Don't you know I'm loco, son? Jump onto the tracks. Oh, I thought he was going to be... I, I was listening to... I thought he was going to run out of... Uh, I thought he was going to run out of uh, bullets, honestly. Yeah, well, I'll play rooftop with you. He's freaking quick with it, dude. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We take those. Did you see that? Not gun. He did he quit? No. No. <laughs> Oh, man. I thought we were having, like, good games with each other. I didn't realize that we were actually, like, at each other's throats. Like, when he when he teabagged me, I thought it was funny. Heal a little sends this card to your rival. They baited me to send it back to them. They're probably more hurt than me. I shouldn't use it. Extended my headphones because I stepped on the cord when I stood up. Ooh, sheesh! Perfect time for faster reflexes. Perfect time to become an ice block. I'm not bragging, I'm not bragging! But I ducked under. As soon as I shot, I ducked because they made my head big. I knew they were going to be tunnel vision on the noggin. So I went. Psh, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> also, I've been told, Apollo, is this true? I've been told not to play friends versus friends because people got too cracked. Honestly, it's fucking like confusing to be on a cruise for a week and not have any Internet access except like when you get to a small Alaskan town. So I, apparently E3 was last week and I didn't notice. And then Twitter is, of course, basically essentially use, useless now. So I would just, I'd, I'd get to Juneau, Alaska, and then I'd load up Twitter. And then the tweets were just like, people, these millennial motherfuckers are still tweeting like it's Twitter 2017. Like you can just add no context to your tweet and everyone knows what you're talking about because you're in like chronological timeline. That's not how it works anymore. Your shit's gonna get surfaced completely devoid of context for somebody else 22 hours later. So I just, I get a bunch of uh, tweets that come up in my For You algorithm. 30 FPS? I don't know what happened. They find out people that I thought had like good brains were tweeting about uh, Starfield of all things. 30 FPS? Oh, 30 FPS. Oh, no. How, 30 frames per second? How about, uh, how many, um, good g gameplay moments per hour will there be? Less than 30 in my opinion. I don't know, I've never even seen, like, a trailer. I think I saw a teaser in 2014? 2016? Is the Costco subreddit offline? 
Well, I, I picked a great week to go away. Everybody lost their minds. Twitch decided to self-destruct and then walk it back. There were 17 different E3 conferences and Reddit blew up itself. And now we got the most popular stream on the platform is a man from New Zealand playing American baseball. The most popular game on the platform is Dark Souls, but with Pinocchio. Like, you guys really get... I expected someone to step up in my absence. Instead, I, I came back like uh, Troy with the pizza on fire. Wait, the house is on fire. The pizza is totally fine. Anyway, have I missed the baby Gronk discourse? Well, can I tell you, like, um, I... Someone said, I need your reaction on this drama. And it was just a tweet that was like, Baby Gronk getting rizzed up by someone else whose name I've... Livy rizzed up Baby Gronk. Yes, thank you. I have no idea what it what it means. I did manage with, with the limited uh, cruise data. I did manage to see Baby Gronk is a 10-year-old social media influencer who plays f youth football. He's the number one college football prospect. How, what are you talking? He's 10 years old. He averages five touchdowns a game. <laughs> yeah, but like against uh, 10 year olds, right? Raise Alex. Isn't that his father's job? I'm not. I think I, I raised them. Holy cow. I'm not the stepdad. I'm the dad who stepped up. By the way, you ever want to see the real um, dynamics of a family? Day four of a Disney cruise, everybody's happy. They're going to see the golden Mickeys, okay? It's easy to be a happy family in that moment. You want to see the real family dynamics? Wait till they call you to breakfast at 6.45 a.m. on the final day, and you got to bring all your luggage and get all six of your kids uh, ready. And then you finish breakfast, they kick you out of the restaurant, and you wait uh, 90 minutes in the front lobby until they call your luggage tag. And everyone is just, it, it's my impression, it's not an American thing. This is my impression of everybody whenever there's a lineup for anything. Why are there so many people here? Is this a lineup for the thing that we all have to be here for? And then you say, yeah, and then they go, okay. And then inevitably, despite the fact that they have no expertise on the subject matter at all, they go, oh, this isn't right. If I ran this, it wouldn't go like this. I would have, I understand that this is a cruise company and they do this seven days a week, 365 days a year. But just from a first glance, I think this system is all messed up. I don't want to brag. We were in line to see... Uh, one of the fucking characters, I don't even remember. I think it was Minnie Mouse. We're in line to see Minnie Mouse. There was uh, a family behind us. There was a dad, a grandpa, and a son. And they were just talking about how, like, why does the Minnie Mouse line take so long? If I ran the Minnie Mouse line, everybody would just get, like, 20 seconds with Minnie Mouse. And then, like, they would get the line whipping so fast. Brother, is the point to get through the line? Or is the point for, like, your fucking four-year-old kid to get a minute to talk to Minnie Mouse and take a photo and have like the best day of their life. It's not like you get through the line and you're like, whoa, what was our time, brother? That was crazy. It's so the little kids can spend time with, with Minnie Mouse. And then this dude behind me, that we're on the we're on the atrium overlooking like the lobby. In the lobby, there's like three Disney princesses that are taking pictures with all the kids. So you go see Cinderella, then you go see Tiana, then you go see Rapunzel, okay? They were looking down there and they were like, holy cow, only Rapunzel is still down there. I wonder why. And then the grandpa was like, yeah, I guess she's new here. She must be the lowest on the totem pole. Brother, she's just the last princess in line. When you go see them in sequence like that, inevitably, the, the third princess in the line is going to be the last princess to be there because all the, all the ones that came to her took photos before. You didn't see at the front, she was also the, the last to get to work. Sorry, I'm still, I should be raising Alex, you're right. I worked at Disneyland, all the mascot characters speed ran through Cinderella. What does that mean though? 
they speed ran through Cinderella. It doesn't mean what I'm, what my my animal brain tells me it means, right? I did have the thought on the cruise because you know you're you're seeing all this like you know. Listen, for all the Disney hate, they have produced some bangers, right? I mean, come on, Snow White in 1937, that's a banger. Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, like the, the animated movies, those are bangers. Little Mermaid, they, they had a golden era. But we need a fucking, we need a cool Cinderella. You know what Baz Luhrmann and John Leguizamo did for Romeo and Juliet? Okay, I've launched you out of the map, Alex, sorry. They need to do that for Cinderella. There needs to be a fucking... Cinderella with like gun kata in it or something like that to make it cool because Cinderella is like so fucking boring. Oh, I hate my life. Magic, magic. This man's gonna fix me, right? Like we need, the, you need to modernize the story. And the worst part is they remade it like four years ago, right? But they just made it boring again. He's raised, Alex! They need to make a cool Cinderella. Create a ramp? What do you mean create? Oh, wait, 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 forget creating a ramp, you you silly individuals. What, what if I just create a, a box and then add a little <laughs> ramp to the end of it? <laughs> I see your I see your point. Okay. So we'll draw a ramp then. That's what they said is draw a ramp. And I think they're absolutely right. Then Hey, 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 hey. There you go. Get, just give it a little push, man. There you go. Look, we we built a car. We've invented the wheel. Draw another ramp. What do you it's going to work. You just need to have some patience. It should work. Well, listen, okay? There you go! Let's go! <laughs> what if you made a right angle triangle? And then your platform went like this. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm a genius! And surely, if I drop a dense enough ball on this side, one of these little buckshots is gonna make it up to the top, right? Not so much. <clears throat> Okay, I have an idea. Fulcrum, it doesn't need to be a perfectly balanced teeter-totter. And then make like a fucking satchel. The Big Dipper. Yeah, people people in chat are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just drop like a little, a little Andy in one of these. And then the, the tallest square you can build. We're so back. I think you're right. What about a bigger lever? Someone says square fulcrum. I didn't even... Did you pass sixth grade physics? You can't have a square fulcrum. It has to be a triangle, right? <laughs> right? You can? What the hell? Tall fulcrum. Tall fulcrum. <laughs> Sorry. Long ass lever arm. This shit's just gonna fall over, dude. I'm, I'm back. Ah! <laughs> Even as it did it, I was like, that's not how you do it. Oh, it 
it's it's out. It's not in. It's out. Oh, you know what? Yes! <laughs> 90! I got an idea, okay? What if we made the floor... Um... Like a ball pit. Then... The floor will react dynamically to the physics of the cup flipping over. That's probably too many, but that's okay. So when this flips over, these balls will come... I think we need more on this side. These balls will slide underneath to make floor underneath the cup. Yes. And get them really stacked into the crevasse there. Okay, then belly hook. Send them. Yes! <laughs> the timing, dude, the timing was so good. I think, I can't even be too upset, honestly. I think it's fair to say that my comprehension is pretty low. The ability to understand where to apply force to control the position and angle of an object. Yeah, I'd say that's on the low side. Insight. Wise enough to see that it's actually simple. I don't know about that one. I'll, I'll take my above above competent in that one, though. Eye-opening thinking. I think that one's good, too. I think it's good, it's good that that's high. Aggressive sensations that generate large movements with strong force. What are you, my proctologist? The shrewdness of having multiple functions in one object. Um, excuse me. That's not the way it's supposed to go. Every object is supposed to serve uh, only one highly specific function, and then you group them together into um, more mod... Because it's it's called... There's a simple thing. There's cohesion and coupling. You want high cohesion but low coupling. That sounds right to me. I'm not... You can just put pictures on a screen. That doesn't... I, show me the sources, okay? I don't believe this. Honestly, if it's scary because like a lot of the solutions came from chat for one. So like me without chat is probably like even lower. But I actually feel like when it comes to shapes and a, an innate understanding of physics, I do believe that I'm in the bottom 10%. Like I, I believe that I'm in the bottom 10% of the bell curve. And what'll fuck you up is that some people watching this are probably like, wouldn't be me. I got a 90 in high school physics. My ass got a 90 in high school physics too. It's just punching numbers into formulas. Like you'd have to be stupid to get less than a 90. They give you the formulas. My brother in Christ, you made the sandwich. It sends me when you play Polybridge. I have a master's in physics. Well, imagine how much more sent you'd be if you had a bachelor's in engineering. <laughs> oh, see, with words, with words, I think, like, I'm honest, I'm not trying to flex. I think I'm, like, up here somewhere, though. I think I'm, like, re I'm close to the tippy top, in my personal opinion. It's just that with everything, just like in physics, there has to be a balance, okay? And the balance is, I, I when I was in the womb... The word part of my brain. Probably I was three years old and I got complimented uh, by like a teacher or a parent. They were like, wow, you're so good at talking. And my brain was like, you got attention for talking well. Don't worry, you'll never have to build anything ever again in your life. Just read books, read books, talk, 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 read books, read books, talk, talk, talk. And then that just that one compliment changed the, the course of my entire life. I will say, I know we've done this before. When... I've done, and by the way, I'm so happy my camera's still working, dude. Holy cow. But um, it's so funny to me. Anytime I've ever done an on online IQ test as a 12-year-old, there'll be like numbers, and it'll be like, what's the pattern? And I'm like, well, the pattern is obvious, you know? It goes 1, 4, 9, 16. 
I'm like, the next one's 25. That's a gimme. It'll be like verisimilitude is to actuary as brevity is to blank. And I'm like, bro, that's easy. Automotive repair technician. Then it'll be like, it'll be like a circle and a ramp. And it'll be like, which way will the ball roll if you drop it? And I'm like, there's no way to tell. There's no way for me to tell without wind. I don't know the wind. I don't know what the ramp's made of. I don't know what the ball's made of. I don't know what kind of substrate we're standing on. It can't be done. It's not, it's not possible. <laughs> Can I say, by the way, I get very, and maybe this is needlessly pedantic, but I get annoyed sometimes, well, when I was in school, I guess, I would get annoyed when it would be like, what's the pattern? And it would be like 1, 4, 9, 16. Because I'm like, well, the next number logically is 25, but how do I know? Maybe you tell me the next number. I think it's going to be 25, but it's actually 4,096. Then I got to find a fucking new pattern that might be different. I don't know. How am I supposed to know what the pattern is until I see the whole pattern? With only a few uh, data points in the subset, all I know is maybe the pattern is that the first four numbers are the square of the ordinal number, but then the fifth number is your birthday, and then the sixth number is the square of the ordinal number again. How am I supposed to know? That's still a pattern. That's by definition not a pattern. It is a pattern. Every fifth number is my birthday. The other four are the square of the ordinal number that represents their order. It's not a pattern? Bro, it's a pattern. Just don't, don't step to me just because it's not leopard print that you're used to seeing. I don't know what the implication is there. Maybe that your mom wears a lot of fur coats, I guess. <laughs> but it hurt, right? That's the important part, is that it hurt. You know what's a good example of that pattern nonsense? 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, LTE, 5G. What were they thinking? 4G is LTE? No, 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 no. It goes 4G, then LTE. When is Summit 1G gonna change his name to Summit 5G LTE? He probably sees that in chat like every day, right? From me. You're the first person to ever say it. Let's go! Reddit.com slash r slash brand new sentences. Oh no! My Reddit! Hello, David. 113 months? I'm running the math. It's scarily close to 10 years. Thank you for the resubscription. It's crazy. To th I was thinking about it the other day. This is... There's got to be a joke in here. I really need Summit to change his name to Summit... 5G LTE. So I can be like, I've been streaming on this website so long, I remember when Summit 5G LTE was Summit 1G. <laughs> the joke doesn't make any sense yet, because he's so far behind the curve with his naming convention. LTE is not 5G, LTE is 4G. Brother, I don't know what to tell you. LTE is LTE. It goes 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, LTE, 5G, I don't know what's coming next. MTE? Please Google 4G LTE. I bet you'd love that, wouldn't you? Are you kidding? LTE is also called 3.95G and has been marketed as 4G LTE in advanced 4G. This is insanity. It's like the same guy was in charge of naming that. You know, he probably worked at uh, Sony. And he was like, hear me out, guys. I know we went 180, 360, 480, 720p. That was a big one. Then 1080. You know what's coming up next? A mere 180 increase is not going to get people pogged up. The next one, 4K. What's 4K? It's like fucking slightly larger than 1080, right? It's insanity. Then they got that guy working on... Uh, Naming the cell signal strength. We went 1G, 2G, 3G. You know what's coming up next? LTE. What is he talking about? This guy that I made up. What is, what's his deal? 
Wait till he hears about USB. Honestly, I'm not like a politician, but like, unlike a lot of streamers, so I'm, <laughs> I'm not a politician. <laughs> However, I think if I was running for president, day one, all phones have the same charger. Sorry, Apple. Sorry, Android. We're going to bring you together and we're going to figure it out. Just get it done. It's the same shit, right? It's just a different hole. Just make the cord fit. EU's already doing that. Thank you. That, it's the same thing. With the, like, why, can't we just make the video travel through USB? Why does it have to travel through HDMI? Everything should just be USB, man. Oh, I'm losing people with that one. They're like, that's okay. So I, we'll lead us to kings. We can lead us to kings. Well, this is like, the, I didn't think of any jokes on the cruise. That's why it was so crazy. People were like, I can't wait for the anecdotes today. Meanwhile, in my head, all I've got is, um, I am badly balding. I have lost my hair. Don't know who I'm tricking. Pretending it's still there. I guess that I'll be wearing a hat on my wedding day. I don't suppose it's like the bride, it's like the bride, it's like the bride will stay. But I'm combing it over anyway. But I'm combing it over. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that's all I got, man. That was like a week of me on the can with no internet. What about the buffet goers? It's just the same, I mean, it's the same trip, right? So it's like the same joke every time, but it's not a joke. Like, I just don't understand what's wrong with the people that fill their cup all the way with Coca-Cola and then drink half of it at the fountain, blocking the other dispensers, and then fill the second half up again. You can't possibly be that thirsty. You're walking around with like a two liter plastic jug with Mickey Mouse on it and one of those fucking like corrugated plastic straws. I w I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad, okay? I, I don't want this to be misconstrued as just trying to make people feel bad. But there were also a lot of times in the morning when I, well, like one specific example, I was eating breakfast early because my wife and my baby like to sleep in a little bit. I like to be there when the buffet opens because I'm not doing anything else, right? I'm on vacation. I wish I could sleep more, but I've become like my parents. I just kind of like wake up when I wake up and then it's like I might as well start doing some stuff. But anyway, so I go to the, I go to the buffet and you'll hear like, I guess I'll buy you, sell you so I get a little buff here, right? I, I heard, and people, I'm not sure that all of these couples are like, Okay. Why am I running four squad? Oh, because I want to get the rat. Because it'll be like 7.50 in the morning, and the couples are like already getting snippy with each other. And I'm like, you're on vacation. Like, at least wait till you got a couple of Mickey bars in you or something like that, right? I remember the, the wife was sitting down. They were like, I don't know, maybe mid-30s couple. The wife was sitting down with their young kid, and then the dad was like, what do you want to drink? And the wife like sighed and was like, I'll just take a Coke. And I was like, are you fucking crazy? It's like 7.40 in the morning on a Wednesday. <laughs> Your ass was like, I'm gonna take a Coca-Cola? Not even like a, a Coke Zero or something? Like a, a water, tea, coffee, juice. Like, I just, maybe get, yeah, like, like a, Jack and Coke or something like that if you're gonna if you're gonna go wild on I also I, I was thinking it's so cute like on the first day of the cruise you walk around to some of the other rooms and people like decorate their doors so you'll see some that are like you know my high school graduation is this week woo you'll see some people that are like you know we just got married or like it's our first vacation or whatever and then I was thinking about it when I was at the buffet and I saw this like 70 year old woman just walking and then a, a 70 year old man came up behind her and grabbed her arm and went, we're sitting outside. You need to listen to me sometimes. And I just thought about how like so many doors I walked by were, were like, it's our 40th wedding anniversary. Like it's our 50th, 55th wedding anniversary. <laughs> 
the some situations, I think the door might betray the situation that's going on inside of the room. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm being too judgmental, have been suggested. But I think people, they just go, they go a little crazy on the, in the buffet sometimes. Why are you acting like Chibli? Why is your face shaved like... Chat quick, what's the guy from Avatar The Last Airbender? Baby Gronk? I heard he got rizzed up by Livy. Is that correct? That's a child you're talking about? I don't really know what it means. <laughs> I've been trying to, to parse it. I've been trying to piece it together. I now know who Baby Gronk is. I don't know who Livy is. I thought Riz was when you um, tried to like pick somebody up. That Riz is charisma. So if someone gets Rizzed up, Livy is an LSU gymnast who was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. I thought, didn't they write like the Odyssey, Livy? What does it mean to riz up someone? She, oh, so she charisma him. She rizzed him up, bro. Chad is just jealous. <laughs> I don't I wasn't there. Baby Gronk is like a, just a really funny series of words, though. There's no doubt about that. Don't call him a drip king. It's weird. Now I'm lost. Isn't being a drip king just, I, I'm not... Begging the question, I'm not, I'm being serious with you. Isn't that just dressing well? Yes. Oh, okay. That's not the guy who claimed he wasn't on steroids, even though he was on steroids, and now his new bit is telling everybody he's on steroids? That's the liver king. What does the liver king have to do with baby Gronk? Nothing? What the hell? <laughs> I don't get it, man! It's like talking to my grandparents. You know what's messed up? I mean, Dan and I were kind of talking about this during Counter-Strike. But if you're like 22 and you know all this shit, you're actually wasting your life. And I say that with no disrespect. You're in like your, your mental and physical peak right now. Go fucking like do something before it's too late. Don't get mired in the minutia of this uh, aspartame culture. Okay? It doesn't actually have any merit. It's It's ephemeral, you won't even, five years from now, you're going to be like, I don't even know what baby Gronk is. You're going to start saying things like, I can't eat that, it goes straight to my hips. Hey, ghost pepper, ghost pepper, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, thank you. Spend your time, take, take advantage of the, the youth that is so fleeting. Go, go try something. I don't know. We'll try what? You figure it out. If you're so smart that you know what baby Gronk is. It takes one minute to learn the terms. It's not learning them, brother. It's forgetting them. That's the part that really stings. That's the trouble with the curve. I've never seen it. Your ass will call your grandkid by, like, your childhood dog's name by accident. And you'll be like, what's taking up that space in my brain? Oh, yeah. Baby Gronk got rizzed up by Livy. Is it you? Is it Livy? It keeps getting twisted up in my head. It's a short form of Olivia. It's one letter shorter. Like, you got two V's in there. I guess you don't want to take L-I-V-Y. That's already taken back in, like, the days of ancient Rome. Or whatever. We're gonna get ten, I think, here. Have you ever been to Kitchener? Oh, no. I'm having, like, a moment here. Is Kitchener in the zeitgeist because of Blackberry? You're going to ask me to tell you my favorite stories about Kitchener Waterloo? I've been there. Jamal Murray's from there? I know more about Jamal Murray than I should for someone who's never seen basketball. But again, the Twitter for you algorithm thinks that I love Spider-Verse and uh, basketball, which is fine. I keep clicking on the tweets. Anyway, I have been to Kitchener Waterloo because... Um, Wait, I'm losing it. Have I been to Kitchener? Yeah, I've been to Kitchener Waterloo. 
Am I crazy? See, this is what I'm talking about. You, you put that baby Gronk shit in my head. Now I can't remember where Malf went to university. I think he went to Waterloo. For some reason in my head, I was like, it's, he went to Guelph. But he didn't go to Guelph. We went to Guelph for Hillside, which Malf loves. Malf went to Waterloo. Then I was like, he didn't go to Waterloo. He went to Laurier. And then I was like, if Malf heard me say that, he would go like this. He went to Waterloo for sure. Stop telling me that the Livy raised up baby Gronk because it's pushing stuff out of my head, man. Take one of those. Don't take one of those. I don't advocate violence. Stop trying to gaslight me into saying I advocate violence. So you won't defend your country? Honestly, it's one of those things I thought about. But, like, I'm pretty sure I would just leave. <laughs> If I could, at least. I think, like, if Canada got invaded by, like, another country, I'd probably just be like, I'm gone. I like my country pretty, pretty well. It's got some... It's got some problems. It's got some good stuff. But I like being, like, alive more, for sure. I'd probably fight, but I've got no wife and kids. Well, what the hell are you fighting for, then? If anything, you'd, I think I'd be fighting to like protect my way of life for like my family. And my ass is still gone. If I had no wife and kids, I <laughs> wouldn't have been there to begin with. <laughs> would you go to LSU to? No, I would not go to LSU to raise up anybody. I'm a married man. Mouth went to Waterloo. Mouth went to Waterloo. Mouth went to Waterloo. Got it. God, mouth went to water, water. I'm just, you know how like after you experience a traumatic event, apparently like if you play Tetris for 10 minutes or something like that, it reduces the trauma that you experience. I know it sounds crazy, but I feel like that's what I'm doing with this baby Gronk stuff. Every time someone says baby Gronk, I just have to like picture like a memory from earlier in my life so that I, uh, push I don't let the baby Gronk stuff in at the expense of my earlier memory it's, so to answer your question yes I rode the Peloton this morning <laughs> that's all I'm trying to say here holy cow did it kind of suck yeah it wasn't great I think the output was like probably just over a thousand in 90 minutes hang on chat I'm gonna need you to do some mental arithmetic here okay Okay, you ready for this one? It's 363 plus 330. So that's 693 plus 316. Stone cold. That wasn't on purpose, I promise. It's 900 plus 109. Is that 1,009? It's 1,009. A little bit under the average for 90 minutes, but um, considering we were coming back from being away, I'm not going to cry about it. Baby Gronk would beat you for sure? I don't think so. I think probably I would have. I mean, Baby Gronk, I don't know, like, his kinematics or whatever, but he's, like, 10 years old, right? I just don't feel like he has the right kind of, like, levers to compete with a, a grown man like me on the on the Peloton. I think, I think you're right. I think I would wash that fraud. He gets five touchdowns a game. I, it, it's just, I'm telling you, it's not, there's no chance. If I played football against 10-year-olds, I bet I would get like 100 touchdowns a game. And I'll tell you, I'm not playing wide receiver or tight end because I don't want some little kid messing up the throw. I'm playing quarterback, and as soon as I get the snap, I'm just running it long. That's it. You know how many 10-year-olds it would take to knock me over in, in pads? If they could even... I mean, listen, I'm just going to be straight with you. There's probably two 10-year-olds in every fifth grade class that could even catch me. So already we're looking pretty good. And then I think they would both have to hit me at the same time, quite frankly. I think I, it would, I would dominate. Baby Gronk toasts me. Baby Gronk doesn't even stand a chance. Hello, Chibli, by the way. Hello. There, it's no shot. They should make a football league where grown men play against children.
Like, what about like the the sticky? <laughs> it, oh, the, I forgot South Park already did it. It's so embarrassing in the modern day when you realize you stole a joke from South South Park. Let's just pretend I invented it. It's better this way. But what if you had like the team that won the Iowa State championships for like little league football go up against the uh, Kansas City Chiefs? That'd be crazy, man. Are you back on the Peloton? Of course I'm back on the Peloton. Three rides yesterday. I don't even remember. No, I do. 30-minute Leanne Hainsby New Wave ride. 30-minute Dennis Morton Classic Rock ride. 30-minute... Any lore masters in chat? What was that third ride yesterday? I can't remember. And then today, 30-minute Arms and Shoulders. 20-minute Core. 30-minute Sam Yo Hidden Hills. You can't not come back because if you don't come back and do the thing then you're not going to do the thing anymore you just had a week of not doing the thing you got to go do the thing and like Angela Bassett exactly how do you find the time I fucking wake up way earlier than I need to that's the big one even when I'm tired I wake up that's it all you got to do is uh I don't know set five alarms no, the key is definitely waking up in the morning not feeling like P. Diddy. Well, I don't know, because like when Kesha says she woke up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy, I always thought that that meant that she was hungover from partying. But now that I think about it logically, I feel like P. Diddy probably wakes up feeling pretty good. He was successful. He, he still is successful. He's done very well for himself financially. He's a family man. He was in Get Him to the Greek. I don't know why I'm talking as if I'm on that game show. P. Diddy, Get Him to the Greek. P. Diddy, uh, Mo Money, Mo Problems. Bad Boys Entertainment. Uh, Get Him to the Greek. Russell Brand. Um, uh, pay Sting $5,000 a day. I'll be watching you. I thought it was a hangover too. What the, the Genius Kesha TikTok. Let's see what Rap Genius has to say. You ever notice that Genius is the slowest loading website on the internet? What's up with that? You mining bitcoins, you little shit? Wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. The song starts with the iconic statement where the speaker declares she wakes up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy, a famous rapper. Kesha, the author of the lyrics, takes pride in her country roots that have taught her to tell a story through music. This is long, by the way. But the reason for placing this phrase as the opening of the song goes beyond mere chronological order. Much like George Orwell's All the Clocks Were Striking 13 in 1984, the comparison between the speaker, a woman, and a rich black man is striking enough to set the tone for the rest of the song. I've always thought that. The same tone of irony that makes everything seem out of place is what drives the underlying theme of the song, the duality of what is felt and what is expressed. The speaker is hungover from a night of late partying and wakes up confused, hazed, and feeling like a rap mogul instead of her true self. And given her possibly hungover status, she's even Puffy, Diddy's nickname. Holy cow! In an interview to Esquire, Kesha explains the literal non-metaphorical meaning of her first line. One morning, I just woke up and I live in this house with I don't even know how many roommates. It's this Laurel Canyon house with seven rooms and roommates fluctuating monthly. Well, it was the house the Eagles recorded Hotel California in. So it's this huge hippie dot, dot, dot. There are a bunch of hippies who come in and out, and there's all these people sleeping on the couches. I don't really care. I don't mind it. But I woke up one day after we went to a party, and I was surrounded by 10 of the most beautiful women you've ever seen. And I was like, I'm P. Diddy. There's no man like this in the entire world. So that became the first line of the new single, and we just went from there. As is explained in the refrain, this song as a whole is a nod to the Beastie Boys' Fight for Your Right. The first line of TikTok alludes to the first line in the Beastie Boys song, You wake up late for school. That in turn follows a longer standing tradition of starting lines. Some blues songs start with the phrase, I woke up this morning, before listing a list of woes and tragedies in a godless abandoned world. This traces back further to the starting statement, The Lord woke me up this morning, that is recurrent in black gospel music. 
The book Woke Me Up This Morning, Black Gospel Singers and the Gospel Life explains this trope at length. It's no coincidence that both Kesha and the Beastie Boys allude to this phrase along with their own take on it. As they, white artists, are entering a black-dominated music genre, namely rap and hip-hop, having this connection establishes their recognition of hip-hop roots and acknowledges the rich tradition that precedes them. Holy hell, dude! Kesha is a damn genius. I thought it was just like a song. I didn't realize it was uh, the circle of life unifying and also pushing forward the history and tradition of black gospel music. Just in the line, wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy, which has layers because her face is puffy too. Before I leave, brush my teeth with a bottle of Jack. This line oddly caused a bit of controversy, enough to such where Kesha had to respond. Everyone's really offended by the Jack Daniels line in TikTok, she said. But come on, brushing your teeth with Jack Daniels? Who, what girl does that? People are like, do you really advocate brushing your teeth with bourbon? I'm like, yes, actually I do. Every day for everybody, especially eight-year-olds. I mean, what are you talking about? Of course I don't. Come on. So true. She plus two'd them. I'm talking about everybody getting crunk, crunk. Boys try to touch my junk, junk. Crunk means crazy or hyped up, also an allusion, of course, to the crunk genre. With any luck, they were drinking out of crunk cups. I know what crunk means, okay? I was, I was 16 in 2004, which means that I thought that college students said crunk unironically, which means they probably did in 2003, but then by 2004, they were like, that's old. That's an old meme. We didn't know what memes were back then, but they were like, they were saying it ironically back then. By the way, I'm sorry to- I know everybody's very excited because, um, Armored Core 6 previews just happened. One of the reasons I was away is that I was invited to, uh, Tokyo to play the game as one of the noted From Software influencers. I mean, many people are saying that I was the only person playing Dark Souls 2. And that if it weren't for me, they probably would have just stopped there because they thought it was perfect. And I said, no, 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 there's a few things you could change. Hey, do you ever consider adding, like, a cool boss? Like, uh, Slave Knight Gale? So you're welcome for that, by the way. I guess I shouldn't have stomped. What, what are you- what are you even here? They invited me. I'm sorry to say that, much to my surprise, it's literally, and I don't mean figuratively, it's literally- and I had 45 minutes hands-on with it. It's literally just mech assault for the Xbox One. Not the Xbox One, the first Xbox. I don't know how they got away with it. It's... It, when it boots up, it literally just says Mech Assault. I'm not talking about Steel Battalion with the controller, either. I'm talking about Mech Assault. That sounds kind of sick. Something, something, you're the reason we can't have nice things in games anymore. Something, the games industry was so much better in 2016 when we were uh, exclusively complaining about how much better the games industry was in 2011 when we were too busy complaining about how much better the games industry was in 2005 when we were too busy complaining about how much better the games industry was in 1998, which was maybe actually the peak, but we were still complaining about how much better it was in 1994. Funky smelling cave. Lion King or Forrest, Forrest Gump? I mean, that's not even... That's fucked up. That's a tough question. I mean, Forrest Gump is like... The Lion King, I think, is just... In my opinion, a movie mostly for kids that maybe gets a little bit too much credit for nostalgia. Forrest Gump is actually, like, actively insulting to the viewer's intelligence, I think. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you. If you... And I gotta pause for this take. If you hate Marvel stuff, but you like Forrest Gump, you're a little bit of a hypocrite. Because Forrest Gump is like the first Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. It's a movie where, like, the principal reason you watch it is to have, like, the president show up on screen and be like, Yo, that's Richard Nixon! I know that guy! Dun, 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 dun! Mr. Nixon, we're building a team. That's the Vietnam War! That's the Vietnam War! I remember that! <laughs> And if you disagree with that, well, like, you're entitled to your opinion. I'm mostly just trying to fill five hours of content here. And then go home and ride horses. Imagine if Forrest Gump was in the Avengers. I'll t I'm telling you, Forrest Gump was in the Avengers. That's the plot of Forrest Gump 2. He was actually there when the Sokovia Protocols were signed. Sorry, are you even a real Marvel fan? The Sokovia Accords? 
Tell the story about the kid who wanted weed. I can't believe I went this long without telling it. I was walking, uh, I, had, I don't want to brag, but it actually makes the story better that I was on my way to the bank. And I, I just like, when I was crossing the street, I just saw a kid, and he just didn't look like he fit in with where he was standing. Like, he, he looked like, I'm trying to think of the right way to describe it. It's non-offensive, but like, it wasn't like he was in the financial district you know, dressed in like all Rick Owens or something like that, you know? I'm just, it's it's more like I just, it, I took note of him as a character while I was crossing the street. And then I, uh, I got over to him and he stepped out, not in front of me, but like adjacent to me and said, hey man. And I looked up and I said, hey, what's up? And he said, would you go into the dispensary and buy me some weed? And I just said, nah, dude. And then I kept walking. But I really did take it as, like, an incredible compliment. Because I was like, holy cow, there were a lot of people crossing the street. And this guy chose me. How old was he? He was, he was under 18, obviously, or 19. I don't know how old you have to be to, to buy weed in Canada. Because it was made legal when I was, like, already 45 or whatever. But, like, for real, I, I took it as, like, a little bit of a compliment. He thought I was the coolest looking person on the street in the cohort of people that crossed the street at that exact time. And when you're on the street, depending on the street, I bet you are definitely in the top three. Cool looking dudes on the street. Depending on the street. Anyway, I said no, because like... But the, the, the tweet where I said why I said no was also true. One of the... Oh, that's pretty good. One of the reasons I said no was because, like, I'm not gonna catch, like, a fine or something like that. Or, or worse, like, buying weed for a 15-year-old kid. The other thing was that I've never even been to a marijuana dispensary myself. So, like, I don't know what goes on in those stores. I'm too intimidated to go into them even myself. If I was going to go in and get over that anxiety, it would be to buy myself some weed. It wouldn't be to buy a stranger some weed. But, like, I'm not even going in for my own benefit. I'm definitely not going in for the benefit of somebody else that could also, like, you know, land me with a, with a rap sheet. You just walk in and say what you want? Okay, what do I want? Excuse me. Excuse me, sir, who looks like Timothy Chalamet. Six foot four, 110 pounds. Full sleeve tattoo of Naruto. I would like one weed, please. I don't want to say like, hey, what, what weed would you recommend for like a 34 year old dad who doesn't partake? Because then they're just going to sell me some shit like CBD that doesn't work anyway. Tell him you want to go wild? I don't want to go wild. <laughs> Protect this boot. Protect this boot. Defend on stomp. Health jars bombardment. More ammo. Give me, give me stomp synergies, man. I be stomping. You guys remember Backpack Kid? You don't remember Backpack Kid? In many ways, he was kind of the original baby Gronk, I would say. A lot of people aren't ready for that yet. I don't want to go off on a rant here, but does anybody else think that Baby Gronk is just Backpack Kid for the post-Fortnite generation? Stop moving, it makes you harder to hit. With my Porco Grenade. Hey, is this anything? You know Un Poco Loco from Coco? How, but you also know Porco Rosso? Un poco rosso, un poco de di di rosso. The planes that you are flying, the tears that we are crying. Uh, you're only un poco rosso. Is this anything? Is this something? Un poco rosso. I'm being told it's not anything. Yeah, you guys probably would have told me to call you would have told Radiohead to call their album like not okay computer too
It's good, it's good. Thank you. I, I knew it! I don't know why everyone is doth protesting too much. There's ammo too, huh? Beacon barrage during battle? I, I can't do that right now, I'm scared. Bo is afraid? Yeah, and I'm horny. You don't see me making a three and a half hour long movie about it. What? I'm bringing the joke back! I'm saving the party, brother! Where's my boss at? Am I not on this room? Is the, it says the boss is here. Are they sleeping? They were just chilling. Me when I'm trying to find my lifted Dodge Ram 1500 in the Home Depot parking lot. Where is that large? This is not my large automobile. So, wait, we can make this work. Is this anything? Me when I'm driving my least BMW and I don't know how to let other people know that I'm about to make a left turn and cut them off. How do I work this? Me when I accidentally fall asleep in my shed. I may find myself living in a shotgun shed. Borat singing, listen, we're, we're gonna get to something eventually here. Borat singing once in a lifetime. This is my beautiful wife, not letting the days go by. Let the potassium mold you down. Oh man, that could be good. That could work, man. Borat doing once in a lifetime at karaoke. That could go somewhere. There's gotta be something, man. This week's top 30. This week's Steam Weekly top 30. Sporkle. Great and perfectly balanced as all things should be. Yesterday we played intelligent things I'm really bad at. Today let's play intelligent things that I'm a little better at. But the intelligent things that I'm better at is mostly just like um, recognizing celebrities' faces. It's perfect. Can you sing some more of it? Some more of what? Some more of this week's Steam Weekly Top 30. I don't remember like what else they say. I do always remember that Rick Dees was like a 92 year old man with an incredibly smooth voice. And always say like ridiculous things. You know, much like the three young women in today's song, I'm also sick of paying my automobiles. Number five, Destiny's Child, Bills, Bills, Bills. Rick D's in the weekly top 40. I must confess, before I heard this young man's song, I didn't even know what one of these was, but now I do. And I've got dumps like a truck. This is Cisco with the thong song, number 39. They do yell yeah a lot, don't they? Hang on. Rick D's and the weekly top 40. Rick Dees is not 90. Rick Dees is fucking, like... He's 73. Okay, let's... <laughs> is anybody else a degenerate like me? No matter why I look up a person on Wikipedia, the first thing I do is look at how many spouses they had. <laughs> There's something wrong with me. That's so me? It's crazy. I, I can look up, like, you know... Benito Mussolini, and it'll be like, oh, married four times, huh? I mean, I knew he was a bad guy, but then you talk about a red flag. Now I find out Rick D's wife, Julie D's, what a name, is an American retired voice actress best known for her work as Jeannie in the animated version of Jeannie, Bubbles and Jabberjaw, and Baby Smurf and Sasset in the Smurfs. It's, can you imagine being a fly on the wall for a conversation at the D's household? Rick D is slipping into his trademark silky smooth honeyed radio voice and his wife Julie D's alternating between Jabber Jaws, Bubbles, and Baby Smurf from the Smurfs. It's like, uh, what's the guy from Police Academy? You know the one I'm talking about. The guy who goes, <laughs> Michael Winslow. It's like being in Michael Winslow's therapy session. Coming up at number one, Somebody That I Used To Know by Gotya. Take it away. I think I could do well on the radio. 
I mean, I feel like to be a radio host, you don't have to actually be good at anything but talking, which pretty much describes my resume. I think if, uh, you have to be good at talking, and then like if you do the morning show, you have to be good at waking up at 3 a.m., which I think I could absolutely do. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Morning Commute. We are sponsored by, insert name of local auto mall here, the best place and also coincidentally the only place in town to buy Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge vehicles. Coming up next, 45 minutes of nonstop music where I hit a button and lean back in my chair. My name's Mustache Mike, and I'll see you at 11. All right, caller, you're on the air. Yo, is this the real mustache, Mike? I fucking love your shit, dude. Your shit makes my life so... Thank you, thank you so much. I love when you play Even Flow by Pearl Jam, followed by Heart Shaped Box by Nirvana, followed by Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden. You're the only person on Earth who could do that. I know, I know, I bet... It's crazy that this is like wasting time that I could be streaming something, but it's so much harder than actually streaming. Like a game. Where you just turn into Rainbow. Tick, tick. Yeah, that's Ben Affleck and Renee Zellweger. Tick, tick, click. Got it. Click, click. That's Claire Danes at the premiere for uh, the season finale of My So-Called Life. Click, click. <laughs> click, click. Yep, that's Amy Adams' mouth. <laughs> click. That's Bryce Dallas Howard. Wait, no, scratch that. That's Jessica Chastain. Puzzle out the NBA team. From the pictorial clue. <laughs> mm, okay, I can do this. I can do this. This is like classic concentration. These are the Boston Cell Ticks. Sorry, they want the full legal name. They want it spelled correctly as well. This is Los... Angeles Lakers. Los Angeles Lakers. Okay. This is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Okay. I'd be insane at classic concentration. This is the Washington Wizards. Too easy. This is the bag, sheep, man, toe, sacra sacramento kings. <laughs> this is the chop land. <laughs> Carmen car. This is the... Is it Portland Trailblazers? It doesn't. I'm just like I, not, this. Doesn't make sense to me because it's maybe it's not land. Maybe it's plain. Maybe it's chop plain. Chop plain. <laughs> I gotta pass this one for a second. I can't get there. It's the it's the chop land sedans. It's the Utah Jazz. It's the... I'm going over it in my head. I got four minutes. Let's... let's. The temptation is just give up and take your, you know, 92. But we're going to go for it, okay? We're going to go for it. We're going to think of team names. It's not the Brooklyn Nets. It's not the... Is it the... It's not the Detroit Pistons. You should probably type it, but it's not it. It's not the Oklahoma City Thunder... It's not the Grizzlies, Memphis Grizzlies, Dallas Mavericks, Miami Heat. I'm sounding it out like a like an asshole. <laughs> My brain's like, give up, give up, give up. Cars, cars, used cars, used cars. It's the Milwaukee Bucks. It's the Toronto Raptors. It's the Chicago Bulls. It's the 
split land. It's the chop land. It's the axe land. It's the Dallas Mavericks. It's the San Antonio Spurs. It's the <laughs> Golden State Chop Land. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's the Cutland Golfs. Is that a Volkswagen Golf? Sedan. Sedan. Who's this guy, man? It's like the Marquis de Sade or something. I'm I'm dying. I'm imagining a map of the United States of America. It's the Phoenix Suns. It's the... Is it Oklahoma City Thunder? Oklahoma City Thunder? That was like, it's, he's cutting oak, and then those cars are obviously called the Thunder. Don't give up. Don't give up. Fight it. It's the Philadelphia 76ers. It's the... I'm starting to run out of names, man. Celtics, Lakers, Bucks, Timberwolves. We already did that, right? Minnesota Timberwolves. Splitland. Splitland Passats. I got I got a I got to ax it, man. Cleveland Cavaliers. Cleveland. <laughs> That hurts. What's the average? 67? Said chop land. I, I said a lot of stuff. Split land. Lost to Ohio. It hurts, man. Given a number... Oh, dude, this should be good. Given a number and a formula made up of its digits, can you calculate the number's square root from it? I kind of like arithmetic. I don't really like math, but I like arithmetic. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 81 is 9. Okay, that's what you're looking for. 40 plus 8. Wait, the square root of... Wait, is it, is it just... It's just do the math on the screen. <laughs> Listen, they're going to get harder, okay? They're going to get harder. Okay, 486 minus 100. 386. <laughs> Excuse me? Excuse me? 486 minus 91. Oh, I have to hit next. Right. My mistake. 386. <laughs> 716 minus 150. It's 566. Nope. It's not. It's you're, you're mistaken. I'm mistaken. Am I mistaken? It's fifty times three. Fifty times three is one hundred and fifty. Seven sixteen minus one hundred and fifty. Six sixty six minus one hundred. It's five sixty six. It's a factorial. Oh, I thought it was just excited. <laughs> okay, 621 minus 90, 731. What have I done this time? I'm just typing it out again. 621 minus 81 minus 9. 621 minus 90. Is 630? Am I? <laughs> it's not 630. <laughs> Take one off. Come 640 minus 9. 631. Have I lost my mind? Wait, why would it be higher than 6? It's 531. <laughs> Good point. 6 factorial minus 3 factorial. It's 240 minus 6. 234 
divided by 1791. Sorry, the other way around. But this is what's fucking me up is that this is going to be like eight. And that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so I give up. <laughs> like the remainder is going to be like a double digit number or something. Still, hey, I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with myself. That's not division, it's Majulo. Bro, how do you get the remainder without dividing it? I mean, we got what? 97% with 7,000 people watching us. Most of the people in chat can't even uh, drink a soda in the restaurant if they think someone's looking at them. I'm pretty impressed with that, honestly. We could do it. We can get a perfect. 10 plus 0 is 10. 55. I'm warmed up now. It's over for you. It's 91. We got a 391. No, hang on. 6 minus 12. 18 minus this. Is gonna be nine. It's not 391. It's definitely not 391, brother. You, you, got your, you got it all messed up here. Give me a 421 minus 6 is a 415. No, you got it all backwards here. 18. No, it's minus 6 is 403, idiot. You're doing a minus 6. What are you thinking? Like I said, I'm warmed up. 519 minus 84 equals 500 minus... Okay, I've, I've lost my warm-up. My brain is breaking again. Just take it a second. 3 factorio factorioed. That's 6 factorio. 6 times 5 equals 30, times 4 equals 120, times 3 equals 360, times 2 equals 720. 720 minus 8 equals 712. 98, 39, Majulo, 712. I'm going to tell you, I think this is a, you write the number. This is not going to be, well, you know what? No, no, no. I'm, let me think about it. It's divided by two. It's definitely going to be a fizz situation. I don't think it's going to be a buzz or a fizz buzz. This is definitely going to be an even number, which I believe gives us a fizz. Is that correct? <laughs> I'm a little lazy for this answer, honestly. Seven going into, I'm just, fuck you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I, no, I refuse. Now, 47 Medulo 3. I can do that. That equals 2, which is a 688. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Think I don't know what a Medulo is. Got 98, an intro to Java. Only kid in my class who could fizz buzz after class three. You think I don't know what, how to do a medulo. I know how to do a medulo, but without a calculator, it's kind of over, overwhelming to do a medulo. 9839 medulo, fucking 712. Or maybe there's, oh, there's a trick for it. In PhD level mathematics, you actually learn there's a trick for it. You just sum all of the ordinal numbers together and then divide it by the cube root of each. Fuck you. Oh, here we go. It's two, 494 times 2, which is 1,000 minus 8. It's 992, 998. It's 494 times 2. It's 494 times 2. 17 Medulo 6 is 12. Sorry, is, is 2. Four ninety four times two. It's four eighty four. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? It's four eighty. It's nine eighty eight. Oh, okay, we got. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, and then the two Medulos. Ah, oh, dude, I'm taking it. That's pretty good. I thought that was a percent. It is a percent. It's a medulo. I'm losing my mind. Apparently, I learned medulos different than everybody else. People are going, why are you dividing for medulos? Because that's, that's the way you get to the medulo. The way you get to the medulo is by dividing. I never even learned medulos. Chat, check it out. This guy doesn't know how to fizz buzz. We just need to find the highest multiple. And how do you find the highest multiple, point Dexter? I guesstimate by multiplying. 
that's just less accurate and slower. You're honestly, you're, you can find a lot of problems with my math in that one, but you can't find an issue with me using the division to find the medullo. You're like, why, why on earth would you ever multiply to find the closest multiple when you could just divide and get the closest multiple? You're crazy. I'm going to start with, with 9 times 15 and then just keep going until I get the right answer? Why don't you just divide and get the right answer? <laughs> yeah, that's how I would have done it. Okay, we're not going to do... We're not going to do math anymore because I made you feel bad about yourself. I understand. This word comes, this word for a friend comes from the Latin for with whom you would want to eat bread. Pal. Amigo. Compatriot. What's bread in Latin? Is it like some version of pan? Pal? It's not pal. This word for a friend comes from, oh, fuck companion come together with plus panis bread <laughs> sorry come together with plus panis bread oh man somebody show Justin I feel like Justin will start calling people companions when he finds out that it's come panis I like the idea that in Roman times, they were like, Companus? Yeah, I'd eat bread with that guy. That guy, I think we're Companus. Oh, man. How about men and their dogs in movies? Female friends in the movies? Can you name the movies that feature these friendships? Yes, this is Mean Girls. This is Girl Interrupted, which is something I would never do because I respect women. This is Scream. This is Moonstruck. This is Death Becomes Her. This is another movie starring Cher and Susan Sarandon and Michelle Pfeiffer. I'm not beating the allegations. This is American Pie. This is Bring It On. Oh, it's already been brought. I simply don't know. Now, inevitably, that shit's going to have won like eight... Oscars, and I don't know that, but I know Bring It On, whatever, this is Taken, don't even like Taken, recognize the movie immediately, never even seen this shit, I know it's Romy and Michelle's high school reunion, Quills, I don't know what this is, Pride and Prejudice, I... don't ask me anything about Kate Winslet's filmography, okay, this is Hidden Figures, this is The Help, this is Clueless, this is that one, Thelma and Louise, or Terminator 2. I don't know, what, what are you, what are you? The Witches of Eastwick, uh, the Buttress of Windsor, Fried Green Tomatoes, I was surprised again, Heavenly Creatures, which is what I describe women as respectfully, because I respect women. Here, I can, do, I can, I can beat the... Misogyny allegations, okay? 30 female title characters. Romeo and Juliet, which I, they need to apply that Baz Luhrmann treatment to Cinderella. There's driving Miss Daisy. I was primed. I'm so ready. Matilda. Along came Polly. Eat my shit. Motherfucker. <laughs> Kramer from Versus... Kramer, it's, it's, I'd see it as Meryl Streep, okay? Who the fuck are you? I don't know this movie. You're, this is Bonnie from Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, no, fuck. I'm not beating the allegations. I don't know your ass. Judy Dench. Judy, she's from Calendar Girls. <laughs> I don't think this is Calendar Girls. Yo, that's, there's something about Mary. That's Mary. That's Lola. Run, Lola. Run. That's Divergent, madam. I don't know this one. 
I don't know this one. Who's this? That's Gretel from Hansel and Gretel, of course. Bridget Jones and her diary. Motherfucker, dude. <laughs> I don't even know who your ass is. Are you Kate Blanchett? That's the, Amelie. It's Amelie. She's so whimsical. Oh fuck. Um. Uh. Uh. Were there like a thousand bounties for a Prime show that was just like this? It is. You're right. It's Hannah. It's Hannah. This is Faye Dunaway in her name. Jamie Lee Curtis in. She's all of us. I know that. I'm not touching that one. I am, is this Annie Hall? Are you Annie Hall? Are you Diane Keaton? Carrie? Jerry? Uh, Rosemary from Rosemary's Baby. Sophie's Choice. Philomena? 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 Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters. I don't watch bad movies. Blue Jasmine, <laughs> Hannah, Rosemary's Baby. A I knew that too. I knew it. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great movie. I can beat the allegations. <laughs> Here, I'll tell you what. There's another way to beat the allegations. I could just do worse on the male title characters quiz. Obviously, that's Django Unchained. Okay, that's Jerry Maguire. So far, is is a little easy. It's Goodwill Hunting. Begrudgingly, Goodwill Hunting. It's no, obviously, it's Napoleon Dynamite. It's one of the most emblematic films of the mid two thousands. It's obviously Mad Max. <clears throat> it's uh, Shallow Hal. This is a, not a good movie. That's of course Ted. It's a life of pie. I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm going gangbusters right now. Is it? He's a title character? This is Tim Knocked from Knocked Up. This is... Is this from the Steve Wozniak movie? <laughs> Wait, the Steve Jobs movie? <laughs> Knocked Up. Sausage Party. The Interview. It's not, it's not knocked up. He's, he's older than that. This is more like, um, not kind of funny. Is it called kind of funny people? Is your name like Tim Funny in that or something? It's, listen, we'll come back. This is Kill Bill. I fucking hate this shit. The secret life of Walter Mitty. I don't like, like, introspective Ben Stiller, okay? I respect what he's done as a filmmaker, and an actor, but I didn't like that period where he did the the Secret Life of Walter Mitty and the Meyerowitz stories and the the one where like his kid gets into college, so he tries to brag to his famous friends that his kid's in college. I didn't like Greenberg going back to Noah Bombach. Take me back to the movies where he puts on a mustache and a funny voice, and then you're like, this guy's funny, and then he takes his shirt off, and you're like, holy cow, Ben Stiller's ripped. Has he always been this ripped? And then you go back and you're like, yeah, he's always been that ripped, man. Go back to that. They need to make a Happy Gilmore prequel where we find out why the nurse at the nursing home is so rude to the people in the nursing home. How are people that watch Happy Gilmore, how, are, how can we expect them to just find this misanthropic guy and just not ask any questions? The people have... Got to know. You're right. I'm killing time so that I... That's Forrest Gump. I'm not going to beat the allegations. That's Scott Pilgrim. And he's versus the world. It was really just like 10 guys or whatever. But as I am Sam, I'm just not even going to touch it. That's Billy Elliot. I haven't even seen this shit. Why do I know this? I don't know. It's for the Book of Eli. I haven't seen that shit either. Motherfucker. It's, okay, that's a gimme. It's uh, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but actually it's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. 
And then fucking this one's throwing me for a loop. What's your what's your name? Oh, this is 5050. He's Bill 50. <laughs> I don't know. Zach and Mary! Of course, Zach and Mary. Have you ever considered that maybe movies where they're titled after men are just they tend to be better than movies that are titled after women? I mean, like, here, we got Zack and Miri make a porno. That's a classic. What did the female leads have? All a bunch of shit I've never heard of. Rosemary's Baby, Sophie's Choice, Annie Hall. Probably garbage. <laughs> Miri's in the title on this one? Yeah, but she's not doing the heavy lifting. She's just... <laughs> It's not Zach and Miri make a porno. It's Zach and Miri make a porno. All right, let me see if Kate's ready to stream. Terrible movie? Yeah, I'm a little disappointed this is one of the ones on the list that I've seen. I saw Zach and Miri in theaters and did not enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it. I loved it. Why'd you see it? My mom got... Tickets from like a contest or something like that. And she's like, I'm not going to see a movie called Zack and Miri make a porno at like 7 p.m. on a Thursday. So it was for like the, the pre-release premiere in my hometown. Not the real one, like, you know, in Los Angeles, but the one where like radio stations in local towns give them away. You know what I mean? So I just went with my friends. Hold on, I see, I see a celebrity in chat. H.C. Justin said, he said, he said, hang on, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, you know what, slash user, H.C. Justin. Four timeouts, holy cow. I had Elizabeth Banks confused with Elizabeth Holmes until like a week ago. I thought everyone hated the nice actress. <laughs> I think Elizabeth Banks is, is well-liked. The only thing that ruffled people's feathers was when she directed the new Charlie's Angels reboot and then it bombed and she said people would have seen it if it had men in it. And I was like, I don't think so. I just don't think anyone gives a shit about Charlie's Angels. But apart from that, I think everybody's pretty okay with Elizabeth Banks. Elizabeth Holmes? Honestly, I'm okay with her. <laughs> Hang on, how am I going to get myself out of this one? Um... Society hates to see a uh, woman succeed, but not me. I am admonishing her for taking some shortcuts and making up her product, which didn't actually work. And like, there were negative consequences for people's health. But like, I'm admonishing respectfully. If a man had done it, I would be like, throw him in prison for life. Because you have all these advantages in life and then you still had to, like, say that your machines worked when what you actually did was take the blood samples and then put them in your competitors' machines and then give them back to the customers and say, yeah, we just used, like, a drop of blood, but actually you were pumping, like, liters and liters into the thing like it was a gas generator during the ice storm 1998. Do the voice. I don't know what, Sonny, I think I lost it. I just don't think, lots of people, Sonny, lots of people make up their company. It's called, Sonny, it's called fake it till you make it. This is like America, Sonny. I have to leave? Me too, man, I'm, I'm, I, I'm doomed. My wife's got a, uh, she's got a, a yellow moon on Discord. What am I supposed to do? You had nothing else to do? I gotta, I gotta record some videos. I gotta eat some damn lunch. Saw it written and I saw it say. Yellow moon means she's away None of you 
stand so tall. Yellow moon means no discord call. It's a yellow moon. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yellow, yellow, <laughs> yellow moon. Is he really playing Final Fantasy 16? I'm losing my mind. All the kids who are like 19 years old. That's like, really? This guy playing a Final Fantasy? As if I, I didn't Google uh, Final Fantasy 7 sheet music printed out on my cannon ass bubble jet at home. Bring it to school in my book bag so that I could put it on my music stand and use that to warm up during the noodling period of grade 10 music class. When your ass was still like a zygotic. You think you invented Final Fantasy? You think the first one that came out was Final Fantasy 14? You give off trumpet energy? I play the clarinet. That's worse than trumpet energy for sure. Clarinet is just is like really rude, but kind of to myself. It's just like a nothing instrument, right? Clarinet? Oh, you mean uh, worse oboe? <laughs> I feel like clarinet is like what you play when you're like, I don't know what to play. You're like, okay, my ass will play the clarinet. Boring ass instrument. You mean big recorder? Self-deprecation is clarinet energy. Please don't tell me I have clarinet energy. Like, that's, that's too far. Actually, you know, I, wow. I was going to say saxophone is worse. But, like, I definitely think saxophone is worse in, like, a, a, a classical music context. Like, it's crazy that in the orchestra, or at least in, um, in band class, there's a saxophone. There's like all these Mozart ass instruments, and then the dude from Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band is just chilling in the back, playing the Quest for Uluru on the tenor sax. Like it's it's just fucking weird, dude. That being said, the saxophone is cooler because it's also survived into like modern music, whereas the clarinet is just sort of like I feel like you only play it in like prehistory. No disrespect to Kenny G or whatever. He might even be an oboist for all I know. Like let me put it this way: Steely Dan doesn't say. Learn to use the clarinet. I play just what I feel. My ass was a trombone player in orchestra. Six years of going boom, 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 boom. <laughs> right, that's kind of sick, though. My wife uh, majored in performance of music in the oboe, and she said, like, the, the brass players have the most fun. Like, if you're first chair violin, you're an oboist, or you're, like, you know... The, the queen of the flute section or whatever. Like, you gotta take it pretty seriously. But she said the brass players were pretty much getting ripped, like, before performances. Well, the night before performances, anyway. As a tuba, I can confirm. I'm sure you still need, like, great pulmonary strength. But you do be going a lot of, like, boom, 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 boom. In, like, seventh grade. You know, sometimes you do, like, a school, uh, like, a class performance. I don't know why. I'm trying to think of what the word you would use for it is. Well, like I was, <laughs> now it's like even more embarrassing. I was in um, like an accelerated program in grade seven and grade eight. So sometimes like my seventh grade and eighth grade classes, which were combined, would do like a concert for all the parents. And you'd always you'd sing a song and you do like a little play or something like that. We did like a pantomime version of Leader of the Pack. And then my friend was like the best instrumentalist in our whole seventh grade class. He played the trombone, so he did a solo performance of Good King Wenceslas. That must have been riveting for all the people in the back. And he was good, but like, it's the seventh grade, so like, he wasn't that good. And he's the trombone, so it's even worse. What about your cat sitter? Bro, she plays the piano. She's goaded at the piano. Piano is a serious instrument. Yo, you reminded me, by the way, I, I thought I had no cruise anecdotes. I actually do have one that I forgot about. On the first day we sat down and there was like an advertisement on our table. And it was uh, like, you can save money by buying a wine package. We, Kate and I don't really drink wine, but we're like, you know what? It's a special occasion. Maybe we can get like a five-night wine package. So we, we bought it. It's like 
$150 or something like that. Um, and I guess I didn't really think about this at the time, but it's not like five bottles. It's like five nights of all you can drink wine. So you could order whatever you want. But we're like just two adults and uh, like a toddler. So we're not drinking that much wine. So we were having like half a bottle of wine a night. And then on the last day, we got internet access and we started looking up the bottles of wine that we got. And I just, I basically let my wife order all of them. And she was like, you know, let's have some Prosecco. Let's have some Moscato. You know, let's say just, let's have some Rosé. It's not serious wine. It's just fun wine. Started looking that shit up on that last dinner. And we were like, we've had four bottles of wine. Each one of them was between 10 and $15 American. And we we're like, oh, fuck. So we said we got like one more night to try to make up some of the money. So I said, you're cut. I'm going to order this next one. And I was looking at the, I don't know anything about wine. I was looking at the wine list and I was like, uh, no, don't get the ones from Italy. Don't get the ones from France because I know what they're going to do. They're going to be like, oh, this one's from Italy, so you're going to think it's good, but actually it's like the worst Italian wine ever made. So I said, give me this one from Washington State. And you know why I went for it? It's because it was called like Chateau Smith. And I was like, if they call it Chateau Smith, it must be good because they didn't put any sauce on the name at all. I would not trust a wine from Washington that's called like La Maison de Louvre or something like that. I would, give me Chateau Smith. It must be popping. And then, well, I drank like one sip of it and I was like, this is really good. And then we looked it up and it was like $9.99. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> we got fleeced. It had decent reviews, but, but that's not what we were trying to. That's not what we were trying to do. So we weren't, we weren't trying to get good wine. We were trying to make our money back. So my advice is only order the wine package on a cruise if you are degenerate. <laughs> In which case, I think you might be able to make it worth your while. I mean, I didn't realize... I, I think it took me until like day three to realize that it was not like one bottle a night. It was like... You can have as much wine as you want for five nights. Because I was like, that's not something that we really do with alcohol in North America. Because, like, I think we people realize that, like, we can't be trusted. What the hell's going on, man? When I was in college, I had a cruise where our package was 15 cocktails a day. That's just, like... I'm a relatively firm believer that you should be able to, like, do whatever you want within reason. But... I feel like incentivizing people, like allowing people to drink 15 cocktails a day is one thing. Incentivizing people to drink 15 cocktails a day is crazy. <laughs> like that's insane. The whole gang had alcohol poisoning. I mean, 15 cocktails a day for the length of a cruise is like, it's a lot. 15 cocktails a day for like a day is a lot. <laughs> for like four days or something? I don't even, maybe even like 10 days? That's crazy. Hey, VIP Daniel, you here? Is this anything? We got, I, I gotta listen to more Our Lady Peace so I know how Starscream goes. It's like, shock team, shock team. Is this anything? You're much music pilled. I don't really know how it goes. I just know that Rain Maeda screams the whole song. And he goes, Yay, yay, yay. I don't want to go off on a rant here, but does anybody else think that it was a disaster for... Sp I don't want to go off on a rant here, but does anybody else think that when Rain Maeda married Chantel Kreviasak, it was like Goddard Damarong for the editor-in-chief of TMZ in terms of spelling, in terms of... S I don't want to go off on a rant here, but does anybody else think that when Rain Maida married Chantel Kraviasak, it was the hardest day in spell checks entire life? I don't want to... 
I don't want to go off on a rant here. I <laughs> There's something in there. Tick, 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 tick. Me playing Peter Molyneux's Curiosity so that I can win the promise of being paid 10% of what his next game makes and then he never makes another game. Oh, anyway, we have a lot of fun here sometimes. You know what? The, the problem is the kids these days don't know who Rain Maeda and um, Chantel Kreviasak are. Rain Maeda is the lead singer from Our Lady Peace, and Chantel Kreviasak is the... She sang the Leaving on a Jet Plane version from the Armageddon soundtrack. They're a Canadian power couple. Who's Our Lady Peace? Goodbye, the future sold out. There's no use screaming. Who thought we'd ever get this far? You know what I'm talking about? That's the song you went with? It's their best, well, it's the best song from Happiness is Not a Fish That You Can Catch. No? You should have been born in Canada, dummy. <laughs> then, you'd, then you'd get the joke. Sorry, I guess. Damn right. You guys think massage actually works? Because I, I got a massage that my wife booked for me on the cruise. And so it was a, it was a bamboo massage. And it's one of the most painful experiences that I think I've ever been through in my entire life. Instead of using their hands for like a gentle massage, they use a bamboo uh, rod and like they need you like like a piece of bread or something like that. But she was like, she was working the knots in the muscles and that was fine. There was nothing wrong with that. Would I say it felt good? No, I'd say it felt like a normal massage. It felt like my muscles were being like it, like it hurt and then it was okay. And then it hurt and then it was okay. But then, I don't know if, if it's just the morphology of like my back, but when she was going up my back, the thing was like putting its fingers in the notches of my spine and it was painful. Like it was, it, it, like the next day my spine was bruised. Like, if I touched my, my back, it hurt. And then, uh, like, that, you start on your, on your stomach, right? So I was like, oh, my God. Like, that, uh, thank God I can turn over on my back now that uh, she's done with my spine because it can't get any worse than that. But then she got into my calves, and I, I walk on my toes, so my calves are like, I'm just going to say it. They're, they're, they're muscular, okay? They're big. She was getting into like, you know, the horseshoe part of the calf. She was digging the, the calves or the, the bamboo rod like into the divot on the horseshoe and going like. And I honestly, I think that the relief that I got from the massage was when it was over. Like the most relief that I got from the massage was when I knew that she was done with the calf. But then the problem is that as soon as she was done with like my left calf, I couldn't enjoy the rest of the massage because I was like, she's going to have to get my right calf at some point. So I didn't even enjoy like the part where she was massaging my, my quads because I knew that as soon as that, the quads were done, I had to get the other calf done. I get that you can like tell them that it's like too hard or whatever, but listen... You can't do that because you'd be a puss. You got to tough it out. I'm not going to like pay for the massage and then be like, actually, I don't want a massage. Because <laughs> then it would feel like I wasted money, which is a worse feeling, spiritually at least. Would you go again? Um, if my wife booked it for me. For sport? Probably not. Would you book it for your wife? Probably not. I think that she would probably consider it 
too painful, honestly. I'm just... I, I think that maybe there's, like, um, massa massage inflation or something like that. Like, at some point, people realize, like, it, it's nice to have someone else, like, massage you. But then, like... I think some freaks got their hands on it, quite frankly. This team is just way too good for the stage of the game in which we're at. And now, like, I'm, I'm just getting into massage. You know, I get, like, two a year or something like that. But they... It, there's no such thing as, like, a, we just lightly massage you anymore. There's no, like, beginner massage. Everyone is, like, we put, like, suction cups on your back and turn you into, like, the sixth die... The sixth side of a die. Or they like beat the piss out of you with bamboo shoots and reeds and stuff like that. P put the oil in the microwave for like two and a half minutes and then pour it down your crack. Like it's just, I, it's crazy. They put the beans above the frank. That's going to be the next one. But they're not going to call it beans above the frank because they know that everyone would say no. Instead, they call it something like, oh, do you want the, the relaxation treatment? And you're like, that sounds nice. And before you know it, the beans are above the frank. It's stupid to not tell the masseuse they're doing it too hard. Isn't it? I, I mean, I guess that I'm just built different because I trust the experts. This lady's been giving massages probably full time for like eight years. I'm going in for like my third massage and I'm like, you're doing it wrong. I guess like there's just something wrong with me that I don't feel like I should be like mansplaining to the masseuse how to do their job. She can't tell she's doing damage to you. She should be able to because they can see the veins in her forearm popping out, man. It's a it's a bamboo rod. How could she not know? I think it's probable that I just probably had like the greatest pain tolerance that she's ever seen. So I honestly took it that maybe there was like an element of it for her that she was like, I'm going to make this guy tap. Like maybe she was having like a bad day. And she was like, I'm going to take it out on this guy. And I was like, you won, but I'm not going to let you know that you won. She said like, how was it? And I said, I feel so relaxed now. She didn't have to know that the reason I felt so relaxed was because of the fact that it was over. It means I outlasted the KGB in the interrogation. <laughs> and I didn't talk. If you ordered a steak well done and they served it to you rare, what would you say? I, first off, I would say thank you for giving me something that tastes better than what I ordered. Secondly, it's not the same thing. I was of the opinion that the things that they sell at the massage parlor are relaxing because that's the reason you're there. I thought it was going to be like the the Bacta chamber. Like you, I was going to be like Goku in the tank just floating around getting relaxed. What it actually was was when Goku uh, died and then went to Master Popo's like training area in heaven and got like 10,000 years of like getting his ass beat so that he could become more powerful when he went back down to the earth. It's King Kai, not Mr. Popo's. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's been a while, okay? Maybe you're more sensitive to pain. How would I be more sensitive to pain? I won. I out, I outwitted out, what's the other, out competed, outlasted, outwit, outplay, outlast, that's it. <laughs> I'm going to change my game name to Final Fantasy 16. You're so lucky, I know Roman numerals, just for the record. And then, I'm going to call this world's number one Final Fantasy 16 enjoyer well you're lucky i know roman numerals because i could easily if i'm going to make a mistake with 16 i'm going to write it as if it's 14 and then people are going to go in here and be like have you done the hardcore static omega weapon raid and i'm going to be like yeah as scholar but no spoilers please i haven't done it as samurai yet he knows lol he knows 
He knows a little bit. How do you know the words? Because my wife played like a lot of Final Fantasy fourteen. It fucked up my life for a while. She was going to bed at like 4 a.m. She'd be like, oh, new raid comes out. And I'm like, oh, that should only take like what? Like a couple of nights? Turns out it takes like a month of fucking scrims and like sports style practices with regimented hierarchies and like shot callers and stuff like that. VOD analysis. Final Fantasy XIV drawings that look like shit posts, etc., etc. So people are not familiar with the fact that I have not played that much Final Fantasy recently in my life, but it, I'm 34 years old. You know what that means? I was a teenager when the Final Fantasy games that changed the world came out. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's crazy. I remember... It, it, it's nuts to me that Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy X are like within three, four years of each other. When I played Final Fantasy X at my friend's house, it was photorealistic. And also, I would have done anything to get Titus's hair for myself. Now, little did I know, a few years later, um, so on and so forth. Anyway, we're going to play the whole demo today. I've been told, if you don't know this, I'm sure you probably do, but if you don't know this, Final Fantasy, every single main series numbered Final Fantasy game is different. You might be thinking it's a little intimidating to be on 16, I haven't played the first 15. It's a perfect jumping in spot. It's new characters, new lore, new saga every single time, okay? Some shared hallmarks of, uh, you'll, you'll see like the similar enemies. Like you should be a little careful uh, to, to if you find a Tonbury. I'm... Pretty confident we're probably going to see all that stuff in the demo, right? We'll summon Ifrit, Knights of the Round, other references to Final Fantasy that I'm very familiar with. Materia, we are living in a Materia world and I am a Materia girl. I've always said that about myself. What's your favorite Materia from Final Fantasy VII? And you can't say Cure. Green? <laughs> Cure, cure. Ah, 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 what did I tell you? What are the side things? Those are the visual alerts, dude. It's how I know that there's something happening. It's killing your image? Okay, okay. Wait till the cutscene's over. I'll see if I can turn it off, okay? I thought it would be like how in Apex Legends you get like... Or Minecraft, you get like footsteps are here. It's okay, we can see the choir. <laughs> and that's how I met your mother. You cock. <laughs> it's it's jacked Chris Catan. It's Chris Kattan after he takes the super serum. Take care. Does the lion take care when he chases the hare? Oh, we're rhyming now? Is that what we're doing? No, my love. You are a lion. You're my lion. No, hmm. <laughs> oh, he's getting down there. <laughs> <laughs> you flatter me, my lord. Or would you rather I flattened you? Can be arranged. You promise? I know. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna close the gap by executing a phoenix phoenix shift three times. The blessing of the phoenix grants Clive the ability to perform feats of inhuman strength and dexterity. Phoenix shift is one such iconic feat. Chad, don't even talk about the iconic feet, okay? I, I see what you post on your private Twitters. Battle is a succession of pivotal moments. He was just a little hungover. Life and death can be decided at a single stroke. You must be ready to utilize every tool at your disposal if you are to navigate a path to victory. We have traded blows with them for too long. This guy, he knows what he's doing. There's other ways you could have said that. 
must secure Drake's breath. Without the blessing of the mother Christ He's always taken the Tobias Funke route. Light. Friends, we ride for Phoenix Gate. May the blessing of the crystals go with us and shield the fireless flame forever. We remembered it. We remembered all the words. Open the gates. Oh, I'm so nervous. I can't get to sleep. What's wrong, honey? I'm the guy that says open the gates tomorrow, but I'm just, I just don't want to mess it up. I always mess it up. The sire departs. Open the what? Open the open the open the gates? No, I'm so stupid. Not exactly the most well maintained path, but who do you imagine would maintain it? They've all fled from the blight. Except the goblins, of course. Wait, did I say that out loud? The old village of Stillwind is ahead. Gil, Gil, Gil. G Wade, Wade, slow down. Wade, that's mine. I saw it. Two Gil for me. Listen, you're making an eighth of a Gil a day on contract. You don't need this two Gil, Mr. Greedy. Excuse me, I wanted to go up here. Excuse me, I wanted to go up because there were two Phoenix Downs on top of the log. Wade, stop. I'm trying to do something. Fifty-five gil, fifty-five material, hundred and hundred and fifty-five shiva, hundred and fifty-five ifrit, fifty-five. Oh, Tyler! Look, that's a classic Tyler move right there. I will say I've only played Final Fantasy fourteen one time. It was PVP at Tokyo Game Show, and if we won, we got a T-shirt. And my wife was like, "I want that." She was like the in Napoleon Dynamite when. Uncle Rico is selling the Tupperware to that family. And she goes, I want that. Post it up. Played as a healer. She told me, like, okay, every time it's off cooldown, just mash, like, these five keys. And we won. <laughs> and then they said, what size shirt are you? And I said, extra small. And they didn't even bat an eye. It's the perfect crime. Gear can improve, imp <laughs> you know what? Going offline, guys. Boom! The young Lord has a bright future ahead of him. Aye, and one of these nights he may even deign to join us. He knows what he's saying, dude. <laughs> I can't believe that this guy's gonna have to like go home and tell his king that he got beaten up by an eight-year-old. King's gonna be like, that's okay. You weren't in Ifrit form, right? He's gonna be like, no, I was in Ifrit form. You were in Ifrit form? There's a gigantic cave be below the whole world? Yeah, this must be uh, the PUBG map before they fixed it. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> oh, man. I have to feel like at this point, the Icon of Fire realizes that they've made a terrible mistake. Like, first off, I didn't know that he was going to be in Phoenix form. So step one, I'm already, it's an even battle at best. Then, I, I tackled him into the incredibly open space where flying is an enormous advantage. And then I'm really not fighting back too much. I'm mostly just hopping. I think this is an environment. He should have picked, like, a, an, an arena that had, like, a ceiling or something. Then I'd be in trouble. I'm just gonna wait for the timer and then I'm gonna dodge. Hellfire. He f he hellfired his own damnation. I didn't know you could do that. Game over! <laughs> okay, now I know. Now I know. I thought it was a forced death. I thought it was cinematic. I thought it was a forced death. <laughs> Not a scripted loss. I've never seen someone fail then. 
I thought I could dodge it. I thought I could do a perfectly timed dodge. He's feeling pretty embarrassed right now. Never mind. Never mind. He's he's it turns out he's doing okay. This this was me during the massage. You're not wrong. It was all a dream, right? I knew he had him right where he wanted him. Well, maybe not. Oh, maybe? Maybe not. Unless... Here's how Joshua can still win. Clive wakes up in his bed. <sighs> Whoa, that was a scary one. Anyway, let's all come down to... Hey, Clive, you bonked your head really hard. Joshua, the phoenix, the icon of flame. What are you talking about? We're going to go have some cakes and ales. Come on down to Phoenix Gate. It's time for the Mayflower Festival. You can click the link and get more information about it. Thank you to Square Enix for sponsoring this segment. I, I had a great time. Genuinely. Also, like, it very... Uh, slash marker first. Slash marker FF16. Some it, pretty courageous. They, like... They killed an eight-year-old in the demo. Not a lot of studios have the capital to do that, like the political goodwill and the chocobo, yeah. Other games will be like the kid like almost dies and then you'd be like, no, just kidding. The thing fell in front of him, not on top of him. They were, they showed him getting torn up, man. Like he was getting... <laughs> It was not just uh, like a, an instantaneous sort of blunt force trauma. Like it was, it was brutal. It was a little disgusting. Steel is made of what? Trick question. Steel is an element. It's steel is made of steel atoms. What's its atomic number? 69420. 80085. True. All right, lucky guess. Please acknowledge steel is not on the uh, periodic table of atoms. I get it. You're in 11th grade. Your identity is tied up with the fact that you have the third highest mark in your science class. I'm aware that, that steel is not on the periodic table. I was trying to do something more complicated than regurgitating knowledge that my 10th grade science teacher imparted upon me against their will. I was trying to be creative and, and make a joke and make people laugh. Just more than Mendeleev has ever done for anybody. <laughs> That's too close? You're insulting my intelligence by suggesting I don't know that steel is 
an alloy made of iron and then another thing that's probably not even relevant <laughs> to life on Earth. Did you know it's carbon? It's Yes, I know it's the only thing relevant to life on Earth, okay? That's the joke, Mendeleev! You're really going to let me get you twice in a row? Sometimes. Yeah. Name a biologist? Um... Richard Dawkins. Oh, fuck. Um... Carolus Linnaeus. Charles Darwin! Had the balls to ask. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's harder to name a biologist, a biologist than it is to name a physicist, because most biologists, you know, had to leave their academic field in order to make a living in private industry. Whereas physicists, lucky for them, are predominantly supported by the government. I'm sorry, it's true. <laughs> And Christopher Nolan, I'm sure. And Christopher Nolan. They do cooler shit. It's true, but like, listen. Some of that space stuff is like... It's not relevant, man. You ever think about how, like, the last time we did anything in outer space... <laughs> Wait a minute, let me think about this carefully. The last time we walked on the moon as a species was like... Probably in the early 1970s or something like that. We've learned so much more about the universe since then, but we're too scared to use it, man. We're too scared to use it. Oh, fuck. It's a sad story. You'd think the more we learned about it, the more we'd be like, yo, let's go. Ice crystals on the moon. Get me up there. I want to see that. But instead, it's like, uh, the, uh, maybe it's, maybe the mathesis of the world are onto something. The more we learn about outer space, the more the, the government is like, we don't need to go up there. Don't worry about it, guys. We don't need to go up there. Just a bunch of forklift certified aliens. Maybe your ass should be volunteering. I, are you kidding me? It's not like they ran out of recruits to go to the moon. They hire like six astronauts a decade. They get probably like 100,000 applications. Like they're not just taking any geek off the street. You got to be like a a fighter jet pilot in the Air Force who also has like two PhDs in physics and astrobiology and also has like a 7% body fat and competed in the Commonwealth Games in shot put or something like that. And they're like, well, his extracurriculars aren't that good, but I guess he could learn on the job. Like it's, it, you got to be like the perfect human being. Plus you got to be shorter than the guy who paid for the mission, which like, even further reduces the potential talent pool. Yo, I'm in. <laughs> they would not let you take the Peloton up there. But that's okay, because the space shuttle has that uh, little, like, cantilever that spins around, right? So you can just run, uh, you can run in place, and the ship itself is a treadmill. Dude, what if, like, the last astronauts that went to the moon left, like, a fat turd on the moon? Like, they were like, oh, I really don't want to poop on the moon, but I got to poop so bad. I got, I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry, but I just can't, I can't hold it till I get back up in the lander and then back up into the ship. And then the dude, when he got back to Earth, he's like, yeah, I'm a hero. Yeah, I'm a hero. But in his head, he's like, oh, fuck. As soon as they go back, they're going to be there. They're going to see that shit on the moon and I'm going to have been fucking fired. But then they never went back and he's just been living in like anxiety since then. Like he's going to have like a confession on his deathbed. I shat on the moon. And people are going to be like, I never had any proof, but I always got a bad vibe from him. Nice to finally have it confirmed. Oh, you can't shit on the moon because if you pull your spacesuit down, it would pull your whole body out through your asshole. Okay, it's a joke, all right, Mendeleev. <laughs> all right, Pythagoras, sorry. Hey, librarian, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. That's the that's the capstone to a good bit. Where'd the inspiration for this bit come from? Well, in my head, I was like. The first thing I thought of was I bet the astronauts who landed on the moon in 1972 were like. You know, we could leave something here for the next guys to pick up. But then I thought, wouldn't it be funnier if they let, left like a turd? And then the rest is history. That's VH1's behind the music.
I'm going to be honest also, like, I know that, was it on Gemini that they inscribed, like, that gold plate, and it's got, like, the four nucleotide bases of the uh, of the human genome and, like, the number of chromosome pairs we've got that's on Voyager, you know, you got to imagine at some point, like, an alien is going to find that record and is going to look at it and go, what the fuck is this? You're right. Ain't no alien going to understand that record, man. They might be able to figure out where it came from. They're going to come. It's going to be like an escape room. They're going to ring the bell and be like, hey, we tried to decipher the plate, but um, like we added like all the numbers together and then divided it by like the Fibonacci sequence, but it just spit out gibberish. Like what is the and then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we have. Uh, that's the number of pairs of chromosomes that we have. And they're going to be like. Really? We've never even met your asses until now. How are we supposed to get that? We were supposed to get that in an hour. I remember my, my uncle is kind of like, um, he's kind of like a Mathis guy. I remember talking to him when I was like 13. And I was like, if we ever made contact with aliens, how would we communicate? Because obviously we don't have like a shared language or maybe even like a shared medium of communication. You know, like they might not have ears you know, our eyes or what they might communicate via things that we can't even imagine. And he was like, there's ways that we can do it. And I was like, what, what ways? And he was like, well, there's things that are like constant in the universe, you know, like the number of protons in a hydrogen atom or something like that. And I was like, but how are you going to communicate <laughs> that? <laughs> it's... <laughs> I think that he's right. Like, they got smarter people working on this than me. But I'm like, what are you just going to put like a, you're going to put like a, a one somewhere, like a, a singular object. And you're going to be like, get it? The alien's going to be like, they're in their head, they're saying, get it? I don't know. I'm glad I'm not in charge of it. Let's, let's just put it that way. Because I feel like I would just be like, hello. And then they, the alien would go like, and I would be like, Hey, hello! What I wouldn't realize, this is the ironic part, is that the alien is also saying hello. But they're saying it in their alien language. And I'm like, buddy, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. What if the aliens invade us and they take the world hostage and their only demand is that, like, because they've been watching all of our television for like 100 years, and their only demand is that Netflix makes a second season of Archive 81. That's from Futurama. Okay, well, apparently that's from Futurama. I'd like to apologize. What if aliens observed humanity for the first time and then they immediately started traveling to Earth? But the, the, the twist is that they observed humanity 3,000 years ago, like in the Roman times. So when they show up, they're all like, Aloha, companis. And we're like, what the fuck? And they're wearing, like, tunics and togas and shit. <laughs> Ave. That's the same future Rama bit? Really? Yo, Matt Groening, kind of the goat for real, huh? Then they arrive and they're like, take me to Marcus Aurelius. And you're like, oh. <laughs> Oh, awkward. <clears throat> Your thoughts on the turd left on the moon in the 1970s? I think I, I live by the principle that when people tell me they got to go, I believe that that is like their last resort. They would, would rather not tell me that they have to go. So if I was on the moon and I was like the captain and my flight officer was like, Captain, I've really got to dump a turd on the moon. I would be like... I trust you. We're a team. We've been training together for years. Go ahead. Blow some ass on the moon. Dump it. I'm not going to besmirch your character by assuming you're taking a, a poop on the moon for leisure. Like, I don't think it's the most convenient place to take a, a poop. I don't think you're just doing it because you're bored. I think maybe you had too much of the, the moon cheese or something like that. I had the classic um, anxiety nightmare last night. I'm... In university, I walk into the auditorium, 
it's exam day and I don't know the answers to any of the questions on the test. Now, all I remember is that it was, um, it was like a, a test on a piece of software, like it was about a piece of software. And then the question one was like, what does this icon represent? And I knew that I was fucked. I was like, I don't even know what that icon is. And if I get this question wrong, the professor is going to be like, he didn't even boot up the software the whole semester. So I'm giving him a zero on this whole thing. And then I remember, like, I finished that exam and was like, I fucked it bad. And then I remember being like, oh, I've got to log in to my, like, university account so I can see when my other exams are. And uh, I was like, oh, I can't even log in because the email address that's associated like with my college has been deactivated for 12 years or something like that. And I was like, I'm fucked. And you know what I was thinking in my head, like while dreaming, I was like, my parents are going to be so disappointed in me. My parents are going to be so disappointed in me. I'm 34, man. Woke up like all, all fucked up and emotional. It's crazy. Yeah, I graduated from college in 2010. But it was one of those dreams that had me, like, wondering if I actually graduated from college. Like, I woke up and I was like, wait a minute, didn't that happen? <laughs> like, didn't I... <laughs> didn't I, like, not know what the icon was on that piece of software? And then I got, like, a fucking zero and the professor called me a fraud and expelled me from the school? He knew I didn't go to a single lecture. Did you use Blackboard? They had started to use Blackboard uh, when I was in university, for sure. I, I'm old, but we still submitted assignments electronically as early as, like, my... Well, we, we had some take-home tests that were on uh, the Internet in 2006. Pretty forward-thinking, right? Definitely submitted some via, like, Blackboard Dropbox in, in 2007. You could have cheated so easily. I think they just made it so you could cheat, but you would learn while you were cheating. Like we all just got together like in a dorm room and then had the smartest person run the test. And then if they got anything wrong, we just, you know, troubleshot it right there. And then everybody else ran through the test again. Class average is like a fucking 99.9. One time to get out of to get an extension on an assignment, I submitted a JPEG, but I changed the file extension to PDF, and then the professor told me it wouldn't open, and that gave me enough time to actually finish the project. It's delightfully devilish. I definitely never did that on purpose, but I was in second year, like right in the same corridor that Windows Seven came out, maybe Windows. That sounds right to me. That sounds right. Maybe, yeah, Windows 7. And that was like right when they introduced like the DocX format um, to the, the office suite of applications. So there were constant fuck-ups that were like, hey, you submitted this in DocX, we need it in Doc. Or hey, you submitted this in Doc, but we need it in DocX. That happened for a while. Also, I mean, I, I had some near misses in university. Some of them were my fault. Like, I barely passed organic chemistry. In my defense, it was really hard. In the class's defense, I didn't really put a lot of effort into it. But <laughs> a lot of people, like a third of the class, failed the organic chemistry uh, that was required for biology, at least. So I'm, I was in good company, but I, I did get like a, I don't know, I was like 2% over the passing threshold or whatever. But then also, my last class, and I'm sorry if you've heard this one before, my last exam for my last class in senior year, when I took the exam, the professor came over to me and was like, hey, just so you know, because you didn't submit the final project, like you can't pass the class. Like I can't pass you because you didn't submit the final project. And I was like, oh, I submitted the final project. Actually, like I, I dropped it off into your drop box, like your physical drop box. And he said, uh, um, I don't think so. Like, I think I would have gotten it if that was the case. And I was like, well, I did. 
So like, I don't know what you want me to say. And then I just went through, I did, he was like, okay, I'll go check. And then I did the rest of the exam and he came back like two hours later and was like, yeah, you're right. It was in my job box. And I was like, cool. I appreciate that. It was like my last day of university and, I, and you're like, hey, just so you know, you're not going to graduate. Like, you think if I was not going to graduate, my ass would have even showed up for the final? <laughs> did you drink coffee on the cruise? I did, but here's the thing. I had to temporarily debase myself and become a warm coffee drinker. So on the first day, I got cold brew. Cold brew um, is, a, is a surcharge. They don't have free iced coffee. Um, so I paid like five bucks for the cold brew. And then it was like nuclear level cold brew. Like I was, I was getting the jitters. And I said, this is not what I need. So then every morning when I snuck out to the buffet before the rest of my family woke up, I, uh, I debased myself. I poured a drip coffee and uh, I let it cool down for half an hour. And then I drank it in like three gulps. And that was my that was my coffee. They make uh, they make the coffee too hot. I get that maybe like they have to make it hot to brew it. But like it's served too hot. I'm not talking just about the McDonald's case. Like it's it's one of the only drinks that like you get and then you don't get to drink it. Like you got to wait. Try dry brew if you ever get in this situation again. What the hell is dry brew? Is it just like a, a satchel full of caffeine pills? Just eat the grinds? I didn't have access to the grinds. Basically, yes. You eat instant coffee grinds? Grounds? I don't know why, but I just got like a mental image of someone putting like a K cup in their ass and then clenching until like it broke and then going like, hmm. <laughs> The best part of waking up is folders in your ass. It doesn't matter what comes, put the cup in your ass. Just put the fucking cup in your ass. Nothing gets to you, staying fresh, staying cool. Now put the damn cup in your ass. Fresh goes better, man. Did I stutter? An old, an ex-boyfriend's friend once confessed to doing a coffee enema. I really don't think the secret to good health is going to be, like, anything related to your colon. And I'm not a doctor. I'm just saying that, like, whenever people are like, oh, I give myself, like, a colonic once every six months, I'm like, I don't... You do you. It just seems to me, like... I mean, I had a colonoscopy. I, don't, I guess it's not the same thing as an enema. I had a colonoscopy. After I got cleaned out, I was not like, oh, I want to do that again. Oh, I didn't press the space bar. I was like, I hope I never have to, well, I hope I don't have to do that again for some time. Isn't gut health super important? Aren't you begging the question? What does doing a coffee enema have to do with your gut health? You could take like a probiotic or something like that. NL is pro colon cancer. Are you listening to yourself? You, you're watching the wrong streamers. Just fishing for debates where they don't exist. He used begging the question correctly. I'm telling you, I, I feel like begging the question is like when people say gaslighting. If you're like, oh, I don't like guns. Someone will be like, oh, really? Would you shoot Hitler if you could? That's begging the question. Well, how about we'll start having a conversation when we get like a time machine? Here's, I, I'm begging your question. Please, I beg you, where's your time machine? You can do the coffee enema if you want. I'm just saying I think that maybe my hunch, I'm not suggesting that this is a scientific assertion. My hunch is that the benefits of a coffee enema are psychosomatic, predominantly. I, apparently that's a bold claim on the internet. I also feel like, are enemas actually good for you? Or is it just something you go through because you have like a procedure of some sort that is coming up where you need no debris in your colon? It's not just erotic stuff. 
you must have to get an enema for, you know, some procedures. I mean, I think that, like, I basically gave myself an enema for a colonoscopy. It's just that we didn't stick anything in. We just took everything out. <laughs> just like a, a heavy dose of laxatives. I give patients enemas like once a week for x-rays. Oh, don't tell me that. Because I think what, you, what you're saying is once a week I have a patient who requires an x-ray in a location that needs a clean colon. What I'm hearing is one in 50 patients has so much shit in their ass they need an enema before I can get any vision. And I'm like, that's me. I know I'm in the, the 2% there. I'm going to end up like spraining my ankle or something like that. They're going to get out the Erlenmeyer flask. <laughs> I'm not getting a very clear image here. Could you bend over, please? Yeah. All right. An interesting audio oh. set you got going on here. Hey there. No. Oh. Ryan, we can hear ourselves through you, man. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, uh, we can definitely. We can even hear you again through your own microphone. I don't think that's true. I think he's trolling me. I think he's trying to get me to ruin my audio. <laughs> okay, we we can run it. I guess. Hello. Hello. Okay. Do I sound Hello. normal? Do I tell him? <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> no. no no i think it's good you, you, you're good i sound normal yeah <coughs> you, sound, you do sound good you find normal <laughs> yeah you sound normal i i often think you're the most normal guy i know you think so? i feel like i'm experiencing psychosis yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm slightly weird by normie standards, Ryan, which makes me very normal by streamer standards, Ryan, I'm going to come to you as a friend here, dude. Whoa. Yeah. Hello. You sound good. And we also all sound good through your microphone looping through your mic. We can. Am I losing ourselves. my mind here? <laughs> what is happening, Corey? How do I sound? Ryan is, Ryan's fucked himself. I don't know what he's done. There's like a weird <laughs> echo. <laughs> I'm being trolled right now for sure. No, you fucked yourself, bro. <laughs> I don't know what the. I, I don't know what you want me to say, Ryan. Because I don't know if you're being Ryan. serious for one, and then everybody we else can is... hear ourselves through your mic, and we can also hear what you say through your mic twice, but the second time is delayed by like five seconds. Do you just have my stream open in the background? Oh, <laughs> oh my god! I have your stream on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, Listen, I was just Why? yes ending. Why did everyone agree with me? Everyone was agreeing with me. So I'm a team player. Yeah, we Literally all Literally yes everyone was agreeing oh, with me, bro. Dude, that is great. Huh? <laughs> I'm gonna go, man. I love you trying to like turn into your serious voice too to get me to take it seriously. I was being so dead ass. Oh. And do you know what the sad part is? I was like, like I know everyone's gonna think I'm being silly, goofy, and dumb because I've been awake for so long. But I'm gonna try so hard to be normal and like not fuck up, man. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, that's a good, good story. Stuff. That is good stuff. <laughs> oh, Name no. a woman. Oh, oh no. How much were you? Chibli. Chibli game. Chibli game. Chibli game. I hope no, I got this. Right. One should be like a horse, and then the top one should Boy, be like a space shuttle. Me. 
Human, human, human. Um, they got like three horsepower, bro. Really? Do we have three what horsepower? I thought we would have less than one horsepower. Bro, there might be like ants on here. There might be like cockroaches. You scared me. That's a race car. That's gonna be like. That's gonna be pretty high. Yeah, there's got like five hundred. That's right. Five six hundred. Human's not even a horse. Oh, it's maybe it's probably trash. Oh shit. A tree? Tree? Right, 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 right. That's trash. That's trash. I think human is right. I think human is right. Oh, no, I think human man. is right. You can, you can, yeah, no, that's right. That's right. There's no way a human's stronger than horse. Human can morph into hu uh, horse. That's a lot. Concord play. That broke the crazy. sound barrier. That has to be max. That's bro. Bro. I used to go over my house where I lived in New York. Really? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I live near that's JFK. Scary. Donkey? 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 Oh, it's me. Not <laughs> even a horse. I don't know where the fuck is It's faster than a horse? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm into human. I'm into human. <laughs> oh my god, that guy's on demos. Oh, demos. I'm not talking about more than demos. Concord. Demos. demos. Ah. Slide in, slide in, slide in, slide oh, in. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. I see. He's still blocking trash. He's still blocked trash, though. We have to keep left open. Is me, is me. Balloon. What Balloon. The trash, That's, trash, trash, trash. That is trash. real. No, it's not. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I'm not fucking real, dude. I'm not, cra I'm not being run. crazy. You're I think crazy. that is real. Balloon has horsepower. 2022 oh, oh, Hummer EV. Oh, middle, 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 middle. Less than, less than, less than NASCAR. Less than less than I think it might be more than NASCAR. No. You're crazy. Really? I, I think, like, mark my no words, way. I think it might Ain't be no more way. than a NASCAR. Horse? Horse. Middle, right? Middle. Ray, Ray Horse is more than a donkey. I'm going to say more than a donkey. I would love to be touching some Cheetos, but I guess. I'm fucking mad at this now. Stone? Trash, trash, trash. What Am metric I crazy are they for using thinking in balloon this? can have horsepower because you blow it up and then you let it go and it goes? <laughs> <laughs> how do you measure that? And how would it be less? They do be doing that. They do do that. Hamster, <laughs> oh. oh. this tiny be, is shit. Let's stay human. Yeah. Let's stay human. Oh, no, no, no. Don't yeah, the yeah. Oh, yeah. fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, God. <laughs> There, I don't want to block the trend. Tesla! That's on my list. Uh, I think that's where it is. Right there, yeah, right there. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right Even though I think it's more than. No way. Yeah, it's it's going to be. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're fucked. <laughs> I think we did great, except hamster and human, but we didn't. Have I think a the whole. I think the whole middle is fucked. Really? Well, hamster is past human. Huh? Yeah. The fuck, donkey? Yeah. He's absolutely right. Yeah. Them electric cars are uh, crazy. Why the hell is anyone watching NASCAR? They don't even go that fast. Talk about okay, I really hope quarters. the uh, joke for me button didn't get me canceled. <laughs> 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 you imagine? Oh, man. What do I do? Hit the... I'll read it. Okay. Remember to say your catchphrase. Middle school for me was like H.C. Justin. What the hell? <laughs> okay. Oh man! Oh no! Oh my God! Let's go! No, what the hell? Hey, what the <laughs> hell? It's funny because it's true. And it's got a bush. What the hell? The hell? Our next comic it's me. No okay, no, the lion. What's the difference between most people and poops? <laughs> most people come in my butt instead of come out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ryan. What? <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. What do I do? I'll, uh, perform the joke for me. Why not? When I was a kid, we didn't have think pieces. We had think holes. <laughs> Jesus. My shame. That's the that's the one that they did for you. No, I did that one. I did that one. Oh shit. That doesn't have your, your trademark on it. Oh. There's no competing against what you said, though, dude. Oh. Unfair matchup. Where's the skill based matchmaking? Right. Oh. Damn. I thought it was gonna give me a person's name. 
But then it just gave me like three gross things. And a tip of the hat to you. <laughs> so I had to meet it at its level of grossness. Ahoy, it's our next comic. Okay, again. dude. This is the I wrote this one. Please be I please. I can't please, wait. Please, I can't wait please, to lose please, to the auto prompt. Picked the word cock and then I said right for. Uh, oh wait, what? what the fucking changed? <laughs> Have you heard about the college challenge? That's where you get in debt for the rest of your life. Okay, so I picked Damn. cock, the cock <laughs> challenge, and then I did not want to write anything, what? so I thought it would write the rest of the joke and keep the cock challenge. Oh. And I was so scared. Wait, how advanced do you think the AI is? <laughs> I don't know, but I was just, I was stressing out, man. I, I My life flashed before my eyes. My grandma said the best thing about dumpsters is huge ass. Uh-huh. <laughs> Chibli's not winning on this one, y'all. Chibli Nation retreat. <laughs> we gotta regroup. The one on the right says ass. Oh, man. Kate's grandma's always talking about dumpsters. <laughs> oh, Chibli Nation, we got one. Keep pushing, Chibli Nation, keep pushing. Front line, everyone on the front line. <laughs> Chibi Nation, watch out. Kate Army is uh, staying strong on this. Watch out to be able to lose. Kate Army is uh, marching on the capital of Chib Nation. Yeah. Yep, that's true. Chib Nation, just flee. It's not worth it. We're scared. <laughs> There's so many torches and guns. As for me, my it's me. Oh, me. Hell. I'm next. Okay, here's our next set of comedians. <laughs> Is me. My love life is like Justin. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh, <laughs> the callback. Why did the flashlight cross the road? Probably to get all the come out. It's just oh, fucking okay. gross, man. Yeah, no, no good option. That's how you think, Corey? That's the fucking yeah. thoughts you have in your... Dude, you are a disgusting human being. Oh, what the hell? No, I'm kidding. I, I had Fleshlight as an option on both prompts. <laughs> I refreshed oh, no. twice. That's, That's unfortunate. Dude, cream pies is Fleshlight? <laughs> this is dude. fucking gross, dude. It's, it's so intimate. It's the whole nine floor it's... <laughs> It's disgusting. I hate that you said that. <laughs> I just don't Let's like it. I want to open a store that only sells potato chips <laughs> and call it chips. <laughs> I didn't know where he was going with that one. Thank you. Thank you. It's me. Uh oh. She got the kill shot. Have you ever tried dildozing? <laughs> <laughs> That's when you are lonely. <laughs> Dills dozing. Dildozing. 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 Oh. <clears throat> oh, man. The Kate state is just so strong. Kate's, uh... Thank you, thank How you. How does she do it? <laughs> Well, wow! Let's go! Wow. Oh, wow. I have more turds than the turd house. <laughs> 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 fucking knew it was coming and it was still. I forgot somehow. So fucking <laughs> <stupid>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. So stupid. <laughs> <laughs> How much longer can I get? Every single one is like 309010. Like, it's so demoralizing. <laughs> oh, I can't take it anymore, man. <clears throat> My love life oh is like Justin. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> okay, y'all. 
Which one? You gonna steal my joke? Which one, Ghibli Nation? Which one? Don't worry, That's not this. fair. He's the Carlos Mencia of Jackbox. Oh, <laughs> no, you see, he didn't put a question mark, so technically he put his own spin on it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go, Kate Army. Hey, copyright law, fuck copyright law. <laughs> Kate Army has honor. Oh lord. Is this the most high score well, ever? It actually might be. It, it's quite possible, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty Let's good. Let's go, I'm the funny yeah. person. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Congratulations, congratulations. Hey. Probably just run it back hey. real quick. Yeah. What the hell? I came <laughs> sick. <Okay. laughs> I support oh. Middle school for me was like Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> what the <a> hell? <laughs> This is like Thank high you. jump. It's joke jump. You got to clear like the same metric every time. <laughs> oh, this is bump. A group of leftovers walk into a bar and left. Then they went into the bar the next day, but they tasted better somehow. Oh my gosh. Why did you write such a long ass? <laughs> uh, Grind me a salami. Why did they call it nice of in? When you... Judges, what do you think? Ryan, uh, Ryan cuz they you, taste I'm better the next one. day. So like you make a chili, it always tastes better the next day. I'm going to give you one, Ryan, just so you don't get like jokeified cuz I know you're close. <laughs> I know you're so close. Oh! Oh no. What the hell? Someone they turned. They so turned. They punished me. They punished me for theft. Now, now I feel bad. I'm so sorry, Justin. <laughs> no. I'm so scared of my joke. Oh no, please don't read my joke. Oh, thank God, my joke is gone. I call my bedroom the mall because women be shopping. <laughs> uh -huh. Prime me a sashimi. <laughs> oh, man. I gotta keep the alliance strong. That, that Justin, your your joke reminds me of a time when I used a, uh, a filter on stream to make me look like a woman. And I was like, man, it really looks like my mom fucked my dad. <laughs> <laughs> that rocks. <laughs> That's really funny. We got more hot comedy coming up right now. That's really good. How many clouds does it take to change a light bulb? Three. One to screw it in and two to check each other off while the other one changes what? the light bulb. Okay. I'm right. gone. I'm Clowns gone. Clowns are sick, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh, I don't think you're ready for this. I'm ready. What's the difference between most people and pussies? <laughs> Not so damp. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Exit call. <laughs> the game I don't wanted even to wanna, give. I don't even want to touch that button, man. <laughs> hey, Chili Nation! The economy is booming over here. Oh, man. Oh. Deserved. Deserved. <laughs> Man, jokers, funny. let's tally the scores. <laughs> the best game I think I've ever played. Let's do two hours of this next time. Oh god, Damn is go just such, a, uh, such a yeah. good word to describe that. <laughs> it's not the typical <laughs> word that. you use. It's true, you don't. It's true. It's usually used to describe like a basement. Yeah. <laughs> you're <laughs> you're so jokes. damp. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, honey, I'm so damp. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, man. All right. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Better up. A group of leftovers walk into a bar and left. 
Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 All right. Ryan. <laughs> she's playing with the form. She's, she really she's, hits the she's like, fucking you over short. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. really well. <clears throat> Fuck. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> that hits. But you know what? There's one good joke deserves another. <clears throat> oh no. I like my sex like I like my chicken McNuggets. I only have it to get McDonald's Monopoly pieces. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Wait, Wait I'm gonna put this one on Reddit. Dude, the prizes in Canadian McDonald's Monopoly suck. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, 69 pieces. Yeah. Holy 2K. No. Okay, Justin. <laughs> I'm so dumb. I thought Google were... Bing. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> Motherfucking knew it, dude. <laughs> I knew it. Like an asshole. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no! What? Oh! Wow! Oh. That's so close. I call my bedroom the mall. Because that's where I eat out. Space period. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Uh, that's getting my vote. Thank you. I like how I just put the period in the bottom. In because the that's where I eat out. <laughs> period. <laughs> Ew. Very stern about it. By 72 to 28? 60 40, maybe. 60 40. Sorry, misogyny versus feminism. Mm, true. True. Only one of you can be right <laughs> back. I think Chibli won. Looks up feminism. <laughs> oh, eat out. What? Checks, what? checks out. <laughs> I know this sounds what? crazy, but I think I won because almost everybody chose to go against my joke. Yeah. So oh, even if they yeah, beat me, they true. gave me points. points. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's good Wait, point. that's 5D. That's... Run it back. Run it back real quick. Why not? Go. <laughs> no, no. Kate, start up the stream, and then Kate streams Jackbox, and we just go for another two hours. Destruction leads to a very rough road, but it also breeds creation. So true. The Red Hot Chili Peppers really knew what they were talking about. They also knew what they were talking about in Around the World, when it goes, a -dunga 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 and then Anthony Kiedis goes, ah! Anyway, you know what? A tweet that I've been trying, it, I think it's too millennial pilt. I, I don't think it would work on, on the internet these days. But it's some version of like, I want to smoke the shit that they gave to the lead singer of the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones when he screams in the impression that I get. You know, when it's like, um, have you ever been close to tragedy or close to those who have? No. Well, ah, never had to. Like, what? It, what is that scream, man, that he does right before the chorus? I feel if, like if you just isolated that scream and took it out of the music, it would be like Tony Collette in Hereditary. Like, he goes so hard. No. Well, burp, 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 burp. ah. Like, it's insane. Close to the edge, down by the river. Close to the edge, round by the corner. Me with tears in my eyes. So true. That's bad. That's 
I'm, it's glass. The floor is glass. Relax, relax. The floor is glass. <laughs> I was like the dude who they pranked the guy by uh, making it look like they're cutting his dick off with a pair of scissors, but actually it's just a little hot dog. Ah! 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 <laughs> ah! Never had to knock a wood. That would be a great Minecraft parody. Never had to chop on wood. But I know someone who has. And his name is Hero Brine. That's the impression that I get. <laughs> Worst song you've ever heard in 2014. Oh, motherfucker. In 2014 has 109 million views on YouTube. Have you ever been close to Lapis Lazuli or close to one who has? Have you ever felt a diamond so powerful like a netherite pickaxe? No. Well. Ah! Never had to chop on wood. It, that could work, man. I've never heard this. You've never heard the impression that I get by the mighty, mighty boss tones. I'm not a creeper. I've just never been tested. It makes me want to go if I what I would pass. Boomer ass song. A little bit. It's pretty good though. It's pretty catchy. I think it's good skateboarding music. Yeah, I'm really, like, I'm, I'm just being straight up with you. I'm anecdoteless. You know what I did this weekend? Not that much. Uh, I mean, like, a lot. Like, I was busy the whole time, but not that much that's interesting. But on Friday, I did watch uh, White Chicks again while I was setting YouTube videos. So I, I really, it's like, I, these the movies don't have intermissions anymore, which I think is unfortunate because I really think White Chicks plays better if you watch like the first 50 minutes until Sean and Marlon Wayans start to get sussed out by Marlon Wayans, his wife. Cause he, there's a, there's a lot of cases of just shenanigans in the movie, but he's undercover as one of these like rich heiresses and he's in the changing room and he's putting his, uh, clothes on. And then the, uh, his wife calls him, so he's talking to her, but then the sales lady comes into the room and is like, oh, it's so tight. How about I uh, hold it and you put it in there? But she's just talking about a pair of tight pants, but Marlon Wayans' uh, wife on the phone is like, who is that? Who? I'm coming over anyway. And then that's like a great cliffhanger, I think, to end the, the first act on. Then you come back a couple of days later and you watch like the resolution of the whole thing. And I think it's... I think it does a lot better like that. Movie is iconic just for putting Vanessa Carlton on the map. There, listen, people will always, like the, the least funny person you know will always say something ridiculous. He'll watch a movie like Couples Retreat and then be like, they can't make a movie like this anymore. They can't make a movie where Jon Favreau jerks off anymore. The woke mind virus has spread too far. But they really would not, well, maybe could not is, is a better way to describe it. But they would not and could not make a movie like White Chicks anymore. And I think that's probably for the best. That being said, I do enjoy it. But I don't know if I... I enjoy it partly because it's so bad it's good. I was thinking, like, if you could... If, if, imagine if we could somehow just send Netflix back in time. But, like, to the 1700s. So that like medieval peasants would have Netflix, but they would still only have the time to watch like 30 minutes of content a week or something like that. Because otherwise they would be toiling, right? Do you think that white chicks would be like as revered as something like Beethoven's Fifth Symphony? Or do you think that when they turned it on, they would suffer like a cerebral embolism and... <laughs> pass away instantly. <laughs> Just can't imagine uh, a medieval peasant's reaction to uh, Terry, a shirtless, incredibly jacked Terry Crews uh, on ecstasy, dancing with two glow sticks while blowing a whistle every eighth of a second. 
I don't buy it because I see people saying peasants had a lot more free time than I thought. I believe that peasants probably have more free time than I thought. That being said, I did see someone say peasants had more free time than us. I don't buy that for a second. Everybody I know, when a new Netflix show comes out, is like they watch the whole series in one day. There's no way that it... Come on. You think medieval peasants were watching all six one-hour-long episodes of Black Mirror in 24 hours? Dude, that's a great idea for my upcoming sketch comedy show. Medieval Black Mirror. Oh, what if instead of a scythe, you had a grain harvester? So you became reliant on your grain harvester and it made you have the highest yields of any farm in your village, in your duchy. But then the grain harvester breaks and you forgot how to use your scythe. No! Be kind of sick to be a lumberjack, I think. I'm sure you have like a lot of injuries back in the day and probably to this day and like a lot of people die. But what they told us at the lumberjack show in Alaska sounded pretty cool. On Fridays, they head down to the tavern and get drunk and then challenge each other to log rolling competitions to see who's the best at rolling on logs. That sounds good. Can you imagine being like eight beers deep and jumping on a log in the, in the river against your boy? I haven't been to karaoke in a while. You know, you know what I think would be a goaded karaoke song for me? How about I'm Too Sexy by Right Said Fred? It's famously sung by bald men. It has almost no singing required. And nobody's heard it for like 15 years. It's perfect. I'm too sexy for my cats. Too sexy for my cat. What you think about that? I'm a model, you know. They're bigots now? What? They Really? They sang I, I'm So Sexy. They didn't sing a song that's like, I'm too sexy for the vax, did they? <laughs> no way. I'm too sexy for the vax. Too sexy for the vax. My hat and my cats. I'm a model. You know what I mean? Did They, they almost did exactly that. There's no way. It's too on the nose, man. Hey, Mad Dog, thank you again. Thank you. This one's for you. Ooh. Are you a crystal meth amphetamine kingpin? Because if so, proceed. I meant proceed giving subscriptions, not proceed selling methamphetamine. <laughs> We also got porch pirated this weekend. We, when we came home, we had a note under our door that said, hey, like I'm the person two doors down or whatever. I saw someone go on your patio and steal your boxes, open them, take the shit, and then throw the boxes like around the corner. And then they signed it. So we, I said, thank you. Um, that was uh, annoying. What was even more annoying is that the dude then put the empty boxes back on our patio. So it was like, there was almost an insinuation that was like, hey, you're a victim of theft, but also like, don't litter, dickhead. <laughs> so I was like, not only do I not get the shit that we ordered, but then, like, on top of that, now I got to, like, break down. And they didn't break the box on the seams. They just ripped it open like an animal. So I can't even, I got to crush it. It's all, like, weird and offset now. What did they get? They got an electric razor and two cat litter boxes. <laughs> I mean, the razor, like, you know... I hope it went to a good home. I could see that being useful for somebody. If you're, you know, in a position in life where you're stealing people's packages from their front lawn or whatever. The litter boxes just pisses me off. Because I'm like, you're not going to do anything with those. Could you at least have brought back the litter box? Or just left the litter boxes, like, after you ripped the boxes open? Like, 
It's like I feel, it's like stealing my wallet, but like also like taking my driver's license. It's like, can you just at least let me keep, you can have the money and like I'll cancel the credit card or whatever, but can I, can I keep my ID? Can I, <laughs> I don't want to have to go phone the government. I'm going to be on the phone for like 10 hours getting my driver's license back. But I was thinking we need to get like one of those packages that explodes. Like not doing any harm, but one of the ones that like when you pick it up, it just detonates really loudly and shoots glitter on the person that, that stole it. Not like the Unabomber. No, that's he was mailing those out, man. Someone stole my entire tomato planter off my porch this weekend. Commercial Drive is the Badlands. You know how it is. You can't have shit in Vancouver. I'm surprised we've never had like any plants stolen. I heard that, like, so some of the stuff that gets stolen, you're like, okay, what did I expect? You know, occasionally some shit's going to get stolen off your patio. Big whoop. I've heard stories of people getting their trees dug out of their front lawn. And then they just got them on, like, the ring camera uprooting their whole tree. That's the shit that pisses me off because you're like... Why are you stealing my tree? Like, I, I get that you want it, but, like, what are you going to do with it? I guess they steal it and plant it at their own house? Like, I, I, I just don't understand. If you can manage to steal my tree, you can have it. It was more just, like, it's one of those crimes that's just, like, it's marginal gain for the thief and extremely annoying for the person who got stolen from. That's why, like, the first, we've only been porch pirated two times. This time was annoying. The first time, they stole our dishwasher pots. I know that it's like a loot box. They don't know what they're getting. But, like, imagine we needed dishwasher pods to do our dishes. They stole our dishwasher pods. I think it's unlikely that they have a compatible dishwasher. So they probably just, like, opened the box and then said, what is this garbage? And then hucked it, like, two blocks from our house. What did they steal the second time? My electric razor and two cat litter boxes, which is like also pretty annoying. The police care. Ha ha ha. I get it. That's how I feel whenever like the Tesla Model 3 in our parking garage records me just getting out of my car. Every time I walk by it, the headlights turn on and I see the little HAL 9000 recording icon on the screen in the center. And I'm like, buddy, you're, I think you're wasting your battery life. Even if someone breaks into our parking garage, smashes your car window, puts their face up to the camera, and steals like half the shit in your car, the police aren't going to do anything with it. How do I know? Because this is what happened to us when they stole our damn uh, micro SD card from, from our car. Be a bearded bagpipe. Ring, ring, ring. Hello, uh, non-emergency line. Hi, uh, someone broke into my car and stole my winter coat. Me talking to the officer. So give it to me straight, constable. What percentage of these missing winter coat cases do you guys tend to find the victim unscathed? A hundred percent. No! Don't steal the copper wires from my electric razor. Like, I don't know how much copper is in the electric razor. If you're gonna steal my razor, just knock on my door. I'll give you the amount of money that is, like, equivalent to the amount of copper in the razor. I'm sure it might be, like, a few bucks. And then it saves me from having to buy a new electric razor. And it saves you from having to, like, sell the copper. Do you have any of those waifu Pokemon cards that recently spiked in value? No, I own shares of VGRO, the 80% equity, 20% uh, fixed income exchange traded fund from Vanguard. It tracks uh, globally diverse, diversified stocks that are market cap weighted. But nobody's impressed when you pull them out at the card game shop. Instead, they're always like, quit bragging. And I'm like, what are you talking about, quit bragging? You've got like a first edition Charizard that you wear around your neck when you go into the boxing ring. 
Do you laminate your stock certificates? Excuse me, Jesse Livermore, is that you? You're old. Now, I, I'm genuinely not bringing this up because this person was toxic, because they weren't toxic. I'm bringing it up because I owned them, which was very funny. A mutual I have on Twitter was tweeting about how much they enjoyed the Final Fantasy 16 demo. I said, the demo's so good. Someone replied to us, and they follow me. Anytime I, I tweet at a mutual, and then someone replies to insert themselves into the conversation, they always follow me. It's always my fault. They never follow the mutual. It's always like, hey, I get it. Like it showed up on your for you page. So you now you're like, I'm part of the joke. You're not part of the joke. I don't know you, which is fine. But like, just be careful. I'm, I'm saying tread lightly. They said like a Final Fantasy demo or tutorial 20 years ago. Hey, Cloud Strife, help us take down this, uh, perform an act of eco-terrorism to take down this evil corporation. Final Fantasy tutorial now. Hello, Fortnite gamers. The goblins are acting goofy down in the swamp. Press square on them until they died. I typed up like, a, I don't know, probably like a 200 character reply that was trying to like, you know, appeal to reason. And then I just said, no, 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 that's not how, pe that's not how you do it on Twitter. I backspaced the entire comment and typed, okay, old ass, and sent it. And it felt incredible. It felt amazing. I'm not getting into an argument about Final Fantasy. You want to say things were better 20 years ago? You might be right, but you're getting an okay, old ass. That's what I do in this chat all the time. <laughs> okay, old ass. It's so good. I've been called an old ass before. That's how I know it's effective. It's really hard to beat. That's, the, that's what I was typing in the replies, too. I was typing, like... You know, it's not like you're, you're doing the freaking hitting the gritty after you kill a goblin. Like a, a little kid gets is beaten to death. And they show it for like five and a half minutes straight. You're like, they show it. You're like, he's not going to die. And then you're like, okay, he's going to die. They're going to cut soon. And then they just keep playing it, man. Like, that's pretty brutal. But I, I could type all that, but they don't care. So instead, I'm just going to type, okay, old ass. Is it normal to say lad in Canada? Mm, not at all, no. What about sorry? I don't know if people are ready for this, but I think sorry is kind of on its way out. What I'm used to is uh, one, one thing happens that's not a big deal at all, and it's equally on both people to blame. Like people are walking towards each other on the sidewalk, and they both dodge in the same direction. I say sorry, the other person says sorry, and then we just keep walking. What happens to me, maybe like one in three times now when that happens, is I say sorry, the other person says something along the lines of, you've got nothing to be sorry about. And then I feel like the energy is like, like maybe in their head they think they've like absolved me of feeling bad, but I didn't feel bad in the first place, I was just saying sorry out of politeness. Instead, now I'm like, it's like I wasn't trying to own you by saying sorry. I didn't realize that I'm, I'm the bad person here for saying sorry. The, the, the vibe is way off after that. It just doesn't feel right. I say you're good. Fuck you. <laughs> Sometimes I say my bad. My bad, you're good is fine. Sorry, you're good is like, I, the way I look at it, and this is too analytical, if I say sorry first, we're, we're both equal status in the interaction. I say sorry first, I've deliberately lost face. I'm choosing to lose face so that the interaction could even out again. And then you're not saying sorry and lowering yourself down to the same status that I lowered myself to. Instead, you're bringing me up one notch when I took myself down too. Because now you're the person that's being magnanimous, which makes you the bigger person. Instead of like, I'm also sorry, we're all trash. You're saying, you should be sorry, but don't worry about it. I'm so magnanimous, it doesn't even affect me. And that's why we have to fight.
So I'm not yielding the right of way anymore. I'm sorry. Because I just can't, nobody can be fucked to deal with all this. It's so complicated. <laughs> you got nothing to be sorry about? You don't know that! My favorite NL bit is when he embraces a position he doesn't believe in at all. I kind of believe in this position, though. Like, I know the, the analytical part... Well, let me rephrase this. The logical part of my brain doesn't think that they're trying to pick a fight. But there is, like, an, a, a Larry David, like, animal part of my brain that's like, oh, you think you're better than me. Lots of traffic on the sidewalk? It happens, man. There's lots of people here. Don't even get me started on situations where I'm walking as a solo boy and then two people are walking on the sidewalk towards me and they refuse to break parallel with one another to walk behind each other. So instead, my ass goes and is standing on like the grass while they walk by. You guys are going to break up in six months anyway. It's not that serious, okay? I do... I I... Generally, I'm, you know, conflict avoidant. There are times, though, depends what I had for lunch or what I didn't have for breakfast. When I'll just, like, hold steady like Craig Finn. I told this story, it was probably a year ago now. There was, like, a mom and two kids, but they were kids that, they're not, like, two. They were, like, 11 or 12. And the kids, you could just tell, sometimes you just look at a kid and you're like, this kid's a fucking troublemaker. I'm not saying he's, you know, like blowing up toilets with cherry bombs, but he's a cut up, you know, he's a smart aleck. You know what I'm talking about. So this kid was walking with his dog on a leash and they were like not paying attention. They were like punching each other and stuff like that. I got as far right on the sidewalk as I could, which is my lane. It's my lane. And uh, I just kept walking. And at no point did they ever look like they were going to yield. But I said, I just... I, I'm not moving. This is my space. I got to preserve my space. You got space to move over behind your mom. And I kept walking. And then the kid moved over, but he didn't move the dog over. So the leash like wrapped itself around my torso as I was walking. And then the kid went from like cut up to reek status in like 0.1 second. He was like, oh my God, sorry, mister. And I just said, okay. And then he like untangled the leash and kept walking. I wanted him to know, you know, like, I'm a nice guy. You're lucky I'm a nice guy. A lot of people out there would say, you got nothing to be sorry about. And then that shit's really going down. You don't have to, like, you know, drop the drug from Limitless before you go walking on the sidewalk, but you should at least, like, you know, pay attention to your surroundings. Okay, old ass. <laughs> oh, man. So true. I think passive aggression gets a bad rap. It's annoying when it happens to you, but it feels great to do it sometimes. It feels awesome to be passive aggressive. Like if somebody says, how are you? And they've annoyed you and you say, okay. And then don't even reciprocate the question. Ooh. <laughs> oh man. It's like Thanos getting the last infinity stone. Is this a roguelite? I think everything is kind of a roguelite. Because it's always different depending on how you feel that day. So the game is the same every time. But no man ever climbs only up twice. Because it's not the same man and it's not the same mountain. The West Coast acts like they care about you, but they're judging you. No, we just like don't like to... Motherfucker. Oh, what? I, you, okay, you just land on the plane. That's fine. This is bad. We're going a long way down. I can land right here. There we go. Harry, it's been a long time since we've been in Harry Potter land, man. <laughs> I'm in awe. How is he not frustrated? What is there to be frustrated about? He's seething right now. I mean, like, it, I would be frustrated if someone had like a gun to my head and said, if you don't beat this game in like the next 30 minutes, 
I'm gonna kill you. But like, you know, I'm waking up tomorrow anyway. You know what's interesting to think of? There's definitely worse punishments than the trial of Sisyphus. And you know, here's where this what's gonna blow your mind. You know what's a worse trial than the punishment of Sisyphus? What if he just didn't give him the fucking boulder? Or the mountain? That would be the most frustrating trial of all. If he really wanted to punish Sisyphus, he should have taken the boulder away. His ass would have been going crazy like the guy in the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones song. Sisyphus, you must eat without phone. That's really good. I don't know if you made that up or that's a reference to another piece of work, but that's really good. Millennials, gen you could just change it. Whatever generation you are, just make it the other generation. Gen Z Sisyphus be like, I have to eat without phone. Showering without phone is worse than eating without phone? What are you talking about? You guys are showering with phone? Okay, lots of people are hitting them with the huh. I'm glad that I'm not the only one here. If you have a Bluetooth speaker and you listen to music in the shower, I don't think there's anything, you know, troubling about that. If you have your phone in the shower in like a Ziploc freezer bag so you can scroll while you scrub, I do have a problem with that. I think there's something wrong with that. Same type of people that like when I tell them I have one cup of coffee a day, they're like, oh, so you're addicted? They're using their damn phone in the shower? You are addicted? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I'm addicted to having one cup of coffee a day. But like, at least I can shower in like six minutes. Six minutes? First off, I'm bald, okay? So like that takes off the hair washing time. Hello. Oh, everything went great. Oh, okay, fantastic. But uh, honestly, you could take as long as you take in the shower and I'm not going to shame you. The only reason I'm shaming you is because I'm being shamed for taking six minute showers. So people are uh, um, implying that I'm dirtier than they are. No, I'm honestly just as clean, if not cleaner, because I shower every day. Whereas people in chat will be like, actually doing things that's good for you is bad for you. People will just be wasting a lot of time in the shower. If you want to... If you want to waste time in the shower, it's your time, by all means. But don't take a 20-minute shower and delude yourself into thinking that all 20 minutes of it was productive for the purposes of showering. It's simply false. There were, like, some productive minutes in there, and then a lot of it was just, like, sitting there thinking about life, which is okay. Again, it's okay. But you're not any cleaner after like a 20 minute shower. Eventually, you know, you're like, you're as wet as you're going to get. Pop-Tarts? I kind of loved Pop-Tarts as a kid, I'll be honest. I think my insane Pop-Tart take would be that cold Pop-Tarts taste better than warm Pop-Tarts. I think it might just be because I always ate them cold as a kid. Same thing with like the pizza Lunchables. Like a, a Lunchables pizza tasted better if you didn't heat it up in the microwave. You're supposed to heat up the pizza? So, I don't know if it's supposed to. It, it's, you can heat up the pizza. But I don't know about you. I only got a microwave that was accessible to me in school in like the eighth grade. And then we promptly lost microwave privileges uh, because we started microwaving like marshmallows. And one marshmallow would blow up from marshmallow size to, like, stay puffed marshmallow man size. And then we would slice it up with, like, plastic forks and knives and act like we were eating, like, a delicacy. Even, like, at the time, with our limited knowledge of science, we were like, holy cow. Like, one marshmallow can feed, like, five people. <laughs> Infinite food glitch just dropped. But, like, isn't it... Liz, okay, I know it's like you're putting a mass into the microwave. And be, according to the third law of, or the first law of dynamics, that mass can't get any larger unless something is actually added to it, okay? But the microwave is adding something to it. It's adding heat. And heat is energy. 
which is calories. So how is it not that like the calories from the microwave's heat are not making the marshmallow? You know what I mean? The math, make it make sense, the math ain't mathing. That just doesn't make sense. Heat is not calories. What about a specific heat capacity? That's, that's calories. You can't eat sunlight? No, I know, that's what we need the plants for. I'm not saying hot food has more calories than cold food. I am saying, if you eat cold food, you burn more calories than via digestion than you do if you eat hot food. Because your body has to spend energy to warm up the food to your internal temperature. So true. So true. That's true. He's right. That's why I'm on an ice cream diet right now. I gotta be careful. This seems like the kind of thing that could actually like go viral as a new diet on Food Talk. Intermittent fasting is out. The new diet is it's called Arctic fasting. Eight hours a day of fasting and eight hours a day of eating food that is below zero degrees Celsius. <laughs> Me eating a whole frozen pizza without putting it in the oven first and getting uh, food poisoning and dying. What about the last eight hours? Only foods that are more than 100 degrees Celsius. You've got mail? That's a pretty good one too. I just don't know. Technology's come so far. They got a remake, You Got Mail, but for modern audiences. They can call it, You've Got Email. Guy who doesn't understand the plot of the movie. World's, world's worst stand-up comedy set. You know, they do a lot of remakes these days. I, and they gotta remake them and modernize them as well. Like, for example, I think they should take that Tom Hanks movie, You've Got Mail, and remake it. They could call it, You've Got Email. Someone in the audience. The movie's about email. Oh, yeah. Be that as it may. Uh... <laughs> Everybody get back. <laughs> it's a Tom Myers bit. Who the hell's Tom Myers? Let's find out Tom Myers is a streamer with like 30,000 concurrent viewers. It's gonna sub alert. It's gonna be who the hell is Tom Myers. It's me saying who the hell's Tom Myers. I'm gonna get dunked on. Shit's gonna get repeated in my chat every day. Motherfucker. What's your beef with Tom Myers? I think you go early, worm. Is nothing sacred? Start of turn, stock one, two gold apple? Oh no, <laughs> it's ass. <laughs> what the hell? It's horrible. That's why it's tier two now. I guess. Chibli, I actually tried to play Battle Bit Theater today. I went to buy it on Steam, and every time I clicked purchase, it just booted me back to the homepage. And then I was like, okay, that's fine. I'll buy it on uh, the web client instead. The web client was fully logged in. Like, it had all of my inventory stuff there. And then... Um, I typed in BattleBit Remastered, and I clicked on Purchase Now, and then it told me to log in, and I said, fuck you. <laughs> I said, eat my shit, you broke-ass platform. And instead, I played four and a half hours of going up. I also went to, this is not a joke. I went to r slash Steam to see if there was, like, a, any other people were having the problem. But r slash steam is a subreddit about steam, but like the platform, but all of the posts are like as if it's about the vapor, which is just annoying. Like is like there's a post with uh, the Seinfeld post where Kramer's in the sauna and he says it's just like a sauna in here. 
I was like, I need help right now, you assholes. That's a that's the, that's the protest. The protest is that they stayed open but bad. The moderators were threatened to be banned. No, I know, but it just like sucks. I don't I'm like I'm I'm I guess I'm as mad at Reddit for it as I am at anybody, but I'm mostly <laughs> I'm just upset. That's the thing. The new protest wave is to spam your own subreddit with pornography. I, listen, I followed the the API changes, and I think they're really bad. I haven't really been following the protest, but I support the protesters. Because you have to, or people will be really mad. That being said, I wish, couldn't they protest by um, locking the subreddit, but... M Still making an exception for serious situations like a streamer unable to purchase a game he wants to play on his stream. The protest is silly. I just don't know, like, why... <laughs> I guess I know exactly the situation and I side with the protesters. I get that they're making the API more expensive because they're trying to go to IPO. They want the highest valuation possible. But, like... I prefer the third-party apps because they're not shit. So they should make they should price the API cheap enough that the third-party apps are still sustainable. Or they should make the official app not be so shitty. There's a few ways out of the situation. It's because of AI scraping Reddit. Well, make the AI pay for it then. Thank you, Royal Flycatcher. Thank you. Make Bob explains this. Pay for it. But then you gotta pay the AI a living wage. No! Me when I lose my job to chat GPT and they give him a raise. Me when they, me in the 1600s when they replace me with a drill press and then the drill press wins employee of the month. Me, the guy who previously drove the train by running my feet under the tracks really, 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 really fast when the steam engine comes out and they tell me not to come into work tomorrow. I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing right now. Me, when I'm trying to troubleshoot what's wrong with my steam engine, but r slash steam engine is protesting by being about uh, the web platform that sells video games instead of about the vapor that I need in order to run my train. It's kind of messed up to make fun of the Titanic submarine because, like, it's the worst way to die of all time. But it's also kind of hard not to make fun of it because there is no way my ass would ever get in that submarine because the first thing I would say is, I'm not getting in that, I'm going to die. I, I, I kind of look at it like the guy who was making homemade rockets and then he died in a homemade rocket accident. It's like, you know, would you, I mean, there's a lot of reasons that I'm not building rockets in my backyard. One of them is that I have no expertise. One of them is that I have no interest, but like definitely up there is the fact that I would probably get myself killed. I don't even, and, and like, I know I'm, I'm resisting the temptation to just jump in and like, cause I don't believe in karma, but like simultaneously, like, I don't think it's cool to, like, make fun of these people that are probably dying in the submarine. I just think, like, it... I, I don't think the universe is going to punish you for doing it, but I just wouldn't feel like a good guy for saying it. But simultaneously, I'm like, brother, as soon as they pulled out the Logitech controller and said, this is how we drive the submarine, like, my ass is not getting in that. Service. An experimental submersible vessel that has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and could result in physical injury, disability, emotional trauma, or death. Where do I sign? The Titan is the only five-person sub in the world that can reach titanic depths, 2.4 miles below the sea. It's also the only one with a toilet, sort of. And yet, I couldn't help noticing how many pieces of this sub seemed improvised. We can use these off-the-shelf components. I got these from uh, Camper World. 
we run the whole thing with this game controller. <laughs> Come on! You didn't even go first party? I got nothing against Logitech. I have a Logitech keyboard and mouse. Generally speaking, I, I have positive interactions with the, the, the brand, but like, not in a submarine. I want that shit to be made by like, you know, Boeing or Westinghouse or something like that. I don't, I don't want the, the hoary arcade stick controlling the Titanic submarine. And they, they weld you in there too. It's crazy. And then the, the extra wrinkle that like the only other submarine on earth that can get to that depth is owned by Gabe Newell. It's, it's quite the story. <laughs> you, drive, you would not catch my ass getting in the submarine. You can only drive with the Taiko no Tatsujin drums, man. And his sub looks so much better. I, it has like a window and everything. And I'm guessing he didn't buy like the stuff that he needed at Camping World or Camper World. Sorry. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Like sometimes being disinterested actually has like a lot of value. I don't need to go down there and see the Titanic. What am I expecting to see? It's a, it's sunk. Like, I get that it's, it would be, if the Titanic was on land, I would go to the museum and be like, whoa, that's crazy. But I would not dive, you know, thousands of meters. Maybe it's not thousands of meters, but it's, I don't know. I don't know how far down it is. It's far enough down. I saw the infographic that was like, the pressure down here is so high that it can like turn a tungsten cube into like a single grain of sand. 12,500 feet. I'm gonna stop you right there. I don't know what that means. 12,500 feet. That's 2,800 meters. 2,800 meters. That's pretty far. That's, that's pretty... No no shot, dude. It's actually 3,800? I, I mean... I gotta... What, what's the depth where, like, if you don't have equipment, you, the pressure kills you, assuming you could breathe underwater? Like a hundred feet, maybe? Maybe less? 25 feet? I guess you can't really look at that. That's like being in an airplane and being like 30,000 feet. Bro, humans die if they fall from like 15 feet. You'll never catch me going 30,000 feet in the air. Good one. Maybe all airplanes should just fly 15 feet above the ground. This is lies. I've been on 80 foot dives. Okay, the, either way, it's like, it's... It's not very far down relative to the submarine. I guess that's why you need a submarine to begin with. Why do planes go so high? The air is thinner, so it takes less fuel to generate velocity at that height. Also, the higher you go, the more uh, you're aided by the rotation of the Earth. Like, if you fly closer to the ground, like the, the airplane's doing all the work to travel, but if you fly higher up in the air, the Earth is doing like 80% of the work just rotating underneath you. Should have stopped talking. Wait, that's not true? It sounds true. This is like on Jeopardy when they get the last name of the person right, but then they say the first name. But the first name is wrong, so they get it wrong. It'd be like, he wrote the old man in the sea while drunk on Cuba Libres. Beep beep. James? Who is Ingmar Hemingway? <sighs> Ooh. No, that's incorrect. Jennifer? Who is Hemingway? That's correct. You guys think that Zion Williamson is going to get uh, traded to the Charlotte Bobcats? Are they? They're not the Bobcats anymore. I'm on antiquated knowledge, aren't I? They're the Hornets again. Have you heard the Zion allegations? <clears throat> I heard that he... Um... Is he's conceived a child with an adult film star, but is also involved in interactions with other women who may also be involved in the adult film industry. And then the one that he conceived the child with has filmed them having intercourse and she's threatening to release the video. But I think that maybe this is all I know. I think that she's working on antiquated knowledge. She said she's going to destroy his career by releasing the video. It's 2023. It, it, it honestly could only elevate someone's career at this point. It does, and, and why should it destroy his career playing basketball? Oh, now that I know that the guy who's 5'11 
famous for shooting the round ball into the round hoop. Also has intercourse. Like, he can't play basketball anymore? I don't know. What if he's bad at it? Who? I mean, I don't want to say who cares, but like, it's none of your business. It's a little embarrassing, I guess, but he can still play basketball. What if they're not married? Well, that's not acceptable, but I think it's, it's too late for that. <laughs> oh. Just say you J-O'd to it, you pervert. What are you talking about? I don't even, I, I've only seen this on Twitter. I've never sought out other sources. I did have a great idea for a sketch, though, for the sketch comedy show. What if you uh, turned the top 20 tags on Pornhub into, like, the Premier League? And then every year, the bottom three tags got relegated, and then, like, 21 through 20... Three got promoted, and the ones in the Premier League were considered like normal fetishes, and you could not be called a pervert for engaging in those fetishes and enjoying them. But then once you get down from 21 to 40, it's like a little bit degenerate, and then from like 41 to 60, I mean, those are like 70 person stadiums that have like huge puddles in them where the soccer ball loses all of its momentum and stuff like that. I thought that image popped into my head and I was like, that's a great bit, man. Because honestly, I think my knowledge, like my understanding of the fetish Premier League is like antiquated. Like I'm still out here thinking like um, Nottingham Forest is like the best team in the league. I'm still out here thinking that like hentai makes you a degenerate, but I'm pretty sure that that got promoted into the Premier League of fetishes like at least 10 years ago, if not longer. I think that's that's been like legitimized and then there's probably some stuff that previously was in the Premier League that's no longer in there. I don't know, like Bush or something like that. It's a good bit, right? It's a good bit. I'm not gonna write it, but it's a good bit. Anyway. <laughs> Slash marker. <laughs> Sam. We're here with some family-friendly... Super Auto Pets. This weekly is crazy. I'm being legitimate with you. There have been um, episodes of the weekly that I've recorded where in the later rounds, the round ends without either side ever attacking. Playing like the Canucks. Lieber! <laughs> oh. oh, I bumped the wrong unit, but you have to be there for that position anyway. Um, it's so funny. My daughter sometimes i'm like do you want to go to the playground usually she's like yes sometimes though she's like no i want to go home and i say what do you want to do at home and she says i want to watch tv with daddy and then i say oh what do you want to watch on tv and she says i want to watch the hockey game now obviously hockey's been over for like a week now um i had to explain to her she's like is Vancouver playing? And I'm like, no, Vancouver doesn't play anymore. And then she says, why? And I say, because they don't win. So now, like, anytime she sees, like, a banner advertising the Canucks or, like, an ad on TV about the Canucks, she goes, like, that's Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver, they don't play. They don't win, so they don't play. And I'm like, she's right. Might as well... You know, teacher now. Better to learn it now than to learn it, you know, at any other later point, I guess. When she starts sports betting. No child of mine will be a sports gambler. I think I'm just going to lie to her and be like, we lost all of our money in sports gambling. And then... She maybe won't do it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> NL, I added cardio to my gym routine instead of solely lifting weights. And I got to say, you were right. Well, it, it's funny. Like, you added peanut butter to your chocolate. I added chocolate to my peanut butter. After, like, a year and a half of just doing cardio, I added weights to my cardio. And I'm like, whoa, people are right. This is, like, a lot of fun. No! What was he right about? Young men undervalue cardio. For some reason, 
They, I think that what they tell themselves is that it's catabolic and they want to get huge. So like cardio equals bad. But actually the way I look at it is cardio is like a different kind of exercise because it requires the mental toughness to like enter a state of meditation for 90 minutes. You should totally be able to watch Netflix on the Peloton though. You're not watching Netflix, you're biking. You can have a, a, an iPad or something. You can hook up an iPad or a television in the room. You can watch Netflix if you want. I'm just saying, when it comes to the output, I'm going to cook your ass. Can't you do both? Yeah, I guess in the 100-meter dash, why doesn't uh, Usain Bolt just put some Bluetooth earbuds in and like listen to a podcast while he's in the Olympics? It's not a competition, old ass. We're trying to get healthy. Are you trying to get healthy or are you trying to watch as much Netflix as possible when you're doing other shit? It's just not my... It's not a, an ambition for me. Why not both? Because it's going to distract you during your workout when you should be focusing on your workout. You can do both. Just stop telling me how to do mine when it's working out fine for me. It's torture? It's not torture. You're just weak. <laughs> Our granddads that were going over and dying to save the world would have killed to spend 90 minutes a day on the exercise bike. You think they would have been like, oh, but I want to be on my phone at the same time? When they were all in the fetal position in the trenches begging for like a, a can of old ass fish or something like that just to keep the demons away for two minutes? They would have killed for a 30 minute Emma Lovewell 90s rock ride. Can you pick a volume and stick with it? Can you pick my ass and kiss it? <laughs> Old ass. The only thing I know about Modest Mouse is my mom's ex-boyfriend loved them and he turned out to be a cocaine addict. Okay, well, like, lots of people abuse drugs. Most of the people who abuse drugs listen to bad music, probably. So, if anything, you shouldn't be drawing like a parallel between those two unrelated things. It's not Isaac Brock's fault that your mom's ex-boyfriend abused cocaine, okay? It's Ronald Reagan's fault, I think. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it, but I knew it would get lots of upvotes, so I said it. <laughs> Who's the Canadian version of Ronald Reagan? I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot. It's hard to draw the parallels across so many different data points. No. Rob Ford is definitely the analog to a different American president. And I'll let you insert your own biases to find it. Yeah, dude, it's probably Brian Mulroney. That, I think that that is the correct answer. Similar political ideologies, uh, similar uh, legacies of either being beloved or very contentious. That sounds like the analog to me. Also, it's great because it's one of like the seven Canadian prime ministers I can actually name. Okay, it's called parkour, sweetheart. War is hell, dude. Get owns. Okay, there's the first uh, kill of many, I'm sure. If you don't mind, I'm reviving you right here. I'm gonna, once, once I die, which may never happen, I'm gonna raise the audio. Don't worry about it for now, though. Nice try. Can I shoot them in the head after I kill them so that they can't be revived? I'm just holding this angle, okay? Try it. Oh, what, like I can't do it or like it's against the Geneva Convention? Because those are two very different things. Sound is low. I know, I wanna turn it up, but I, I never die. If I died, I could change my audio settings. I mean, I'm in the middle of like a war zone right now. People are like past the ox cord. Brother, I'm trying to like spread freedom or stop the spread of freedom or whatever. I'm doing something. That's the important part. What are you doing? Just naysaying? Okay, follow your team. I'm sure there's some corpses out here we can take advantage of. 
Lad, don't worry, I got you. Let me get him, I'm a medic. Let me get him, I'm trained in this. I'd like to heal you as well, sir. I'd like to heal you. I don't know how. I'm gonna hold E on you. That's not how. Five, okay, sorry. My mistake, this is my first time. I just, I, I was, previously I was a dirt farmer in Wyoming. Just came out on the last uh, chopper. I miss my family. What if I die here? Who'll be my role model? Now that my, you know, you guys like, you can call me Al by Paul Simon. It's kind of, it's an all timer in many ways. My squad, my squad. No, it's okay, brother. I'm trained for this. Drag him. Get him out of here. Okay. Get revived. And then, hang on, I got, I got, dude, relax, stop, you're so eager to die. It's sad, man, but you don't even know what it means to really live yet. Okay, you need some ammo as well, I've noticed that. Okay, now I'm, I'm on my next mission. I see we got the squad pinned down there. How you doing, lads? Anyone out here need some healing? I see your brother. K keep up the great work. I got a cross. Can you cover your medic while he crosses? The boys up there need my help. They need my help! I got you, lads. Don't worry. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay! Hang on, I have to bandage myself. Also, I just got promoted. Oh, come on! The turret is not used from on top, like in the movie Commando. I repeat, the turret is not used from on top, like in the movie Commando. I'm dead! I need to reload my gun! <laughs> We're both horrible! Let's go! My teammate saved me! Okay, bandage myself, bandage myself. <laughs> War is hell. We lost! But we captured Objective E! I didn't teabag! I was crouching to speed up my reload. I wasn't teabagging! If I did, it would be hilarious, but I didn't. This game is making me consider the horrors of war. But how? We're we're dominating. Don't worry, I got you. Look at that. Have some bandages or whatever. Get revived. I don't even know who I'm reviving. War is easy, bro. I I sense them. I sense their presence. Oh, sense that. It's going to be hard without a brain. I saw a glint. I got you, brother. Don't even sweat it. We're not losing tickets for something like that. Now, I cannot res you. I'm out of resurrection juice. Medic! War is hell, brother! Glinter! Um, I don't have any bandages. I need a medic! Huh? Oh. Um, mommy. I'm saved. No, oh, don't get me. Get the... Oh, no, he's dead. All right, I'm... Can you take the role play a little bit more seriously? I think this is what I would be like in an actual combat situation. This is me at age 61 on the back of my daughter's husband's ATV. Last known photograph was me <laughs> smiling right in front of the ATV. <laughs> in tragic news, uh, noted psychopath. Northern Lion has died when his ATV exploded after falling off of a cliff today. I was trying to channel the now this uh, Germa video where he got a cochlear implant. He lost his hearing laughing at a car explosion. <laughs> oh! Dude, get in the chopper! Get to the chopper! Get in the chopper, man! Let me in! Bro! He couldn't even wait for us to get in. Like, he won the race to be the driver. Why are the blades just spitting on the ground, dude? No, oh, I guess that sound probably explains that, huh? 
Okay, I, I got you, brother. This is my job. I understand. This is my job. I cannot res him. Is there a reason that I cannot res him, even though I'm the medical officer on this ship? Did he give up? Does he have no tenacity? Because that's an enemy body. Do uh, you ever hear about the Hippocratic Oath? Dude, this is like actually my ideal FPS. Those are all enemies, huh? There were so many of them, and my teammate wasn't shooting, that I was like, oh, they must be our guys. Like, I just, I, it was like I accidentally ended up at their poker game or something. He was shooting? Well, he wasn't doing a good job. They were still standing. But I was saying this is my ideal FPS because, like, all the interior environments are just, like, gray boxes. It's so easy for me to see where the... Okay, I understand the irony, but it's so easy for me to see where the enemies are. Hang on, I got the other lad. You get that lad, I got this lad. It's called the Hippocratic Oath. He gave up while I was dragging him?! He's on the wrong team. Oh! <laughs> Whoops. Hang on, you need some support. I got you. Why aren't you shooting anybody? My talents are better served to heal than to kill. I'm just watching the cat dance. I know how it is. I've been there. I've made him dance myself from time to time. You ever consider resurrecting your brother in arms who's literally right next to you and who you died because you didn't resurrect them? How does that make you feel? And why is everyone so selfish in this war? No wonder they have to draft people into like the real war. The consequences of mistakes are so high and then like most of it is like drudgery followed by complete terror. There's no way he's getting away with that one. Okay, never mind. I'm, I'm overpowered. <laughs> Anybody want to shoot this dude on the opposing team or, or what? Oh no, it's all, I'll just expose myself, saving your life, and then nobody's gonna medic. Medic just sprints right by you. I think you guys are right. I think I need a squad. Like I know I'm the only person in my squad right now, basically. I think like I need, I need people on VoIP that are definitely not gonna drop slurs. I mean, I just can't imagine like, uh, being a medic and not trying to resurrect people. Like, that's, that's like one of nature's cruelest jokes. Why make a doctor that only hurts instead of helps? Yeah, I mean, like, what did I expect to happen? <laughs> I tried, I tried. Chibli, Chibli, hello, Chibli, save me. It's a game's full of, like, every single squad is either locked Chibli or it's eight medics and then none of the medics ever resurrect. Make it make sense, so now I'm forced to play Sniper just because, like, it's a... Look at this guy standing right on top of me, I'm so safe, he won't even resurrect me! It's... it's... It, just the selfishness of, of people. It boggles the mind. You ever think about it, like, this is... It seems like cheating to do a maze like this, but this is kind of how we do mazes with, like, a pen and a paper. We have a top-down view of the whole maze. So true. By the way, I didn't even mention this. This is kind of like a little mini anecdote from the cruise. We were out uh, on, a, on a boat, obviously, but like this was not the cruise ship. It was a secondary boat taking a look at a glacier in Alaska. Middle-aged woman in front of me on the boat. I swear to you, God is my witness. She was doing a word search. Like not a crossword puzzle. She had a book of word search puzzles and she was just ripping through them. Based, based. I, I guess she's she's earned the right to do whatever she wants to do in her leisure time. But I was like, it's like, <laughs> what's the point, man? Keep your brain sharp. Well, like you could do some crosswords or like some Sudoku or something like that. But uh, like a word search. I hope they were hard word searches at least. Like, I hope they had uh, diagonals and backwards. 
They're fun when you're like seven and you finished your multiplication worksheet and then your teacher doesn't have anything for you to do. So she's like, here's like a Valentine's Day themed <laughs> word search. <laughs> when your teacher is like hung over or something, but somebody else has already signed out one of the two televisions in your middle school. I guess they would have to sign out both of them. Otherwise, she could just take the other one. So maybe I'm not as smart as I think I am. Maybe I'm not as think as you drunk I am. There were a lot of good days in school, right? When your teacher says tomorrow there's going to be a movie, that's a good day in school. Pajama day? I, there's some irony here. I was never that into like hat day or crazy hair day, but pajama day? You feel like you're breaking the rules when you show up to school in your pajamas, man. Smoothie day? We never had smoothie day, but like now and then we would have like a milkshake day. Reed's Dairy would do a huge delivery. They had vanilla. They had chocolate. I know what you're going to say. Let me guess. Third flavor, strawberry? Nah, nah, nah. Third flavor, orange. And people went crazy for the, for the orange flavor. There's some great vibes in school, too. The last like month of senior year of high school, at least in Ontario, is a vibe. You've already figured out what you're going to do for the next year. You've already been, if you're going to university or college, you've already got your acceptance letter. Um, so the, the only way they're going to rescind it is if basically like you shoot a man to death. <laughs> you could pretty much, it, it, it's basically just like, oh, what have I done? That's fine. That's not that bad. You're not, I wouldn't say you're in the prime of your life. But you're in that unique period where you have most people at least have relatively few responsibilities and the highest level of freedom that they've ever had. You might even you, you either have a, a car and a driver's license or you got a friend who has a car and a driver's license. Someone's older brother can pick up uh, a six pack of truly hard seltzers and then you and 12 other people can all get drunker than you've ever been in your entire life. Crazy my, uh, I was going to say my uncle. He's not my uncle. He's my brother-in-law. He tells me that, like, you know, my niece is 12, which is really young. But when you're a parent, it's 12 seems a lot different than when you're 12. Like, when I think back to when I was 12, I was playing Lemmings on the school PC. I had... Uh, bleach blonde hair and oval glasses and just looked like a fucking disaster but i was like still a kid but as an adult you're like holy cow my kid is going to college in like six years and he was telling me like all the private schools like private high schools that he's heard of all have problems with like kids in like the ninth and the tenth grade doing hard drugs like sophomores in high school like getting caught doing cocaine and stuff like that what the hell is a 13 year old doing with cocaine <laughs> i guess i shouldn't laugh but i'm just like what like i didn't even have my first alcoholic beverage until i was in my first year of university and that was still like you know year and a half before it was legal but still Thankfully, nobody was coming up to me in the 10th grade and being like, here's some cocaine. Isn't this shit like grown in South America and then like shipped in a, in a glass bottom boat to Mexico and then like smuggled across inside of like old mattresses or something like that? How does a 13 year old get their hands on, on hard drugs like that? That's, that's insanity. And also, what are they doing? I mean, it's just like, if you're watching this and you're around that age, do not do cocaine. You're 13. It just doesn't, like, make sense. You probably shouldn't do it, like, ever, maybe. I don't know. But, like, if you're a, a Wall Street stockbroker and you're out partying until 4 a.m., and you got to wake up in time for, like, the bell, then I, I guess I understand that, like, you need something to, to keep you going or to get you started. But, like, well, you're 13. 
You're eating lunch at like 10.45 a.m. Like what's... <laughs> it just seems crazy to me. Okay, old ass. <laughs> I've never done it. So I did like... I, I'm, I guess I'm thankful, you know. It would only take like... I, a few things going different as like a kid. Maybe I'm friends with uh, somebody just because our houses happen to be next to each other and the adults have kids that are a similar age. That kid goes on like a foreign exchange one summer. He comes back. He's addicted to cocaine. He grew a mustache. He's got a gold chain and a, a Hawaiian shirt that he keeps almost unbuttoned except for like one button. So you can see like a little tuft of gray chest hair coming out. And then my life could be completely different. I could be living like in Miami right now. I'm just like, man, my, my kid is only two, but it's not like that long until they're 12. I better not catch any 12-year-olds doing cocaine at my kid's school. Or you'll catch me pulling up. I'll be like, stop doing cocaine. <laughs> You're 12. That's crazy. I don't know. I'll, I'll come up with some better rhetoric by then. A decade is a long time. It's like a long time, but it's not that long. Like, here's the thing. It's going to be here eventually anyway. I'd rather be prepped for it. I'm trying to think, like, at my high school. It seems quaint at this stage of society. There was, like, a Ritalin selling ring. I don't even know if Ritalin is, like, still a thing. All I ever hear about is Adderall. But, like, some kids who had gotten... That's BS. Never mind. Never mind. Some kids who had gotten, like, Ritalin prescriptions for their ADHD didn't take the medicine, and then they were selling the pills. And that's, like, that was a pretty big controversy, like, at the time. I don't think anybody was, like, you know, trafficking black tar smack or anything like that. Maybe. I don't know. It's 11.22, so we've been playing for like two hours. We set a new personal best. Our most, I, I understand this is the wrong time to be, you know, counting our dubs. <laughs> Saved. You want to talk about the pair of stones you have to have to just fall directly onto that block and not adjust your trajectory? It just looked right, man. Just trying to see. Just trying to see where I might want to go here. I guess you want to land on the... the bed? Hello, kitty. YouTube, uh, 100,000 subscribers, silver plaque. YouTube, 1 million subscribers, silver, pl silver plaque. A gold plaque. YouTube Rainbow Horse. 10 million, 10 million subscriber Rainbow Horse. YouTube 100 million subscriber Decorative Yurt. <laughs> No shot, dude. No shot. They want me to make it through the the okay sign. There is no way. Over. Now that's makeable. We're C sharp, C sharp, C plus plus. I just run into the interstellar? He did it? Did I make it? You've beaten... Congratulations. You have beaten a great game. No wonder people are speedrunning this. This is easy, man. Wait a minute. <laughs> Is 
it's not over yet. Did you guys trick me? There's two more jumps. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's even worse than if there was like 20% more. Two more jumps is so much pressure. I see it. Okay, use your brain. This is heavy brain using times, no glancing. Congratulations. I know they wouldn't prank you at the end. Yo! Richard Branson space plane? see time only up winner you have conquered the map I don't know if Neil Armstrong's estate has copywritten the words that he said on the moon It'd be pretty messed up if they did considering the whole thing was government funded but whatever I don't make the rules hey to Omega thank you for the gifted scriptions and mad dog nation of course thank you as well no more jumps to dedicate this is what everyone's complaining about? This, this is the hardest game ever made? All you do is press spacebar 500 times. How does it feel? I'm just wondering why they're playing like a, a 17 hour long cutscene at the end as if it's Final Fantasy 16. Hey, Papusa Enthusiast, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Omega Newt. Thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Fiddler Chains. Thank you as well. Thank you. This is not sometimes that happens. You beat a long game. You beat a tough game. People show their support. This isn't a tough game, though. This is just a... This is just a... Uh, this is how your parents used to get to school. And, of course, Librarian. Thank you as well. Thank you. I'm sure you're celebrating the end of a lot of banter to sift through. Our Mater, thank you for the gifted subscriptions, of course. And VVWWVWVV, thank you too. By the way, I stole that getting to school joke from the Steam reviews, and you all laughed. What does that say about you? What does it say about me? What does it say about you? Okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be back to play some Battlebit Remastered with, with some people. I didn't yeah, see it. It was just, they were all blue, and I was upset. Uh, oh, it, hey, bud. We Dude, Chibli is oh, amazing yeah. at, at flying. How do I get it? Oh, you have to actually vault in, huh? Oh, you can Hurry, I'm breaking the helicopter to get in. <laughs> Justin, hold it. I'm breaking the helicopter. Oh, okay, I'm in a bit. <laughs> hey, where we going, boys? Where are we going? Oh, I guess D. Oh, helicopter. Get him. Get him. Press, helicopter. press F to repel. Is it just me or is this game really quiet? The, the audio is a little bit weird. Oh god, the, the okay, helicopter boys, Holy cow, boys. this is crazy. Get ready, boys! Get ready to what? Dude, this is crazy! Oh shit, this is insane! <laughs> I'm on the roof. I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. Oh, the chimney, there's a glitter out here! That's how Kate's my ass, dude. Oh man. Oh my god, oh, I've been murdered. Yes. I'm landing oh, us in the glitch. Bad guy, bad guy. Where? In the mountain? In the Humvee. And then there's oh, a guy yeah, 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 okay. Let's get him, let's get him. Oh, guy's up the hill, too. Bad guy's up the hill, Justin. Where we I tagged one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you guys still in the damn chopper? Yeah, yeah, there's ba many bad guys <laughs> up here. No, no, the chopper's clear, man. <clears throat> going back to, going back to ho LZ home to return to the LZ, okay? So what are we doing? Who knows, man? It's just... And the mo I, I thought because we were a squad, we would be unstoppable because we would have some teamwork. But it just, well, I mean, it seems Chibli like it's, it's just, just madness. Drop, us, drop three of us off in random places. Well, I keep getting <laughs> into this guy's chopper. He drops me off by myself and screams, get out, and then flies away. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle your left toes. <laughs> Wiggle your toes. Wiggle That's your a new one. Toes. This is the most chaotic my stream has ever been. I'm in a call with uh, four individuals. Bullets are flying around us 24-7. It's... Oh. <laughs> you have to come in and out. I can be revived. 
Did the filling go yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll try it, I'll try it again. Yeah. Okay. But the APC was going fast. Five down, does it feel normal? Oh and god, I said, oh god. I'm so numb, oh god. I can't feel anything. And then it's like, to, to the, to the paper. Chew the paper. Yeah, and I was like, "What does that mean?" It's like open, close, open, close. I passed the real answer. Oh no! Sorry, I just dragged your body. I'm deploying into. Sorry, I just muted and deafened everybody on Discord. Because this is just—it's just too much. It's just too crazy. Are you okay to drive? My brain is not done. She did say, my, my brain is not now. <laughs> oh, man. Lads, I'm back, I'm no, back. You're I'm back. I'm calling this in this game! Why is there like six people sitting in this shit, man? <laughs> there are like a hundred people on the road. <laughs> land, <laughs> land the chopper. It won't let me deploy. It won't let me either. Is it full? Oh, no, there's a bunch of empty spaces on the ropes. Oh, there we go. There Why we go. does no one ever get out? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Going, I don't, oh, okay, okay. Did Landis land us at an so objective? I am. Look, we're all we're all in. Take us to take us to E. We can get out. Here, let me. Okay, we're gonna A. We're gonna A, and we're gonna hop drop. Okay, we're gonna get out of the fucking helicopter. We're going to A. No, I'm not gonna hop. Just gonna just land the helicopter. We don't need the hop drop. Okay, point out a point out somewhere, and I'll land this. I can't because oh, I'm looking si out. I'm looking sideways. <laughs> I'm just chilling on the road. What is happening? Are these sounds normal? I don't know. <laughs> I can't bandage myself on this road. Risking lives to take Justin, Justin, the Justin, oh no! <laughs> Were you healing me? I was oh, trying no. to. Well, that's gonna be it for me. Here, just spawn in the chopper. Baby. Man, war is hell, huh? Oh yeah. True. Nah, it's fun as fuck, bro. <laughs> oh god, is that a... If you fly hey, you somewhere, wanna... I will get out of the chopper. Oh, yeah, how's it going? Oh, my God. Hey. Oh. <laughs> oh, Josh. It's Josh. Uh, Hello, Josh. Let's go. You got go. In plan, somebody in the game. Remastered. <laughs> Yo, jump a better better on the Josh. Jump on, man. I don't. Where the fuck are you guys? Uh oh. Are you in the server? Yeah, dude. Oh, we're oh, on, oh, we're we're on Lima. Lima. We're on Squad Lima. Squad Lima. When I die, join Lima. I don't know what killed me. Okay. We're gonna four. win this battle at E, dude. Hey. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, 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 yeah. How was your weekend? You don't need to do that. I saw people in chat are asking for it. You don't need to do that for them. I did. You have to give the people what they want. <laughs> it's Wednesday. I don't even remember at this point. Yeah, me neither. It's That's Wednesday. Valid. I remember Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Aren't you supposed to be at work right now? Yeah, but I took off so I can go to the Pirates game. Ah! Uh, <laughs> uh, no, we fucking lost, dude. Aww. Guys, secure a building and hold it, okay? Uh, captain's orders, okay? Is that okay. a rocket launcher? Yeah, I got a big rocket launcher in my Are back. You fucking use it or what? Oh, I got it. If I see a tank, I'm gonna blow it you up. See, you're just running around with a rocket launcher and it's not even equipped. What are you doing? Okay, I'll pull it out. I'll pull, pull it out, man. Yeah, let's see yeah, it. Pull, I got this shit out. Look at this! Fucking yeah. bang! Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> what the fuck? Nothing happened, dude! <laughs> oh, oh, that was great! Hey, we did it! I stepped on a tripwire mine and I exploded. <laughs> oh, our nearest teammate is now very far. No, no, get on me! I'm in a truck, guarding our house. Team, there's an enemy tank on B. Be careful, team! Aww. I just have to oh, run up with was... anti-personnel. Oh, enemy helicopter! I'm gonna shoot it down. Bang! Yes. Oh, I missed! You <laughs> <fucking> missed. <laughs> I'm gonna I get it again. Bang! Oh, I missed. missed! I thought you were squad leader, not squad misser. Yeah, I've never wow. used a rocket launcher in my life. You suck. Kind of. Take it off my back, then, man. What is a? 
Look What's at this house. On the west coast. I've been killed. I've been killed. I'm in front of the ATV. You dragged me yeah, under the truck. Works. All my bones are liquefied. Don't tell me about and your bones. Wow. Unless it's a boner. Now get up there and kill him. Okay. Uh, mission accomplished, Commander. Watch this. Oh. <laughs> Something just exploded. Wait, stay there. Stay there. I'm locking the squad. I think this is only oh! one. Oh! There's one random. There's one, one rando. I killed the chopper! I killed the chopper! Enemy tank! Enemy tank! Run! Put your put your Nikes on! Hang on, I'm holding to Oh, you got it, you got it. I've deployed, I've deployed. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Did oh I get god. it? This is hell, this is hell! I hit I hit I hit tank, 44 damage. Oh god, I'm under fire. Uh, you shot the tree out right <laughs> Okay guys, the rally point has a tank on it, just pre-warning. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm gonna spawn there. Do it, do it, I do it. I spawned in flashbang. I'm not spawned. <laughs> Nearest teammate 300 rally, meters away. The rally point is gone. The rally point is. is gone. We have one point. Yeah, we're not doing well right now. We Hang should go take E. I'm, gonna, I'm at D right I'm talking now. to a helicopter driver. Hang on one second. Can you put me near A, man? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say A, man? A. <laughs> Can you put me in A, man? Bro, A is so man. far from here. To the, to the Bro, left? We should go to, yeah, we should yeah, go good. To e. Right, turn around. Watch this. Lower, lower, please. What are you doing? Oh! <laughs> cool trick. I've died. Oh. Oh. Guys, I, guys, I've killed. Squad leaders killed himself. Do not follow suit. I repeat, do not follow suit. Uh, like, oh, I'm dead. What the hell? 18 wheeler. How is that guy? Why? Oh. Is the, the lighthouse is getting uh, destroyed? Oh yeah, they're, guys, they're attacking the lighthouse. Something fierce. I killed oh, the they, sniper. they're in the bushes with us, man. Oh, 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 I've died. There's two on my body, man. Two on my body on the rock. We better respawn then. Nice. I'm insane. You're insane? I'm dead. Hit me up. Hit me up, sir. I did Oh, on your left, on your left. Oh! You're breaking angles. You're breaking angles. What is the Hang NBA? on, I, I gotta bandage myself first though, or I'll be dead. Where are they? Where are they? I'm here to help. I think I killed them all. Oh, let's go. He's he's crazy. He's crazy. Guys, don't you feel like a freaking Spec Ops fire team? I'm dead. <laughs> 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 Do you guys see James Cameron say it wouldn't have gone down like that if I was there? That's crazy, man. It's been quite a, a news week. What do you think the odds are that Elon Musk and Zuckerberg actually go through with like a one round mixed martial arts slash boxing match. I, I mean, on Monday, I would have said zero. I think possibly it's like 5% now. It's, I, there's no doubt. I mean, I, you do not have to hand it to him. But I've seen posts of Mark Zuckerberg say that like every year for Memorial Day, he does that challenge, which is like run a mile, do a hundred push-ups, or maybe it's 500. I don't know. It's something great. Like 300 push-ups, 300 pull-ups, 300 sit-ups, 300 burpees, and then run in like another mile or something like that. Hang on. And then he's like, this year I did it in 40 minutes. And I'm like, 40 minutes? <laughs> and then the the comments were full of people saying 40 minutes is a pretty good time shut up it's an elite time to do that are you insane post a picture of yourself with your shirt off before you say it's a pretty good time this is ridiculous what is the murph workout challenge okay you ready one mile run 100 pull-ups 200 push-ups 300 squats and another one mile run, all done while wearing a weighted vest. That's crazy. Like 300 body weight squats and two one mile runs is not that insane. Although with, uh, I guess, a weighted vest, it would be a little bit more annoying. A hundred pull-ups, man, with a weighted vest is, is staggering. I, I mean, I, I'm guessing he probably didn't do one set of a hundred, but either way, like that's... I mean, I'm trying to think of 
how I would do, I would probably have to do like 50 sets of two pull-ups. That alone would probably take me more than 40 minutes. And that's before I even, I don't even want to think about how my arms would be after that and trying to do 200 push-ups with a weighted vest after that. And then, did you see the, the tail of the tape that said that Mark Zuckerberg's like 5'7", 150, Elon Musk 6'1", 187? Come on, man, how stupid do they think we are? And then people were actually saying like, you know, I know Mark Zuckerberg's in like really good shape, but look at the weight advantage that Elon Musk has. And you're like, really? Are you, <laughs> are you stupid? I'm t it's not that these are not two untrained individuals stepping into the octagon. Mark Zuckerberg is insane. Wasn't, didn't he get into like bow hunting his own elk or something like that? Because he was like, I don't want to eat meat unless I personally killed it. Also, he has like the Brazilian jiu-jitsu gold medal victories in tournaments and stuff like that. Like, like he's an insane person. Is public opinion swinging back in favor of Zuck? Yes and no, I would say. I think he has gone from the probably the most hated billionaire. He has stayed in roughly the same position, and a bunch of people like surpassed him in hatedness. And you know what it is? I, I'll, I'll give him credit for this. He doesn't... He's like one of the only huge billionaires that seems to not want to be a celebrity. He's at least smart enough to, like, not tweet 35 times a day. Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. That is going on the ribs. Sweet Baby Ray's. Sweet Baby Ray's. The Sweet Baby Ray's. Sweet Baby Ray's is very good. Sweet Baby Ray's. Sweet Baby Ray's. We have just applied the Sweet Baby Ray's. Sweet Baby Ray's. Sweet Baby Ray's. Maybe throw some Sweet Baby Ray's on the ribs and take it from there. Sweet Baby Ray's? I like Sweet Baby Ray's, though. I'm not saying he's a good guy. I'm just... <laughs> Jeff Zuckerberg dis or Jeff uh, Bezos disappeared once he left Amazon? Not really. He's showing up at the Miami GP looking like uh, crossbones. I guess that's not really like his fault, but it does, it does seem to me like he kind of wants to be a celebrity. I don't feel like you see Mark Zuckerberg just like showing up at the Oscars and being like, check it out. I'm Mark Zuckerberg. It seems like most of the time, I he strikes me as one of those guys who is in his flow state a hundred percent. Like I, I think he takes himself very seriously. I think he's like I can't go to Coachella this weekend because I'll miss, you know, my training. Yeah, he's a cyborg, man. Anyway, I'm just killing time. I'm not a Zuckerberg fan. <laughs> I deleted Facebook in like. Uh, 2017 is my guess. I probably should have... Listen, here's what I'm going to say. I should have deleted it earlier, but you can't put yourself in my shoes unless you're my age. Because, like, mid to elder millennials, we were like the Facebook generation. We were like, holy cow, instead of a high school yearbook, we can have our yearbook online. Let's post, like, everything about our lives. And then it was, you know, like, only a few years later that we were like, this is dumb as hell. I'm your age, I deleted it 10 years ago. I almost deleted it 10 years ago. Deleted it like six or seven years ago. Who's your favorite billionaire? Don't do this, don't. <laughs> Cause you know what it is? It's the same thing where like, um, you give people like a no way out in the question. And then unless you say, I would choose neither, like you, you look like an asshole, right? People are, there's no such thing as a good billionaire. You have to say that, but then you have to say, okay, you know what? I don't know, man, because I'm sure they've all got stuff that they've done outwardly that are, like, not uh, good. The image of Warren Buffett is not that bad. He goes through the McDonald's drive through He buys distressed companies, uh, and then he, like, rehabilitates them, and he is giving 90% of his wealth to charity when he dies. He hoards money that could save lives. You're doing the same thing, but with different words. You're saying there's no good billionaires. I don't agree, or I don't disagree, but you have to answer one. You can't just be like, uh, like find another loophole. I would wish for infinite wishes. Wow, you're the smartest kid in the first grade. I would wish for fucking, I don't know.
A, you know what? I would wish for a genie that doesn't have the infinite wishes loophole. Hey. Just don't acknowledge the question? No, I acknowledged it and uh, we made a joke about it and that was good. That's a great question to find out if you're a critical thinker. Would you rather have $999 million or $1 billion? It's making you think, isn't it? Why, why would you say $999 million? It doesn't make sense. So they don't put me on the billionaire list? People don't care. The real question is, how are you going to get $999 million and then not become a billionaire? You'd have to be actually like the biggest idiot of all time. All of your money would have to be in Cardano. You would have to like keep it in a, like a billion dollars in cash under your mattress. Because if you even deposited it into a bank account, you know, you'd make like $10 million a year just in the interest from your, from your checking account, much less a savings account. Would it fit under a bed? No, not absolutely. I mean, like, it, it, there's no shot a billion dollars would fit under a bed unless you got the, the idiocracy $1 million bill with President Dwayne... Camacho on the on the front of it you'd still have a thousand of them that would be pretty it's still a lot maybe this is a wallet issue but if I take out like two hundred dollars from an ATM it doesn't even fit in my wallet right and we're talking about where you're going to store a billion dollars can it fit under your bed I don't think so unless your bed is like the moon that'd be weird right that doesn't sound that crispy okay here's how today's stream is going to go we're going to do FF XVI the whole time. In the middle, there will be three hours of sponsored FFXVI where I don't say the F word or talk about which billionaire I would suck off on the submarine if I had to with a gun to my head. So no one could blame you if you had a gun to your head. And then we'll close out the last hour with, you know, that hypothetical or whatever. I don't want, like the submarine thing, it is, I still think that it's a tragedy. There can be multiple tragedies. I'm not as mean-spirited as everybody else online. That being said, I do love a good joke. And the, the intrusive thought that has been in my head the, the whole time is just tweeting, like, quote, tweeting something about, like, a news report about the submarine, and then my quote tweet just says, I know it smells crazy in there. I, it's not good. I'm not going to try to take the moral high ground for that, but that's just been running through my head forever. <laughs> <laughs> the fat chocobo is a demanding mistress and we are too few to keep her on her feet stew men these days don't eat stew anymore and they wear bracelets remember that for your trouble i can offer you the contents of my strong box and my enduring gratitude are you the kitchen head not after my food poisoning help keep the fat chocobo running sure i don't see why not i don't see why not now, I have three hungry customers awaiting their victuals. Oh wait, I get 500 gil for this? Careful. I'm not even messing awesome. with you. I thought that I... Um, I thought that I paid 500 gil and I bought the establishment. Now I realize oh, that I'm meal. the waiter. I mean, this been? is a pretty good wage for 500 gil, brother. Like, this is a pretty good deal for 500 gil. Your food. Uh, I asked for the stew with no carrots, I actually. It might be. Well, doesn't this look fine? Thank you, lad. You're new, aren't you? I asked for a plain plate of noodles with a little bit of butter. Well, he did say he'd give me something for my trouble. <laughs> and so he should. We're not slaves anymore. Well met, lad. And keep up the good work. <laughs> Me when someone brings me the food that I ordered. <laughs> well met, lad. What do I owe the pleasure? A fine pint of ale. Thank you for your hospitality. Oh, my thanks. <laughs> I hope you do not think me lazy for waiting to be served like a lord. <laughs> Only my former master did not use me kindly, you see. You left me half lame. Truth be told. I ordered the brand Zeno, so true. He ordered the burger. They asked him if he wanted cheese for three extra gill. He said no thanks. I mean, come on, it's three gill. So my food came, I ate my brand Zeno. I went to the bathroom and fast traveled out of there and sent him a, a raven that said, thanks for uh, the dinner. I paid for everything. Don't worry about it. 
I don't want staff in my chat asking me to get a clip where I say I'm going to kill the president. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I know it's a reference to I think you should leave. It's just very funny. Bro, relax. It would be... Maybe I, maybe I do like artificial intelligence. Because I'm thinking about how, like, overpowered it would be to actually, like, have chat in your everyday life. Like, obviously you can't listen to chat for everything. There's times you need to march to the beat of your own drum. But, like, sometimes when you're driving, to have, like, a thousand... I guess that would actually lead to way more accidents. I was gonna say to have, like, a thousand people being like, Hey, make sure you look this way. Hey, make sure you look before you cross the street. Hey, make sure... Have you, have you put the, par the car in drive yet? Have you... Been? No, it's true. Because sometimes I'll just be driving, and then, like, my wife will just ask me. She'll be like, hey, what do you want to have happen with, like, your body when you die? And I'm like... I'm trying to turn left on Granville Street right now. I can't focus on that while also trying to make sure I do don't... Uh, I'm trying to turn left into an alley to get into a parking garage. There's a hundred thousand cars all traveling different speeds that are blocking me from turning. Finally, there's a space. A cyclist illegally is driving on the wrong side of the street. Okay, no big deal. The cyclist is gone. I try to turn left. Someone with a stroller is taking a cell phone call block. Okay, that's fine. I'll wait. Another 1,000 cars go through on the next light. But what do you want to have happen with your uh, with your body when you die? Honestly, I think I'm kind of cool with like whatever. Yeah, now I got a hundred cars behind me all honking the horn. Eh, run somebody over! Eh, I'm ten minutes late for something. I left fifteen minutes late and recovered five minutes on the road, but I got ten more minutes to recover on the road to be on time. Eh, eh. I know that cremation is kind of getting canceling because or canceled because it emits greenhouse gases you could like do it in a green way or something but i'm not getting shamed for being environmentally unfriendly in the manner of my body's disposal like i'm dead just finally leave me alone for once absolutely sir ladies really out here sweeping the the stone huh she's gonna be at it for quite some time <laughs> I mean, it's, it's an open-air cave. Like, it's, it's built dirty. That's wood? Well, if it... It's, that's dusty, man. That is dusty. She's just sweeping the dang dust into the cracks between the stone. She's sequestering the dust. Listen. They swept the dirt in medieval times? They were so silly back then. If it was me, I would have used a vacuum cleaner. While you've been relaxing in your cell, Gav's been busy sniffing out your dominance. <laughs> My, excuse me, I was unconscious. 5'11 versus 6 foot. It's crazy how, like, hair actually adds, like, two inches onto your height. That's so annoying. No wonder people meet me and they're like, oh, I thought you were taller. Like, you're only, like, 6'3". I thought you were, like, 6'7". What do you want? No, I was... <laughs> if I was 6'7", I'd be dominating the NBA right now. Wait, uh, I've seen you around the hideaway. You're new, aren't you? I'm Clive. And I'm Martel. But what are you doing here? <laughs> what do you mean, what am I doing here? <laughs> this is no place for a bearer on her own. I noticed that. Your boss this sent me out here to save yourself. your life. What I need is soil. But I'd be a fool to refuse your help after what just happened. Martel rizzed it's up baby Clive? Wait, for. he might be the Dark, new Riz God? Rich, fragrant. You'll know it when you find it. Dark, rich, and fragrant. Stop. <laughs> right. I like when music does that. I like when it goes do 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 Is there a word for that? It's worth a closer look. Is this hard is. style? That's an arpeggio. Yes, this when when music gets Stranger Thingsified. I heard Stranger Things just rizzed up Final Fantasy. Are they the new arpeggi god? Aren't you playing an arpeggio right now? I get it. An RPG. Did you hear that Todd Packard just rizzed up Big Tuna? Stop. 
<laughs> it's not fair. I was away when everybody did the Baby Gronk memes. Then when I came back, people were like, hey, catch up on the Baby Gronk meme. Now I'm at peak Baby Gronk meme, and people were like, bro, we're memeing on like the submarine now. You're not Livy. You're not an intellectual. I risked up Baby Gronk classically and contemporaneously to get him to commute to LSU. I walked Livy out on stage. Who are you? You're nothing. You don't respect the Riz that serves as the way to crown a new Drip King. It all seems to lead to this room. High potion used makes it. me sick, man. 400 gold. You ain't pulled that sword from it, Scott. Ma'am, I'm spoken for, I think. I don't know. I got I got a good thing going here. Uh, a new sword? Uh, excuse me? 165 sword? Invictus? One of a set of seven swords said to have been forged in the flames of Mount Drust Anus. <laughs> I guess it's Mount... Justanus? <laughs> oh, 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 man. Let's go. Sheesh! Mount Justanus, Mount Ju of course. I'm not familiar with the topography of the realm. Favor of the winds. Me when I get into bed with my wife and <laughs> Far done. Sorry, I didn't remember this is a sponsored segment of the stream. I'd like to apologize. Um. Anyway, uh, hang on a second here. It's a good time to remind you we are playing Final Fantasy 16 here. This segment of the stream is sponsored by Square Enix. Thank you, Square Enix, for the sponsorship. Exclamation point FF16. It is out now on PS5. You can check it out in stores. You can check it out on the PSN store. And you can download the demo for yourself by clicking the link that is in uh, the command that Nightbot says whenever you type exclamation point FF16. I've been having uh, a great time playing the game, sponsorship and no sponsorship. I've been enjoying myself immensely. It's a perfect jumping off point or jumping in point for someone who's been out of the Final Fantasy series for a while. Which I think aptly describes me. Most of my experience prior to Final Fantasy 16 in the last 10 years of Final Fantasy was being a Final Fantasy husband, which meant sometimes going to bed alone because my wife was doing uh, Mythic difficulty raids with her static. Mythic isn't a Final Fantasy thing. Savage! That's it. Savage. Classy, bougie, ratchet. What class does Kate main? Uh, she hasn't played in a while, I think. When she played, she was, uh... She was a scholar, and then she had another character that was something else. I don't remember what that something else was, though. Samurai? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You're making me feel like a bad husband. You said it, not us. I was a good husband. I was... I could have gone to bed at 4 a.m. like her. Instead, I got up early enough that I could still do my job. Keep the wheels on the house. Metaphorically speaking. Was? Well, that was a while ago. Bro, a little tank is such a funny concept, though. I'd say that's true. A, a tiny person who can sustain a lot of abuse. Sounds like me when I stayed over at my... <laughs> I there. It was verbal abuse. I was staying over at Joan Rivers' house. And she was making fun of my outfit. She was saying, what are you wearing? And I was like, it's a shirt with a baseball bat that has baseball written on it. Because I like baseball. I feel like we all learned a little bit about ourselves inside of that cave. We broke all those uh, ring doorbells in there, though. They're going to need to get new security. <laughs> I'm not answering any questions about the sub, okay? I don't know anything Hi. about the sub. Are you sure you're all right? Whatever it is, you can tell me. <laughs> I had a hard 
had enough time telling myself. I awakened as a dominant of fire. It's an allegory for understanding that you have male sense. pattern baldness as a young man. But now I know for certain who I really am. The I'm a bald. icon of fire who killed my brother and burned this castle to the ground was me. Ifrit. Clive. I took so many lives that night and destroyed so many more. Jill, I'm going to need you to click in both sticks to accept the truth, no matter how hard it is. And I must atone for the crimes I've committed. But not before I learn the whole truth. How can a second icon of fire even exist? And why was I chosen as its dominant? She has a Logitech? Too soon. Hang on, just wait. First, we gotta speak to the blacksmith. Well, no, you know what? First, we should... Yes? Level our... We should buy new stuff, oh, then level it at the blacksmith. Gaia Blade is worse than Invictus. Equip Mishin Cross is better than Goldwork Sash. Battle Change is worse than... You got, you got nothing. You got nothing for me. Meet the Jeff Probst when I lose a challenge. What was that, when I said you don't have anything for me? <laughs> you know what would be a good sketch for our sketch comedy show? Um, it's like a, a ripoff of Survivor. But the host says, okay, Ryan, I hope you've enjoyed having immunity for a week. I'm going to need that idol back. And then I go to give it to him. And then I go, nope. And he goes, okay, but seriously. And then I hug it really tight. And I go, I don't think so, Jeff. Mm. You can't have it. I'm going to need the idol back. Mm, nope. Mm, as long as I hold this, I'm immune. It could work, man. Too similar to Zipline? Not at all. You're going to tell me a sketch is too similar to I Think You Should Leave? The show where all of the sketches are like a weird guy is in an office? So, sorry for being late today. I should also let you know that at any point in the next 10 to 15 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes, I will probably receive a delivery that I have to um, take in, which will disrupt the stream for maybe like five minutes. I didn't book the delivery for this time. It was uh, foisted upon me, but it is what it is. Because this is when the... When I work is when all the other motherfuckers work. One of us has to change, and it's not going to be me. Some of these motherfuckers need to work two to seven. Listen, no disrespect. I know 70% of you are not having kids anyway. By choice. You guys should take the two to 10 p.m. shifts. We got daycare drop-off. You, you know, you got school. You got other stuff. That, I mean, as the child gets older, I'm trying to say here. But we got a lot of... The morning belongs to the young and those who have young kids and the elderly for some reason. I guess because like after you've spent 45 years getting up at like 6 a.m. so you can get to work by 8.30, when you're retired, you're like, I got to make the most of this. So you wake up at 6.30 forever. Why do parents always put their decision to have kids on the backs of everyone else? Me at age 22, trying to watch One Piece on an airplane when a child uh, sneezes one time. There should be an airline that's just for kids only. <clears throat> and also there should be an airline that's just for old people only. And then there should be an airline that, and tickets should be 50% um, cheaper. And there should be an airline that's just for people that are watching One Piece. I don't want the person in front of me to be watching something. And then I'm watching it through the crack in the seat. And they're watching Extraction, but I haven't seen Extraction yet. I've only seen Extraction 2. There should be, there should be a lot more investment in public transit. But I should never have to share it with anybody who I am annoyed to see in public. Fuck you! <laughs> I made up 98% of that shit right there! And it felt incredible. And I'll do it again. That felt incredible. I haven't shouted in like 72 hours. 72 hours of my kid being like, Daddy, come play with me. And I'm like, okay. I'm Daddy Pig. I'm Daddy Pig. No, not like that. What do you mean, not like that? You're not Daddy Pig. You're George Pig. Okay, I'm George Pig. 
Dinosaur. Rawr. No, George Pig doesn't say dinosaur. Oh, really? George Pig doesn't say dinosaur? I've seen every episode of Peppa Pig about six times. All that motherfucker says is dinosaur. But whatever you say... Actually, in season one, George kind of talks a little bit, but I think they did like some uh, focus groups and they found out that people like George more when he just says dinosaur. So season two onwards, he just says dinosaur. So I'm, I'm like half stalling because of this delivery supposed to be here. But here's the way that this shit works in my brain. If I um, start doing something, the delivery is going to show up in three seconds. Or even worse, it'll show up like 15 minutes into a slash marker. If I don't start it, they're, they're never going to come. I'm going to get a message from my wife in like an hour and a half that's like, oh yeah, they called me um, two hours ago and also uh, they said they can't come today. So I guess we might as well get it going here. I didn't know what to play today and then a new uh, Kingdom came out. Now I skipped Kingdom 1. The reason I skipped Kingdom 1 is because my manager, David Miyazaki, is the chief fun executor at um, Raw Fury. So I was like, maybe that's a little bit of a conflict of interest. Now watch my ass um, as Kingdom becomes like a, a global phenomenon that lasts for multiple years. I'm missing out on it. My wife played 300 hours of it or something like that. So now my ass said, I don't care. Plus, Raw Fury keeps making bangers. Friends v. Friends, for example. So I'm going to play some Kingdom 80s. And I'll, I'll probably be like... Oh, you can't hear it, but it's really loud. Now you can hear it. I'll probably be like straight ass at it for a while, but that's okay. It's not that loud. Just fucking relax. Just chill out, okay? It's not that loud. Oh, hang on. I think they're here. Oh, perfect timing. I'll be right back. It doesn't take that long to get a package. Yeah, it was 60 packages. I'm not being facetious. <laughs> Hang on, let me, let me text my wife. It is not merch. You think it would take me that long to move 55 t-shirts? You could hold 55 of them at the same time. Like, what does a t-shirt weigh? Like, two ounces? It would, actually, because you're a total nacho husband. I do, there's got to be three more horsemen of the, uh, I, I hate to use this term because I find people that use this term on uh, Twitter to be insanely annoying, but there have to be like four fail son horsemen of the apocalypse. Right now, I've only got Nacho Husband. I don't know if there's three other like appropriate parts of the political compass, and then I could say like, choose your fighter. I know there's like what? Nacho Husband, uh, Bean Dad. Yeah, Bean Dad is definitely one. Peach Mom. Yeah, but I'd like it to all be men because I already get accused of being a misogynist. <laughs> Peach Mom was definitely in the wrong. That's for sure. Who was Peach Mom? She drew, drew that comic that was like, me seeing the last peach, oh, I'll save this because maybe my kid will want to eat it. And then, like, her husband seeing the peach, ooh, yummy peach, and he ate it. And then it's like, oh, her husband's like a bad guy because he ate fruit that he bought. Wasn't the whole thing about how she couldn't martyr herself over a piece of fruit? Twitter went nuts because they can't read good? I don't know. I just saw the Twitter reaction to it. There was also the one that was like my husband when he leaves the house with the kids and it's like he's just taking his car keys and then like the wife when she takes her kids and she's got like a backpack with like 17 granola bars in it and four water bottles, hand sanitizer, wet wipes, napkins, fucking, you know, uh, adrenaline shots, Narcan, you know. I gotta tell you, I've, I've carried the 55 burgers, 55 french fries, so true. I've, I've been both sides of that coin taking my kid out. Very routinely, I will take my kid out with like, um, not even like a water bottle. Just like the shit in my pocket. Why? Because she's go picking up a 100,000 rocks. Her hands are full. I don't want my back to get sore. And then like, she just doesn't need it. She needs water. I'll, I'll get her some water. We'll stop at a water fountain. I'll buy a bottle of water or apple juice or something at a grocery store. She 
you know, gets her hands dirty, will go to a bathroom and wash her hands. She uh, poops herself. I'll change her diaper. Like, it's no, it's no, well, I guess I would carry a diaper with me in that case. Well, either way, I'm just saying, I think that, I think people overcomplicate the, the diaper bag just a little bit. I think if you know you're going to eat, you should take a bib, wet wipes, and diapers. And that's all you need. But in our diaper bag, I don't know, we've got um, a folding uh, mat that we can use to put her on to change her diaper. Brother, you could just, they all got the thing that John Mulaney said he was snorting coke off in the gas station bathrooms. Every bathroom has one of those these days. You need a fanny pack. That's about it. Who's the fourth horseman? Sorry, I know you're trying to make a bit. I don't know. I don't know who the fourth horseman is. I don't think it's Submarine Dad, just because we don't know enough about him. All we know is he went on the submarine, which is definitely like a point in the negative dimension, but New Balance Dad? New Balance Dad is just a guy wearing shoes. He didn't do anything. It's literally just a guy. What about um, <laughs> uh, Balloon Boy's dad? Or is that too old? Do people still remember Balloon Boy? It's been 30 minutes. Talia, I got a 10-minute delivery in the middle! I just played 10 hours of Final Fantasy 16 over the last two streams. We've, we've, we've had some gaming at our, at our own expense. Did you see the GameStop movie trailer? Let me stop you right there, brother. There's a negative 100% chance I'm going to watch that. Let me guess, it's made by Netflix. Or even worse, it's not made by Netflix. Paul Dano's in it? For how long? He's the main character. He plays, uh... Deep Value Kitty, whatever his name was. <laughs> Who the hell is Paul Dano? No, 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 no! That's Paul Dano. What is no, 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 no? It's from, uh... The Batman. It's uh, nine hours into the Batman, approximately at the halfway point. Take forever with the chop. Your only job is chopping trees. What if I just gave you a steel chainsaw? And now the type of guy to clap when he reads the McDonald's child labor story? What was the McDonald's child labor story? McDonald's be using child labor? Yeah, I, obviously, like it's everybody's first job. Okay, now let's go see if we got enough uh, soldiers. Chat was pretty okay with the child labor. Let's see how they are about child soldiers. I'm as long as I see kids, I'm recruiting them. What's funny now is they're like running away from me. <laughs> you would, you're not running away from me, kid. I'm gonna recruit you. Here's a free Xbox. Here's a, a good financing rate on a 2024 Dodge Charger. Sorry, I got a G-chat message. This is a true story. Um, one of my friends is Indian, and he's getting married in September. So there's like two ceremonies. I mean, there's like a hundred ceremonies, but there's like two genres. One of them is the Indian wedding, which is multiple days of like celebrations and feasting and stuff like that. And one of them is the like American style wedding where I mean, you, you know what a wedding is. I'm not going to waste your time. Okay, Steve, let's pull this back just a little bit here. Um, so in the group chat, he's trying to tell everyone how they can get some Indian clothes for the Indian part of the wedding. And then everyone else is trying to figure out how to do it without uh, getting canceled if the photos get out. That's pretty much what's happening. How are you going to dress? I'm not going. It's very close to my uh, daughter's birthday, and it's in another country, and also, like, the entire width of the country away. Cop out? It's my kid's birthday. <laughs> Are you sending money? The invitation... Li listen, I haven't been invited to that many weddings. Most of my friends are, like, um, millennials like Twitch chat. They might be... They've, they've been dating for, like, 17 years, but they're never going to get married. Um, which is, you know, who cares? Either way, I haven't received that many wedding invitations. This one said, um, we would prefer not to receive, like, gifts that are possessions or something like that. And I was like, I see you. 
<laughs> I can read between the lines on that one. That one, it says, don't buy us an air fryer. Please just give us money. In Poland, we always just give money? Honestly, I mean, I think it's a, a great uh, idea. Like, I would, I would definitely rather get money than, like, a, a Cuisinart food processor or something like that. Because money could buy anything. It could even buy a Cuisinart food processor. You don't call it Cuisinart? What do you say? Cuisinart? You gotta watch a commercial sometime. It's not, it's not cuisine art. It's cuisine art. We're expanding like crazy. Rip to the right side. Honestly, I'm sure the right side is fine because there's like 10,000 child soldiers there holding down the fort. If anything, you should, if the Roman Empire is falling, you shouldn't worry about Rome. Your ass should be worried about Gaul. Anything close to you know where the politicians live is going to be the last thing to fall, brother. You should be worried about the frontier. Spoilers. <laughs> if you're an 80s kid, does that make you roughly 50? Um, well, it depends. Like, uh, listen, I, I get the insinuation and the joke, and I'm just not willing to let you have it. Um, I consider myself more of a 90s kid than a 2000s kid. I was born in 1988. So I was really like, I mean, I was not an adult for any of the 90s. But that's, I feel like when that's a lot of the, a lot of my personality was baked in that period. And then the, the 2000s, definitely, a, a, you know, a lot of formative years as well. But the baking process started in the 90s. I mean, you're really asking like when a cake becomes cake. Does it become cake when you mix the flour and the eggs? Because that was in the 80s. Does it become cake when you pour it into the pan? Because that was like in the 90s. Or does it become cake when it starts to fluff up? Because that was like the early 2000s. Yeah, I think if you, if you were born in like 1995, you're not really like a 90s kid. Because your earliest memories are going to be, you know, like from the... Well, your, your very earliest memories are probably from the 90s. But then like most of your memories are coming from the 2000s. I think here's a question for you. Um... Or here's, here's a statement for you, I guess is what I mean to say. Here's what I think makes you a 90s kid versus a 2000s kid. If you can't eat without the TV on, you're an 80s kid. If you can't eat without your phone, you're a 2000s kid or later. If you can just sit down and eat a meal and not need a constant form of distraction, then you're a 90s kid and you're based. Maybe a little biased, but <laughs> that's why... <laughs> If you can just stare straight out the window while you eat like a bowl of soup and you don't need to like uh, put your phone in a Ziploc bag to go into the shower because you're not petrified of being bored for like, you know, 11 minutes once a day, then maybe you're a 90s kid like me. Minus two, minus two. Oh, sorry, Gen Z. I forgot. Only Gen Z is allowed to make fun of millennials. Millennials aren't allowed to make fun of Gen Z. Gen Z, when uh, there's an argument online where they can punch back at boomers and millennials, we're part of the discourse, we're part of the discourse. Gen Z, when the discourse starts to punch back at them, we're all, we're 12, we're 12 years old, what do you want from us? We're, we're only 12. Gen Z trying to blame my 34 year old ass for climate change, <laughs> somehow, make it make sense. I mean, the, the, if I'm gonna argue against myself, if I'm gonna steel man myself, I will also say though, if you're part of Gen Z and you're like 22, like I was a baby when I was 22. I mean this in a, in a flattering way, not in a negative way. You are like insanely young if you're a 22 year old Gen Z. Like I feel like just the conditions for like the world right now. If you, when, when I was becoming an adult, Bro, can you please build a wall here? I need your help. When I was, uh, like, when I graduated from college, it was possible, like, there was an, uh, it was aspirational, but it was possible to, like, live on your own after college. And it would probably be, like, in a 
like a shit box. Like it would probably kind of suck, but it was like theoretically possible. And then like you could move out from your parents' place, you know, before you're 30. Now I'm like, if you're in Gen Z and your parents own their house, you should literally go like South Korean style. You should live there until you're like 45 years old. And then like if you get married or like meet someone you want to spend the rest of your life with, you guys should figure out which one of your parents you're going to live with for the next 30, 40 years. <laughs> and I don't mean that like, haha, get owned. I mean, like, I think that's just the... That's just the right decision. Talk about Gen Zs who want to be streamers and YouTubers. Well, like, I, why wouldn't you want to be like a streamer or a YouTuber? Like, I do it and I want to do it. From the outside in, it's even better. I can, I can totally see why people aspire to it. I don't see that as some kind of like, uh, you know, moral failing or something like that. Like, a 14-year-old kid who watches YouTube all day, what are they going to do? Be like, no, I want to, like, clean the sewer. <laughs> Back in my day, we had kids in our class that wanted to clean the sewer. Nobody wanted to be Elvis or Bob Hope. Everybody just wanted to clean the sewer. No, it's my turn to... It's my turn to clean the sewer. I'm a 27-year-old engineer that has to get roommates. It's awesome. I know, it, like, it's, it's fucking crazy. Like, I'm not say, saying it was easy when I was younger. But it was definitely easier. I think it's like dishonest for people to be like, you know, well, when we got our house, it was like a 12% mortgage rate. Yeah, but your house was like, you know, 4x your annual salary or something like that. Nowadays, people they get like a medical degree and uh, they live in an apartment with like six other people who all have advanced degrees. Can we get back to Paul Dano? I like Paul Dano. I got no. Yes, 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 yes. When someone asks me if we can get back to Paul Dano, I'm not trying to insult living with the homies. I'm just saying, like, at some point you wanna, you know, have some privacy, maybe. Eh, fuck it. Well, it's... I also think it like changes when you have a kid. Like my my perspective on like multi generational households. When I lived in Korea and I was experiencing some freedom from my parents. Any chance you guys could shoot this portal or are you just chilling or whatever? There you go. When I lived in Korea and I had some freedom from my parents and then like people my age in Korea were like, yeah, I still live with my parents. I'm like, that sucks. Wow, rip you. Why don't you just move out, LOL, forehead. Now that I have a kid, I'm like, I want my kid to live with me like forever. Why would I want my kid to move out? That's like my favorite person in the whole world. So I'm like, maybe, maybe I'll be on the perfect timing of, of culture for myself. A taste of independence when I wanted independence, and then like, I'll just tell my kid that she can live with me rent free. As long as she follows uh, an insane list of 150 rules that I make up. So that she has the lifestyle of like an 8 year old forever. <laughs> Bro, the 80s were crazy. Yeah, and this is just what we were doing when we weren't uh, building a car that can time travel. I feel like this is like making a, a Gen X Facebook meme. It's like, uh... Don't mess with the 80s kid. We're part of a club. The Breakfast Club. We know how to enjoy a day off. Picture of Ferris Bueller's day off. We're not afraid of no ghosts. Picture of Ghostbusters Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. And, where did, wait, where did I put my phone? <laughs> Hang on. Where, I had the, you gotta see this video? Hang on, you gotta see this video? Here, just look at the phone for a, hey, wait, wait, I can't find it. I think it was on YouTube. We had the, it was this video I saw. I don't know. You ever had someone trying to show you something and instead of using the search bar to type in the parameters for what to see? Like, they're like, I know it was a video that had this person in it that was from this TV show, and the clip is when he says this, but instead of searching, like, The Office, Jim looking in the camera, they just search The Office and then scroll down, hoping that pure luck surfaces the exact thing they're looking for? It's insane, man. My mom showing me a clip of, like, uh, Canada's Got Talent, but instead of putting the act into the search bar, she just searches Canada's Got Talent. 
and then scrolls through 500 results until she's like, oh, this is the one. And then do we watch 45 seconds and she's like, wait a minute, I don't think this is the one. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> and then it's a dude like lip syncing the Barbie girl or something like that. And I'm like, uh, I love my mom, by the way. This is just a, it's just a funny bit. We're just, it's just some humor. You should really limit your mom's screen time. She's doing okay. She's got no, she's from a generation. She could eat dinner without watching TV. I can go out for dinner with my mom and neither of us can look at our phone the whole time. Stop lying. I'm it's serious, man. I, uh, I grew up in a household where there was no TV during dinner time. My parents only started watching the TV during dinner when I was like, it was like age 16 or something like that. They would put on the news. And before that, it was considered a faux pas. Also, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not trying to flex. I'm just saying, hey, R2DP, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. I, uh, I'm not trying to flex that I feel like I had a, a family where my parents really like put in effort to keep the family together. But uh, we always ate dinner together, like, every night. It's crazy to me that sometimes Kate will be like, oh, as a teenager, like, my parents would say, like, dinner's ready. But then I would just, like, take a plate and go eat in my room or something like that. I'm not in my household, man. If I cook dinner or you cook dinner for our kid, and then she's like, I'm going to take the plate into my room, then I'm taking the plate into the kitchen. That's my plate now. Hang on, stand here. It's time to leave. Let's row home. Unfortunately, we can only fit uh, the counselors into the canoe. Sorry. Hey, we took our favorite four kids with us. Excuse me, timing. <laughs> That's awkward. Ah, never mind. We're okay. We were six inches from shore. Chad, be real with me. How much of a boomer are you if you use the GIF keyboard on Twitter? Or, like, on Discord, I guess. I've stopped um, using GIFs to reply to people because I think that it's been fully swallowed up by the boomers. Like, anytime there's any... Like, it could be, like, breaking news! Nuclear missile about to hit Washington, D.C. And then all the replies are just people who search, like, Oh, no! <laughs> Scared face! Jim from office scared face. Just kidding. Girl from Big Brother who spits out her coffee when she tries to drink it. <sighs> True. No matter what is trending, the first result is always um, the gif of Denzel Washington. Best peacock of all time. I mean, porcupine. Denzel Washington going like this. When I saw World War III trending, I got scared. I thought something happened to World War III. Did you see the one where Betty White was trending and people were worried she died again? <laughs> All right, that's... Listen, that's kind of funny. She died? She died like two years ago. One Chatter's Day ruined. Well, like, honestly, they, how did they not notice? I'm not buying a freaking blueberry. Like, if Betty White's that important to you, like, you should have... You should have felt, like, the... The loss. It's okay. Oh, whoa, that's a good idea. Porcupine with blueberries. Yippee! Porcupine and blueberries. Michael from The Office popping champagne gif. Very true. Very true. Okay. God is my witness. You're gone. You're gone. It. All of our units suck, but our results are good. It's the great... The greatest time for alpaca. Alpaca's been nerfed. Bro, it wasn't even good. <laughs> what are they doing? What do you mean it wasn't good? Well, I don't go to like the Super Auto Pets Discord and go like, Hey, I've been playing Versus for like 35 years. Check out, I take alpaca like every single time. Like I just play the weeklies and usually like get my ass beat. And the alpaca has not been a an integral part of my, my game plan. It's the best pet in the game. Discord poster spotted. Gay
Dean Perk, you piece of shit. They did too much, man. It's pretty big. I feel like you're just not really doing anything, so get owned. Big porcupine definitely seems like it would go crazy. How about this? Oh, but then we can't buy the monkey because of the changes to how the game works. <laughs> it never ends, bro. It never ends. My chocolates? But, uh, that one is actually completely on me. It replaced. It's always replaced. Okay. Sorry. It only the cat only works once per turn. Are you kidding me, man? <laughs> what were they thinking? I'm not selling my whole squad just to guarantee that you get plus two, plus two. Also, they nerfed the ant. It never ends. <laughs> it never ends. They nerfed everything? Hey, Team Wood, I don't know if like you possess the connections to get this done but have you ever considered doing like a promotion with 7-eleven where like if someone buys a bottle of prime energy they get a code they can put into super auto pets to get like an animal that everybody loves like a meme animal like a like a honey badger or like a shoe bill uh or something like that Something, so, a doge, that's so perfect if they can put doge in the game. Because then, you and I both know, it would solve one of the big problems facing Super Auto Pets, which is that the only people that are playing the game every single week and, and fill in the queue here are tur turbo nerds, such as myself, who are dominating the rankings and making it impossible for new players to really get involved. So if you, to get an influx, an influx of new players, maybe like a promotion at 7-Eleven or something, where you, if you buy Prime Energy, they get Doge in the game, so I could have some cannon fodder. How about adding the dramatic turnaround gopher? Super Auto Pets next expansion, meme animals, keyboard cat, uh, dramatic turnaround gopher, David after the dentist, Ikea monkey. I do it, I would actually, I, I would buy a prime energy for Ikea monkey in the game. Just a reskin for the monkey that has the coat on. Oh, dude, they should add Tide Pod as a food. <laughs> That's <laughs> very, very true. Oh, minus two, minus two is danger. Yeah, but when you feed it to an animal, they get really sick or something. Like, we could teach the kids not to eat detergents and other such soaps, such as. It's not pasta, it's pasta. Okay. Like someone from Ohio is going to teach me how to speak Italian. Next. Oh, a little frigate bird. Friend gained ailment. Remove ailment. They did way too much, man. Friend gained ailment. You're right. You're not wrong. It would synergize with the Tide Pods. Oh, thank you. Next time. Me when I'm Ariana Grande. Hang on, did they change the ostrich? Hang on, let me throw up real quick. You're in the Family Feud TikTok algorithm as well? Macros, I don't go on TikTok. The only time I see TikTok, well, actually, I posted a TikTok this weekend for the sponsored thing. But my TikTok is just a graveyard of me posting sponsored stuff. Every time that I have to post a sponsored TikTok, I have to like go recover my password and then like figure out, oh, I accidentally rendered it in 1920 by 1080 instead of 1080 by 1920. Like it's just, you know, when you, you followed someone on Twitter like seven years ago and they've never tweeted, but then like once every three months, they're like today's stream is sponsored by Factor. That's what my TikTok is like. And that's okay. This, it, it is what it is. Also, when I went, I went to TikTok on web to post the, um, the sponsored TikTok. While the video was uploading, it was playing like a TikTok in the background. And it, I swear to you, this was the only TikTok that has been served to me in like a year and a half. It was like a 19-year-old guy and his girlfriend. And he's like, 
I guys, I bought this sunset lamp that makes my room look like it's a sunset and I'm getting unlimited kisses. And then she's like, you're not going to get a kiss. And he's like, watch me. And then he like tongue kisses her on the mouth. And he's like, see, I told you guys, I get kisses on TikTok live whenever I want. By the way, if you want to buy this sunset lamp, there's a link in the description. And I was like, what the hell is going on, man? <laughs> it's... What is this, like, brain worm content that's out here? Robert Kennedy Jr., 69-year-old, roided-up man, bench pressing 75 pounds for four reps. I'm losing my fucking mind. Is anybody still paying attention? Working out in his damn dockers? Anyway. Oh, man. Bro did 115 for eight reps. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's like almost 70 years old. But I was like, I've never seen the, the bar look that long. It's like the, the plates were so small. It made the bar look so fucking long. Look of the dude who says he found the longest banana ever and it's just a plantain. I haven't seen that one. Look at that. The longest banana in the world. That's insane, right? Mmm. Tastes almost like a regular banana. A little bit more starchy. But you have to admit, the size is ridiculous, right? Look at this. Um, you ever see the video of the guy who says, check it out, guys, nature is glizzy? And then he eats... I found some wild glizzies. I don't even know what you call them. <laughs> a reed? <laughs> and then almost chokes on the... A cattail, that's it. And then almost chokes on the, the fiber that comes out of it. You ever see the video of the LA Beast doing the cinnamon challenge? I saw, sorry, I saw, I saw it on the Twitter for you algorithm. It was like um, the Atreides family when they eat some Arrakis home cooking. And it, the dude just belches like 10 gallons of cinnamon straight out of his mouth and nose at the, at the start. Oh, man. See, that's the funny thing is I'm like, I'm not like other streamers. I don't do like react content, but I'm reacting right now. I'm simply not showing you what I'm reacting to. I wonder what Marshall McLuhan would think of Twitch. I mean, I know that this, we're heavy into the did you see this bit, but did you see it went kind of viral on uh, Twitter? It was like, what's going on on the apps? was the quotation and then it was a, a a lady in like makeup she was doing like a tiktok live and she was like going i'm hungry i'm hungry and then people would like pay money and it would give her like a piece of food like a little cake would pop up and she would go hum mm, i'm hungry i'm hungry and then they would put like a they'd pay money to put like a chili pepper on the screen and then she would eat it hum ooh, no spicy no spicy I'm hungry. I'm hungry. It was that for like two minutes straight. It's crazy, man. I don't know. I don't know what's going on out there. I don't like this bit. It's, it's not a bit. This is a real person that's living their life like this and, and hopefully making a killing, honestly. I don't think it was AI. I don't think the AI is capable of making something that cursed yet. It's too busy... We're using, like, half of Earth's resources right now just to make, like, shitty Wes Anderson clips that aren't even really, like, Wes Anderson that much. The hell is, like, a dollar an hour? If you're broke, just say so. <laughs> now that's the tweet that we should have been talking about all day. The one where the lady says... I don't have time for this kind of stuff anymore. And it's a screenshot of her text interaction with the guy that she was going to go out on a date with. And he was like, uh, hey, are you excited for the picnic today? And she said, yeah, do you need to know my address so you can come pick me up? And he said, oh, I didn't know I was picking you up. And then a second later, he was like, sure, can I get your address? And then she said, you know what? Never mind. Have a good day with your friends. And then he replied, not me with my whole car packed for a picnic, but okay, you do you. She posted a screenshot like she was sure that she was the one in the right. Oh, man. 
It's as close to React Chord as we're gonna get. It's the only way we could do React Chord now, because it's the only place where you can find people crazy enough to post stories where they're obviously in the wrong is on Twitter. On Reddit, it's all just made up now. No wonder streamers do so much React content. Some of my favorite content I'm realizing is like, it's, it's Twitter React content. Lady who took a picture of that house with uh, skeletons crawling all over it because it was Halloween and saying like, I get that it's Halloween, but this is disrespectful to people who have had family members die. Oh man. <laughs> this is a classic. Lady who said she can't care about Afghanistan because her father was an alcoholic. Her Afghanistan was hearing his key in the door every night. Like, lady, what are you talking about? Mr. Beast pretending that he got invited to be on the Titanic. Listen, this is not going to be a popular take, okay? I believe that Mr. Beast was invited on the Titanic submarine. I know that his speech bubble in the screenshot was blue. And I don't know all about the different colors of speech bubbles that you get on iPhone or Android, okay? I just don't think that he would... I don't think from what... I don't know anything about Mr. Beast. I would just be surprised if he faked it. And I also think if he was going to fake it, he would fake it right instead of faking it badly and, like, being exposed. I, I get that it's, it's funnier if he faked it. But I don't think he did. Hang on, did they change the ostrich? Hang on, let me throw up real quick. Yeah, they were inviting all sorts of people on that thing. One of the writers from The Simpsons. That reporter who definitely should have, like, talked more about the security concerns with the thing. I think my wife's a little bit insane. Like, hang on, chocolates, please? We were talking about the submarine stuff. Like, this is... We're, we're fucked, boys. <laughs> it's, it's so over. She was... We were talking about the submarine. And I was like... I just don't understand, like, why those people would, like, go down on the submarine. And she was like... You know, I was... She wasn't thinking about going down on the submarine. But she was like, if I got offered, I think I probably would have. Because it's interesting. And I'm like, it's... We already know that the thing imploded like it's it's a known fact i mean it didn't implode on every journey but like on the last one and then she was asking me like if if they make like space travel or like recreational flights to the moon would you go to the moon and i was like no shot to my version of the moon is like buying a case of sparkling water and sitting out on my patio, scrolling through my phone, enjoying the sun and, and drinking as many bubblies as I want. I'm, I'm content down here on Earth. I got no interest being in the rocket ship, especially, be, and I've said this before, but like the space travel right now is like the Wright Brothers era of flight. There's a few people doing it, they were getting to the point where, like, it's not, I, it's, people are just going to disagree with this, but, like, space travel is, like, so risky. It's not like every rocket explodes, but it's, like, one in, one in 50 trips or something like that ends catastrophically. If one in 50 Skytrain trips ended with, like, a derailment, my ass would be gone. I would, I would be walking everywhere. That's why I won't even ride a motorcycle because it's so dangerous. And also, I'm a nice person who doesn't want to wake up sleeping people at like 3 a.m., which is the only time when motorcycles can apparently run. But like, I, the motorcycles are probably a hundred times safer than being an astronaut. They might even be like a thousand times safer than being an astronaut. So I don't want to go, even if in like 30 years, they're like, hey, you can take trips to the moon now. I'm chilling on Earth. Because that's like aviation circa 1940. The odds of me dying on the rocket ship are not like 50-50, but it's higher than I'm willing to go just to go to the damn moon. Anyway, would love your thoughts on this. I hear you, but also it's the moon. I hope I'm not making a mistake with this moon, but... Cranston. 
think this can work now. We're on turn 13. Turn 10. Team 10. It's every day, bro. What about a submarine? This is like, I guess it's morbid. I think I would rather go on a rocket than a submarine. Because, at, like, I would be scared by both. And I think deservedly so. But at least, if you die going to space, is probably gonna be like pretty quick. I know that this submarine imploded in like less than a tenth of a second or whatever, but like some submarine deaths are really, you know, it's the stuff of nightmares. Well, just in general, like I know, cause people are saying it's for recreation, right? Here's something I used to like figure out if I would do something for recreation. Uh, as soon as you ask me to do it is my first uh, question uh, what, which alternative has the least painful death? <laughs> like, I think it's a good sign that you're probably not going to have fun doing the thing that you got asked to do. Hmm. Trip to the moon or submarine to the Mariana Trench? Um, I might have pronounced it wrong, but I was about to say Marinara Trench, so... It could have been worse. But like, if my wife wants to go to the moon, like, I'm an ally. I'm not gonna go to the moon just because she wants to, but she can go to the moon and I'll, like, hold down the fort. I'll pay her property taxes and stuff. You know they're not gonna give you a moon exemption for that shit, so, like, somebody's gotta do it. What if she takes the kid? Brother, you know what that means. I get some me time. Like, I'll go on a little trip because my wife wants to go somewhere that I'm, like, not that interested in. And maybe, you know, I go and I'm interested now. But I'm not going to the damn moon. That shit is, like, uh... That's a long-ass trip, man. Holy cow, we might make it to ten. <laughs> One snake is not going to change you here. Lionfish or chocolate would go crazy. Otherwise, like, steaks and good equipments. Come on. Cranston. I think a chocolate is still more important. I would consider this round a success if we just got chocolate or a lionfish. Okay, eat me. You had your chance. I don't see us winning this one. That's just math talking. If we had chocolate, though, I think we win that. I'm, I'm happy with nine either way. You at a Vietnamese restaurant? Mmm. I'll take the rare beef pho, me at a Vietnamese restaurant. Hey, let me get the lemongrass pork chop, and I will pay the upcharge to get some chicken with that as well. Thank you. Oh, really? You like Vietnamese food? Name three uh, dishes. Um, 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 pho, um, 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 uh, um, 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 uh, spring rolls, oh, fuck! Me. Mmm, lemongrass pork chop. <laughs> I am I am very smart. I promise I'm not just trying to make this stream like things I disagree with my wife on. She goes crazy for the summer rolls, man. And I just I I will say that there's a just let the story follow up here for a second. I had never had a summer roll that tasted I don't even want to say good, but had tasted like something I want to eat. Anytime I'd ever gotten the summer roll at a Vietnamese restaurant, it had been like under duress. They're like, oh, we're out of spring rolls. Or like, oh, I'm like, I want a spring roll, but I, I'm trying to lose weight, so give me a summer roll instead. Then, we ordered Vietnamese from a different place. I believe it's called An and Chi in Vancouver. Kate got a summer roll, and it came with, like, a freaking huge summer roll. She said, you got to try this. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know that summer rolls could actually taste good. I didn't know that there could be, like, they could be crispy and fresh, and you don't need to dunk them in the peanut sauce just to be able to masticate them. They were, there was, like, the, the average summer roll at a Vietnamese restaurant 
tastes like they me- they wrapped it first in saran wrap and then the rice paper. That's the only way I know how to describe it. This one, they left out the saran wrap. It's the first time I've ever I've ever tasted a a summer roll that agreed with me. What's a summer roll? It's like usually it's rice noodles, it's like vermicelli. Um like a thin strip of shrimp and julienne carrots, uh, some other it, it also called a fresh roll. Sure, it's an it's like an unfried spring roll. Also called a shrimp salad roll. That's not a spring roll. A spring roll is deep fried. I previously thought it was a spring roll, but worse. But then I've I've learned the error of my ways. I've never had a fried spring roll. You should try it. They're fucking sick, dude. There's no such thing as a fried spring roll. That's an egg roll. Where do you live? You don't have, don't give me the address. Just the city. Tell me the metropolitan area you live in. You better hope it's not Columbus or Cincinnati. Cuz I feel like you are Ohio posting right now. Any I mean, I don't know if it's a Canadian Vietnamese thing, okay? But in a Canadian Vietnamese restaurant Spring roll is a little cigar-sized, deep-fried roll. The rice paper is deep-fried to a golden brown, uh, and it's cylindrical. There's a slight ingredient difference between that and an egg roll, but the main difference is that the uh, spring roll is like rolled crispy rice paper, and the egg roll is more like, it looks like a pillow, and then it's like a, it's like an, Eggier type batter. It's got air bubbles in it and stuff like that. It's like a pocket. It's almost like eating the McDonald's apple pie full of spring roll ingredients. In Ohio, we call that a steamy blankie. Come on. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. I'm sorry. Maybe you do. I don't know. I've never been to Ohio. Summer rolls are called baby arms here because they look like a baby's arm. No, they're not. <laughs> that one's freaking me out because it's actually plausible. They kind of do look like a baby's arm, although it wouldn't be like my first thought. <laughs> There's a great banh mi place by me in San Diego. Such killer spring rolls. I'm not trying to put the whole country on blast, okay? I really feel like banh mi could become the most popular sandwich in America. I sincerely believe that. It just needs one thing, and I'm going to get booed for saying it, but it's true. It needs to be more full. My, here's my experience buying a banh mi, and I do it a lot, maybe like once every few months, and I enjoy it, but here's what always happens. I look at the menu, and I go, holy cow, Fuzz like 11 bucks and Bon Me is like 650. Give me a six dollar and fifty sandwich, and then it comes out, and I'm like, it's like this big, and there's no ingredient, there's like one little layer of ingredients on it. And I'm like, that's why it's 650. And then I eat it, and I'm like, this shit is delicious. I think you could make Bon Me go take over the world. I'm not saying it's not doing well. I'm just saying it could take over the world if you just multiplied the filling of a banh mi by 1.75. It's a lot. Like, that's, that's close to doubling. I'm not going to purchase two. I'm not going to eat two baguettes. Who do you think I am? Regina George? Just give me a baguette that's twice as long. <laughs> and then put 75% more stuff on it. <laughs> Two banh mi is a little too much. Thank you. It's like uh, what I used to say was like I'm I'm. They need to make like a medium large for men's shirts because I'm always at the store and I'm like, oh, do I need a medium or a large? Well, sometimes I would need a medium, and if I got a large, it was like I was swimming in it. And sometimes I'd need a large. If I got a medium, it was like it was showing off my belly button, like uh, Terry from Fubar. Now, now that I lost some weight, I realized actually I was just a little bit. Chubby. Actually, I just need a medium. But I still think that there could be a market for extra mediums. 
I think medium shirts could take over North America. They just need one simple trick. And people are going to boo me for this, but... Yeah, more filling. <laughs> they just need, like, 8% more fabric. No, I don't know. I think extra medium kind of makes sense, though. Like, they have so many XLs. They go up to, like, 5XL, 6XL. And they go down to, like, extra small. Maybe they even go to extra, extra small. But they're not putting any more sizes in the middle. There's a big difference between medium and large. Just buy two mediums? Two mediums is too big! Buy two mediums? What am I, Regina George? Just make the medium as big as two mediums. Why don't they make... Dude, everyone, you have now signed an NDA. This information is under embargo, okay? It's 2023. You're still going into a shoe store like it's fucking Subway. Hey, you got this in a number nine? Ridiculous. Now, when you order from my store, first things first, we send you a, a, a pallet of goo in the mail. You step on it. You send it back. We now have a perfect mold of your foot. We print your shoes to order. We don't need that. We don't need that. Okay, why don't you tell the world without telling them that you're not an in-betweener. Congrats, your shoe's exactly nine and a half long. Congrats, you're exactly a size 11. Congrats, you're a size 6. What about those amongst us who are 6.81? What about those amongst us who are a 9.13? You can get anything made to order. You can get a blood test. You can find out how related to Genghis Khan you are. They can put your damn brain into a USB key and plug it into your PS5. But you're, oh, we're, we haven't done We haven't suffered enough as a society to deserve shoes that actually fit. Fuck you, dude. You're not invited on this rocket ship. Now, I need, does anybody here own a factory? Somewhere that labor costs are like really low because this is going to be like a real we need a lot of money to get this going There's going to be a lot of overhead involved And does anyone know what kind of goo we could use for this? Because I would just kind of said goo as like a placeholder Do the goo thing but for shirts Do the goo thing but for shirts Let me think about that I got to think about that Do the goo thing but for shirts who think I didn't freeze like any tier fives, but I'm in, I love it either way. So a tailor, <laughs> that's true. But like, there's problems with tailors, man. They take too long. When I got fitted for that suit, it took like an hour. The dude was taking all sorts of measurements, and then he was asking me questions. He was like, "How do you like your suit?" And I'm like, "Brother, I got no idea." You're the one with an Italian accent. Just tell me what'll make me look like uh, Gerard Butler. You like a tapered sleeve or a cannon sleeve? And I'm like, I don't even know what any of that, I don't know what it means, man. Reused bit. <laughs> oh yeah, but when Squeaks does it, everybody laughs. Magic tricks for making friends. When I was really young, I'd have an iPod touch and I'd Google whatever I wanted. You know, I Googled boobs, I Googled whatever. And then once my dad took my iPod Touch and was like, Yo, um, Squeaks. I looked through your Google history and it says boobs. And then the second result in history was magic to make friends. <laughs> now my dad, being a smart fellow, was like more concerned about the magic to make friends <laughs> than he was about boobs. And he was like, I'm scared it's gonna stunt his growth, you know? Anyway, on an unrelated note, look at my hand. Can I sit with you? Can I sit with you guys? <laughs> and then my ass lost like 35 pounds between the first time I wore this suit and the second time I wore this suit. So now this shit makes me look like David Byrne. Everybody sees me at Palo on the Disney cruise. They say, hey, where's your lamp post, David Byrne? Where's your lamp post? I say, I don't have a lamppost. I'm not David Byrne. You forgot to use the ostrich? Yeah. Robbie Burns. Oh, dude! He's Robbie Burns posting. Robbie Burns. 
Give me one extra medium shirt. Josh and Mouth. I know you're still here, Mouth. Give it to me straight. How do I print from PDF? No, give it to me straight. What do you think the odds are that an extra medium shirt could become an industry standard? Now, you're going to say something stupid like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> I'm getting downvoted by Mouth's facial hair. I think there needs to be a size between small and medium and a size between medium and large. Like there could be a, a shmedium and a, and a marge. I refuse to wear marge. Oh, you could call it a ledium or something. I, I think extra medium is good. You could call it medium large. Ah, uh, that's too many words. We're, we're at the print shop. You're probably paying by the letter, right? So... Kids XL can be an adult extra medium. Well, that would be great if I wanted a shirt that had fucking Marshall from Paw Patrol on it. That was made for like a portly nine-year-old. But I want like a, a shirt for an adult. I don't want a, I don't want a boy's shirt. I want a man's shirt. Men only wear rubble. True, true. It's kind of crazy that like in the modern... When I was a kid... Men in their 30s that were cool, like wore suits and stuff like that. Now the coolest thing that a man in his 30s can wear is like a t-shirt that says like Toronto Blue Jays 1993 World Series winners. And then it has like a, a picture of the World Series trophy runs from like navel to like the collar. And then there's just like seven Toronto Blue Jays logos pasted around the side. And then one image of Joe Carter having swung, swung his baseball bat. Why is this getting minus two? I'm, this is a real. Th it's a real thing. Oh, I get it. You guys are probably Cincinnati Reds fans. <laughs> is that who the Blue Jays beat in that World Series? No, they probably they Phillies, right? I don't know. His cool radar is so off. It's not off. I live in a cool city. Your ass probably lives in Ohio. You think I don't know cool? I see cool guys every day. I make sure to block the eye line between them and my wife so she doesn't get any ideas. Okay. I'm protecting my wife from cool guys 24-7. You think I don't know what a cool guy looks like? I don't even want to know what cool looks like in Ohio. Probably a dude wearing his tack vest to Subway. He's getting ready for a civil war, but if the dude puts green peppers on his sandwich, he's going to cry. So I, I, I was over the line, but it's just making me so mad. <laughs> Just pisses me off, man. Maybe like a snooty pet, like a cat. Did you guys know that people are horny for the dad from Inside Out? I did know that. Hang on. Let me see. Dad from Inside Out. Oh, that's him. His name is Mr. Anderson. It's time we finally talked about the hot dad from Inside Out. Wow, fam, I'm so sorry. Here I am in 2017 thinking I'd already written a post about something in 2015, but after a quick Google search, I guess I didn't. Okay, hang on. And because your thirsty ass clicked on this post, you know what I'm referring to. It's the hot dad from Inside Out. But low-key, high-key, Riley's dad, appropriately referred to as dad throughout the film, was the real reason you enjoyed Inside Out. Like, and then it's just a close-up on his eyes. Dad was cute when Riley was a baby and even looked like a CGI snack with a beanie on his head, which no actual human can do. No offense, Mouth. But sisters, when the movie arrives at present day, Dad is a man who can turn me inside out. Perfect teeth. A modest ass. Dad's got it all and Mom knows it. Unfortunately, this movie is about his daughter, so I'm already out of imagery for this post, but thank you, Pixar. Simply thank you. So how did I find out about this? Well, like a, a Twitter account posted Happy Father's Day, and it was a picture of the dad from Inside Out, and then all the replies were like, skis, 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 skis. they know what they did with this one. And I was like, I don't get it at all, which is not rare for me online these days. But and then I looked into it further, and people were posting a picture, and it's like him lounging 
on the couch in his underwear with like a bulge. And I was like, that's funny. The people made like fan art for that. And then there's one that's just, he's just got his cock out. He's in the same seat, but he's just got like a huge penis. Anyway, people are very strange these days. Link. <laughs> yeah, librarian, you might have to do some work on that one. Hello, Josh. Hi. I fucking found the picture. I hate you. It would it, like don't hate me. I didn't make it for one. Also, it's not hard to find because like I found it ambiently. I was just walking around and the 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 picture. Well, no, I was uh, scrolling, but then like the the picture found me, man. The picture found me. You, I didn't look for it. How could I look for it when I didn't know it existed? I was like somebody that goes, to, like, I'm like the plucky reporter from a high school newspaper who's like, mm, something seems fishy. And then I'm going through, like, the microfiche at the library and I accidentally uncover, like, a conspiracy for murder or something like that. I'm just like, why is everybody posting about the dad from Inside Out? Three clicks later, I see the damn tip of his penis. Oh, a librarian looked for it? Yeah, but, then, you know, that's, they're working right now. I can see the penis in your glasses reflection. No, you can't. I'm looking at Super Auto Pets. Unless there's like a little... Is it imprinted? Did it get... Can you... This might sound like a stupid question, but there's no such thing as stupid questions. Can you get burn-in on your glasses the same way you can get burn-in on like a TV? You're right, that is a stupid question. Can we pivot to the aunt from Big Hero 6? Okay, hang on a second. It's troubling that you had that one ready to go. Ant from Big Hero 6. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> I get it now. Control D, I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm adding that to my cringe collection. Krungo. What do you guys think Krungo would sound like? <laughs> Average Twitch streamer dialogue. <laughs> If Krungo was a place, you guys, where do you think it would be? Did you see the edited video of uh, Nick A30 saying you guys have to realize like they were down in that submarine. They had no uh, darkness like or no light. It's pitch black. They couldn't see anything. They had no food, no water. Imagine being down there because not only is it just pitch black, like you can't see anything. Like imagine being in a tight confined space. It's pitch black. You have no food. They don't have Fortnite. No Fortnite, but then the part where he said no Fortnite was definitely, like, AI edited. It got me really good, though. That's what's great about AI, is, like, just because something funny didn't happen doesn't mean that it, you can't see, like, what it would have looked like if it did. <laughs> you know what I mean? No Fortnite, no cola? No! No Fortnite and cola! No yippee! He didn't actually say no Fortnite, but man, oh man, if he did, holy, that would have been hilarious. Oh, really? I thought I owned you. There's a lot of great Fortnite memes out there. That one that it was just mentioned. <laughs> Others as well. The guy, uh, after he got a shotgun kill in Fortnite, moaning like he's having an orgasm. Yeah, Young Llama Fortnite moan, thank you. Ah! <sighs> Guy in Fortnite getting shot one time and then building like uh, the Burj Dubai and then peeking out at the top and getting one tapped. Goku hitting the gritty. There's lots of lots of stuff to like in, in Fortnite, man. Why do you know so many Fortnite memes? You see them now and then on on Twitter, if if you're there, which I am sometimes. People expect you to believe that, like, science exists. 
and can be trusted, even when nobody in science has ever explained why the two streams happens. Some people say it's when you got dry, you know what, in your urethra. Brother, I've been two streaming it since I was like a, a little kid. There's no you know what passing through the urethra back then. It's a, it's something to do with the rifling or like uh, I I don't know. I, I that's why I'm hoping somebody smarter than me can figure it out. The rifling? What do you do? Why, Josh? Why are people pretending that they don't know about the rifling? It's rifled. You ever see the stream when it comes out? It doesn't come out in like a, a just a cylinder. It's got like a little twist in it. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's when you piss. It has like a Dan Marino spiral on it. It's not coming out straight ahead like, you know, if I was trying to throw a football, the shit would be like flipping end over end in the air. It's, it's spiraling as it's, it flicked its wrist when it came out. It's like you're not even listening. Why is it called rifling? Because that's what makes a rifle a rifle, is that the rifle barrel is like corkscrewed because it puts spin on the bullet and that's how you can shoot enemies that are around the corner. There's no rifling inside of the tube. It's because the stream is cylindrical, but the opening is flat. Well, first off, maybe your opening. Not my opening. Wouldn't be my opening. But that's interesting. That's interesting to think about. I never really thought about that. Easy 10 piece. No porcupine required. You at a Vietnamese restaurant? Uh, I'll take the rare beef pho and give me a porcupine, please. Me at the Vietnamese restaurant? Give me two banh mi's worth of ingredients shoved into one banh mi baguette and give me six capybaras, please. This was great about having played Final Fantasy 16 is like by Friday, I was probably ahead of a lot of people, but now it's been like four days since I played. Everybody else is on the uh, the final boss and they can tell me the best way to enjoy it. It's like you've been to the hottest restaurant in town and I'm like, I want the uh, andouille sausage fritters. And you're like, don't get those. Get the Cobb salad, man. The Cobb salad goes crazy here. My father invented the Cobb salad. Yo, you're Thai Cobb's kid? I honestly couldn't even tell you what's in a Cobb salad, except I think that its defining element is hard-boiled eggs. And it's the dame who will see you safely through Northridge. I'll send the stylus in the morning. Corn? Well, I, I had no idea. Avocado, maybe? Is avocado in it? She's the proud Corn, hold the cob. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> I don't have any glycogen in my brain. That's why you were saying there's corn in a cob salad, because of corn on the cob. Hold the cob. How do you feel about macaroni salad? I'm like... I I'm I have strong opinions about pasta noodle shape, and I acknowledge them as being insane. I don't think there's any reason for it, but just the shape of macaroni is like disgusting for me. The concept of a pasta salad is not something I'm that into to begin with, but like a pasta salad with penne or rotini or something like that, I can sort of like, I can muster the enthusiasm to eat it, but something with macaroni is just like, I, I just can't do it, man. There's just something about it. I know they're the same. They're, I mean, they're kind of the same. People will be like, oh, uh, the shape of something doesn't change its function. Okay, um, how about amino acids, dumbass? Owned, owned. <laughs> He's owned me. I remember in 12th grade, I had a... Um, well, I had biology class, as you might expect. I, uh, I remember our teacher gave us a question that was like, knowing that changing the shape of proteins, or like, uh, long story short, how would you change the shape of your hair, knowing that hair is made of uh, protein, which is essentially a string of amino acids? My dumb ass said, well, they could invent something that's like a really hot treatment you put on your hair, so that, uh, it denatures the proteins via the addition of heat, which then leads to the proteins uh, degrading and changing their shape. And then after writing that whole answer, uh, I, I had an epiphany and said, or I guess you could just cut it. 
And then I remember my teacher giving me full marks and circling the part at the end and just writing like a smiley face. You saw her before she disappeared. Okay. The day before, she was in tears. She'd lost her comb, a gift from the dame. Me when I lose my comb. Fancy, but you could tell it meant the world to her. You see, Tatiana my daughter when she takes a one millimeter by one millimeter toy outside of the house, and I say, "Hold it tighter, you're so gonna lose upset. it." And then, like a minute later, she's like, "Daddy, where's my toy?" And I'm like, "Oh Someone fuck." <laughs> Where did you drop it? Oh, back there. She's pointing to like an open sewer grate or something like that. Oh, oh the sewer grate, really? Um, have you seen my Chloe? I let her out of her pen while I did my chores. And she hasn't come back yet. I think she's lost. Please, can you help me look for her? I can't promise I'll find her. But Points at sewer grate. Describe her to me. Dude, we're, the worst part is like every day my kid falls in love with a new toy. She lets me stroke her and if she just makes it to the end of the day, she's like out of love with it. But if she loses it during the day, then like that becomes enshrined in her heart as like her favorite toy ever. Like the other day we were at the playground and she picked up a rock. A rock! And she was like bringing the rock everywhere. She was like, come on, rock, come down the slide with me. And then we got in the car to drive home and she said, dad, can I take the rock on the, on the cruise? And I was like, well, we're, we're not on a cruise. Like we just got off the cruise, but I was like, sure. You know, you can take the rock on, on the cruise. Then that night, I was like, do you want to take the rock in your crib? She was like, no, I want to take the ghost in my crib. It's like a different toy. So she just makes it to the end of the day then, like, the spell is broken. But if she loses it, then when we get home, she's like... She had this little toy, it was like a little Sumiko Gurashi, like, boba tea thing. And we kept telling her, like, be careful, be careful, don't drop it. And then, like, she dropped it, and Kate was like, can mommy hold it? And she was like, no. And then she dropped it, and she lost it. And now, like, twice a day, she's like, mm. I lost tapioca. I'm like, yeah, we lost tapioca, but that means we learned, like, to listen to mommy and daddy all the time, right? She goes, she's lost forever. It's breaking my heart, man. Speak with the traveling trader. Holy cow, dude! Who needs the Maytag when you got this? Casting a little Galaga on the on the sheets. Holy. Does she know, though, that, like, the wind will just do it for her? Oh, they're slaves. Alright, well. My mistake. Stop making fun of my purple shirt. It's not a purple shirt, it's lavender. Hey guys, I'm checking out the new Grimace shirt and... Hey guys, I'm checking out the new Grimace shirt and... Hard cut here, and then... The librarian, this is a hard cut there, and then next is me going. Fatal me when I hear the news say it's going to be 100 degrees tomorrow and I don't realize I'm watching an American channel. Monka S, so true. Me when I'm on... Uh, a Disney cruise in British Columbia, and I get on the elevator, and uh, I hear an American tell me that it's cold outside. It's 55 today. Whoa! No, I mean it is pretty cold. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not the guy who's saying it's not even cold. I'm just saying when I hear it's 55 degrees, I'm like, I gotta go underground. That's like the scene from Terminator 2 where Linda Hamilton's gone the fence. And she becomes a skeleton, you remember? Great, now I have to watch the whole movie in my mind again. Something so funny about John Connor's cadence in Terminator 2. Like, he sounds like he's going insane every time he talks. No, what are you doing? <laughs> you gotta kill them! Of course. I am a Terminator. Terminator, you can't kill them! 
I don't know why in my head I'm I'm picturing Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator going. <laughs> oh shit! Terminator, what happened? Mom found the cum box. <laughs> Mom found the piss drawer. Thought she found the piss drawer, Terminator. What? Oh man, hang on. You've reached a pivotal moment in the story. If you continue, you will not be able to return. That seems fine. That means we're we're due for a, a big monster battle. I think. Rip side quests. It's okay. You gotta you gotta pick your battles. There are not nearly enough. Drake's men head. Men. Gee, I sure hope it does. doesn't take centuries, Simon, as seriously as you do. This bodes well. Hmm. I'll be a first. This may not be such a terrible plan after all. And what exactly is that supposed to mean? Only that your last secret shortcut was nowhere near as secret as you claimed. Yeah, well, so it's Caracas it. again, huh? Life's too short for yeah. perfect plan. Let's do let's start with Caracas and pray it doesn't turn into Manila. Ah, Manila. Reminds me of when we were in Belgrade. Remember that? Belgrade. Haven't seen a cock up like Belgrade since Vilnius. Vilnius. I'd almost forgotten about that one. Probably because of the head injury we got in Johannesburg. Narrowly escaping death at the hands of an enemy is not my idea of fulfillment. Mm. Something wrong. Not Just thinking point. about Just wondering Leon. If you had finished. Leon, haven't heard about that since I was in Valencia. Destroy it and the whole thing should come tumbling down. And if the passage to the Valencia, I heard about that one since we was in Kiev. To grow and change. I don't think I can make that accent more insane. I think that's as far as I can go. Excuse me, where's my full heal? Have you died yet or no? I'm just gonna tell you, I, I don't think it's gonna happen in this game. You can call it clueless if you want, but like... Yeah, I died in the demo, but the demo's not the game. I was I was theory crafting in the demo. It's like being like, oh, excuse me, Albert Einstein. You're not the best physicist of all time. You got a question wrong in like middle school. Yeah, he was probably bored. Because instead of asking him stuff he was interested in, like what's relativity, they were like... How do you talk to girls? <laughs> Bro, that's not cool. Albert Einstein was married to the love of his life. Okay, Albert Einstein was married to his cousin, okay? Famous scientists will never beat the I took my cousin to prom allegations. Charles Darwin married his cousin. Come on, man. Get on. Winston Churchill married his cousin too. Are you all right? Honestly, I mean, fine. It just shows you like how much the world has changed in 100. Yeah, I mean, no, Winston Churchill's from like basically 100 years ago, but Charles Darwin like 200 years ago. No wonder people were marrying their cousins all the time. You know, before airplanes existed, you would only meet like 200 people over the course of your entire life. Of course, people would marry like. They'd be like, oh, what are the odds my soulmate would be my my uncle's kid? <laughs> Same thing. Wow, would you believe it? Seven billion people on Earth, and the person I was meant to be with just happened to grow up like two streets over in the same zip code as me. Wow. The world works in mysterious ways. Maybe don't marry your cousin. Fifteen-year-olds on uh, Twitter discovering, hey, maybe we shouldn't uh, idolize FDR. Sure, the New Deal was pretty important for helping America get out of the Great Depression, but um, did you know he married his cousin? Not notorious working class president FDR wearing a clearly expensive white tee. It's beautiful. The heart of Sambrek. San Brecky sounds like an Australian brunch restaurant.
Well, that didn't work. I think we're gonna need a bigger sword. Mine's bigger. Thank you, Clive. But I meant that figuratively. <laughs> I get it. The cause clearly made It's an allegory for their story. penis. You are too kind. There are not many in this world who would indulge the whims of a tired old historian. He's got the championship belt on. Not too tired to go filching Kubo nuts, though. Take over. Uh, what? <laughs> Did you check my browser history? Keeps him off the Moogle. Hush now. We all know there's no such There's thing as literally Moogle. one downstairs, <laughs> old ass. Master Clive, a moment if you. Uh, my apologies, I didn't mean to. Me when my friend is talking Not to a all. woman. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> freely, Otto. Didn't mean to interrupt. She's gone missing. Anyway, I'll be in the mess when you've finished. Very well. Oh, man. Reminds me, at university once, me and my friend were playing foosball. And then, like, our RA came down, like, the the slightly older student who was, like, administering the floor and making sure none of us died came down. And she started playing foosball against it, uh, against us, I should say. And I thought that her and my friend were kind of hitting it off. So I was like, oh, I got to go get my clothes out of the dryer. And then I just left him there. And he came back, like, to the dorms 15 or 20 minutes later. And he was like, hey, thanks for abandoning me with our RA. It was like awkward as hell. And I was like, I thought you guys were hitting it off. And he was like, no, we're not <laughs> hitting it off at all. She was just really uncomfortable once you left. And I was like, oh, sorry. I thought I, I thought I sensed like a vibe. Hang on, I gotta go <laughs> speak to Karen. Sharon. Well, don't just stand there gawping. If you're gonna buy some, be quick about it. Just, can you relax? You're still selling the same shit after all this time. Don't did you ever do me. Edward Forty Instead hands? Yes, I did. <laughs> Back in the day. Tell us what happened. What Edward happened? Forty hands is the where you um. You duct tape a 40 of malt liquor to each hand, and you don't get use of your hand back until you finish at least one of the 40s. So usually, like, you try to finish one of the 40s pretty quick so that one of your friends can cut you loose, and then you've at least got one hand to hold your you-know-what so you can go to the bathroom. <laughs> but... <laughs> I know. It's one of those urban legend stories that I don't know if it ever happened, but everybody knows a friend who has a friend it happened to. My friend told me that his friend was playing Edward Forty hands and then he fell down the stairs and tried to use his hands to like cushion his fall, but then the bottle shattered and he like Lucky. cut cut the shit out of his arms and legs with the broken glass. But I don't I don't believe it ever ever happened, man. It seems a step too far. Everybody knows somebody who supposedly had that story happen. I just don't buy it. I'm sorry. Don't you use plastic jugs? No, nah, man. It's old English Colt 45 glass bottles, man. Each one of the bottles is like, I don't know, maybe a liter? 40 ounces. That's 40, that's 40 ounces. Like, it's like 1.2 liters, isn't it? Man, it's fucked up that like in university, drinking 1.2 liters was like un it didn't phase me i guess you're also drinking 2.4 liters holy cow that's a lot man <laughs> i do edward 40 hands now i would i'd probably try to do one in an hour and then go to sleep with the other one still taped to my hand no. wake up eat breakfast maybe drink a quarter go yes. hop on the peloton Drink another quarter, eat lunch, Our probably try to finish the last half right there. And for their crimes shall they be punished. I have three gods powers coursing within me right now. To dwell in darkness, what do you think you're gonna do? May purge the night and welcome last Is Edward Forty Hands against TOS? Yeah. On these are Definitely. <laughs> How dare you speak those words? You can't even Have eat, like, no spicy order. food anymore, right? You gotta do, like, the spicy food challence, but just pretend you're eating your DoorDash order. 
You're like, oh yeah, I'm really enjoying this anal fissure. <laughs> Oh, and well, you know what would go really nice on this tortilla chip is just a couple of dabs of anal fissure. Ooh, you know, it's spicy, but you can also taste like the fruitiness of the peppers. Mmm, I eat it all the time. We also had, I never did this, and like I did a lot of stuff that was damaging to my liver in university, but I didn't go this far. There was a quote-unquote challenge at my university to drink 40 beers in... 40 hours which doesn't sound like i mean it sounds like a ton but also simultaneously it doesn't sound like that much but considering that you're going to be out of commission for like at least i was going to say eight hours but realistically you're probably out of commission for more than eight hours to sleep because you're going to have drank like 20 beers on the first day like that's pretty hard i remember hearing a story about like the stuff that people would do to drink 40 beers in 40 hours and they would like party one night and try to drink like 20 which is already like way 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 too much and then they like they told us the dude woke up hung over but he had to keep going for his own ego so he poured beer into his cheerios instead of milk but then while he was eating it he was like hung over so he threw up and then he ate the throw up because if you throw up and don't eat it, it doesn't count. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't witness it. I'm just, this is second hand, okay? North American college, pretty weird. Yeah. Yeah. Least degenerate queen student. People were putting themselves through a lot of abuse for sure. He's gone. What are you talking about? He's right there. For what, though? Well, if you could ver get it verified, you could get a badge to put on your engineering jacket that said you did 40 beers. And then when people saw you at Ritual with the 40 beers badge, they would be like, Whoa, dude, you did 40 beers? I see your badge. It's right under your Ritual badge. Did you see the new Pepsi collage up? <laughs> what is the, the new what? It's giving free Shavakadu. Pepsi cola chup, it's a thing. Yeah, but I don't even know what is it. What is it? Is it a drink? Is it business or pleasure? Don't flatter Point yourself, Karen. You down. It's done. Pepsi flavored it's ketchup. Done. Why is it called cola chup then? I'm wearing purple gears, which means I can't upgrade it. Okay, well you're useless to me then. Because it's Pepsi cola plus ketchup. Oh, okay. I don't know about all that, man. It's. Do you think God stays up in heaven because he's scared of what he created on earth? They've tried to gobble me up on more than one occasion. Why do they despise me so? I created them. Do you think God stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of what he's created? Here on earth? It's crazy that there's a line from Spy Kids, huh? Spy Kids 2, actually. I'm resisting all, a lot of temptation to make an Austin Powers joke. <laughs> Spy Kids is proof of auteur theory, for sure. Those movies are just, like... Do you think it was wise to it's like God? Robert Rodriguez's, like, seem, psyche on the screen. I needed his eyes, and no. I want to hate... Uh, that he does. Robert Rodriguez, like, so much. He's, because I, okay, I'm not trying, I'm not being that serious. I think in my head, my headcanon version of Robert Rodriguez is actually who Zack Snyder is in real life. So I was like, oh, I don't really like the movies this guy makes. I'm sure he's going to be, like, insufferable. And then I watched that episode of The Chef Show where John Favreau goes over to his house and they just cook, like, a bunch of pizzas. And he just seems like a really nice guy. And I was that made me, like, even angrier. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> you should be more of a dick. Must do the same. Me when I hate on Megan Trainer. I know because you can't just be a hater in the modern era, right? In the modern era, you're not elected, you're not allowed to like anything that's made by bad people. And the corollary to that is you're not allowed to hate 
someone unless they deserve it. <laughs> Come on. You can't just. It used to be back in the day, people were going crazy. They were hating on like Barney the dinosaur. You'd be like, why are people so mad about. Adults would be like, fuck Bar Barney the dinosaur. I hope he dies. You'd be like, why? They'd be like, I don't know. Purple. He's purple. He sings, I love you. You love me. More than likely. Nowadays, you'd be like, oh, I don't really like uh, Barney the Dinosaur. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. Like, he's not, the show's not that great, but he donates, uh, like, millions of dollars to charitable causes. So, actually, you're that. Fuck him, he's purple, dude. You're purple? I'm Lavender! I hate media based on, I hate people based on my taste in media. It's my most boomer coded trait. Dude, I hear you. I mean, I wouldn't say I hate, like, Megan Trainer or, like, John Legend or anything. But, like, I'll be real with you. You might think this is putting on airs. But, like, if I was in the grocery store and someone was like, Hey, dude, check it out. I don't want you to miss out. John Legend is over in, like, the dairy aisle. Why don't you go meet him and get his autograph? I would not... Unless I was already going to the dairy aisle, I would not walk over to see him. I think... <laughs> maybe this is biased. But I feel like you're kind of a dick if you take a photo with a celebrity whose work you don't actually enjoy. Like if you hate Seth Rogen, but you see him in public and you recognize him, and you go, Seth Rogen, can I get a picture and an autograph? I think that makes you kind of a dickhead. You took someone else's time just to be like, check it out, I got a photo with someone whose face I recognize. You did it, you did it for clout, exactly. What if I tell him he sucks afterwards? That's definitely even worse. That's not based. I would definitely be pissed off if someone was like, are you NL? And then they took a photo and then they're like, by the way, like I hate all your work, Chibli's better. I would be like, okay, bye. Rude ass. The dude's probably, you do that to Seth Rogen, the dude's probably out there just buying a pot. Oh, sorry, he makes his own pot. Okay, I, I forgot he was into pottery now. He's probably out buying weed or something like that. You're gonna ruin his day You're telling him you didn't like Sausage Party? What if they said, keep up the good work, you fucking freak? Hey, I've been watching a long time. I remember when you sucked off 16 cops in a row. What would you get on True Rate Me? Dude, I was looking... I saw the Twitter drama about True Rate Me, where they have, like, a, a rubric for... Like, a lady posted her photo and said, rate me honestly, and then someone gave her a 7, and the mod replied, like, warning for overrating or something like that. That's crazy. And then they had, like, uh, so this is a, obviously, this is a very macabre moment in the game, but... They had, like, the list of faces. It was, like, 9 to 10. Top 0.03%, 1 in 30,000, supermodel quality looks. And then, like that on the first page, it was that all the way down to like six and a half. And all of the women looked exactly the same. <laughs> like the, the one that they had in the bottom right corner as like a six, and the one that they had in the top left corner as a 10 were like almost exactly identical faces to me. Skip the Peloton because of the move? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, on, I didn't work out on Wednesday because the movers came at 7.30. I didn't work out on Thursday because I was like the sorest I'd ever been when I woke up after 10 hours of... And listen, I'm, the movers, they did not do a good job, but I do want to just throw this out here. I think as someone who's not good at things sometimes, even when I try hard. I think that they didn't do a good job, but they did try their best. But their best was not up to the task, to the standards that we were hoping for. <laughs> like I'm, I worked as a mover in university for one day, for one day, and I sucked shit at it, and I was, was working hard. I was sweating my ass off. I was just not good at it, right? Like, I, I almost wanted to apologize to the people whose stuff we were moving. So I'm, I'm not saying, like, 
they weren't trying hard. I think they were trying hard, but they, they just didn't have the tools in there. I mean, like, just one thing. Like, they shrink-wrapped everything, like all the furniture, which is nice. But then when it came into the new place, they were, like, unwrapping the shrink wrap with their car keys. And I was like, you, don't, you guys don't even have, like, box cutters? They didn't give you box cutters? Or anything with a sharp edge? They got you pulling out, like, your keys? To, and that, it was saran wrapped, like, a hundred times. You know, like, when your grandma gave you a Christmas present and then she used, like, a whole roll of scotch tape? That's what every single one was like. And I was like, here, guys, here's, like, a box cutter. And they were like, don't worry about it. <laughs> also, didn't even put, you know, most movers... They put the bags on their shoes, like Mo Sislak when they come into the house. No bags on the shoes, just raw dog in the boots on the hardwood. Legit question, are movers supposed to move boxes room to room? Well, I mean, well, I'm pure ass. I think it depends on the setup. Like, we, we hired a moving company that was not, like, man with the truck. We hired him, like, when we were doing the pre-move checklist on the phone they were like we're like a full service mover like do you want us to help you pack and we're like no no, no that won't be necessary we got it the, they they do like furniture disassembly furniture reassembly they'll loan you the boxes they'll pack them up themselves if you want so we were like we're in great hands but I, I definitely did not feel like we got the white glove treatment. I'm psyching myself up because I have to I have to become my aunt after the stream and I gotta because they they damaged a couple of things. I mean they put a couple of dents in the wall, both in the old place and in the new place, which we're gonna have to fix. Um that's something that I you know you have some like understanding of because they did move a piano. <laughs> They chipped the wall in some places. They, they damaged part of Kate's piano, moving it, which I have like some sympathy for because it was basically just like one guy moving it up and down the stairs. They kind of half broke off one of the water bottles, water, water bottle holders on my Peloton, which is like, you know, bad for me because I get mighty thirsty during my 30 minute Emma Lovewell 90s rock rides. So I got to go talk to customer service and be like, hey, you guys did like not a very good job. But simultaneously in my head, I'm also like, <laughs> I don't think it's, I, I think the company set our movers up for failure. Like why, they, I think that they thought it was going to be like a super easy job. And then they got there and they were like, oh shit, a piano. And then it was just like, uh, you know, one dude, like the strongest dude out of the three dudes who came was like, oh shit, <laughs> a piano. <laughs> and then he had like a, like a backpack that came to the front with like two sticks coming out of it, two long planks. And he just put the piano on that thing and was basically walking it up the stairs. It's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen, honestly, but... Anyway, so I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to use my words after the stream today, but that's okay. I'm just glad, like, you know... I think every couple... Kate and I were talking about this. Every couple needs a Spider-Man 2 Tobey Maguire, and every couple needs a Spider-Man 2 Kirsten Dunst. There's times where I need her to be my Kirsten Dunst. I need her to be like, He said no mushrooms! And there's times when... I need to be the Kirsten Dunst, and she needs to be the Tobey Maguire. Which one are you? Well, we, we, we flip as necessary. It, like, it activated my husband alarm. So while the movers are moving our stuff in, I got a text from my wife with like 15 photos of damage to our walls. And she said, I need you to take care of this. And I was like, oh shit, this is, like, this is the final exam of marriage. <laughs> it's like, if you, don't, if you don't get this right, like, we, she'll never respect you ever again. So I gotta, before I send this email or make a phone call today, I'm like, ah! 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 <laughs> they, they have very good reviews, which is why I'm actually excited a little bit to make this phone call, because I think you have a lot of leverage over a company that's wronged you if they have like a 4.9 out of 5 on Google reviews. Because like one two-star review, Reputation means everything in this town, as you know. 
I'm a nice guy. I don't really want to leave a two-star review. If I was, if I was a nicer guy, I would leave a one. Because whenever you see a one-star review, people go, oh, they're just mad. Whenever you see a two-star review, people are like, what did they do? <laughs> a two-star review is like, this person is with a, with a sober and logical mind. They are still angry. They didn't, they were, you should have sent four guys instead of three guys. You're supposed to send one really big guy who's like enormous and looks unathletic but can like solo carry a fridge. And then you got like one really old skinny guy, but then you're like, this guy's not going to be able to lift anything. And then he just walks up to like a stack of five boxes full of books and just carries it with one hand with a cigarette in the other. And then like two guys who are like maybe the sons of farmers or something like that. You're like, these kids are only like 16. They're really working as movers. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, you take that end. And they just free solo like your fucking couch or something like that. Instead, we had like one tall skinny guy. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. Like this, what's he doing? They had one like incredibly strong guy. And then like one dude who was just sort of, I don't even know. He was just driving the dolly. He was just piloting the hand truck. We were, we were absent something that every moving team needs. Every moving team needs one guy who's like 5'4", 290, with, is just like a belt, and he just wraps the belt around a washer and dryer and walks down the stairs. Like that's, they, they, they're missing, I wanna tell them on the phone. You need to hire a, a, a 52 year old man who just got out of prison, who's 5'4", 290. That's what you need. Also, like, so we had them disassemble our bed because when we bought our bed, we had it assembled and it took them like an hour and a half to assemble it and they were cursing. And then when they came down, they said, we really hope you guys enjoy your bed. And I read between the lines and I was like, that's basically them saying like, fuck you even though we paid them to assemble it. Okay, fair enough. So when we got the movers, we were like, we know you do furniture disassembly. Can you disassemble and reassemble our bed? And they were like, no problem. And then it, like, I get it, but it took the dude like two hours to disassemble the bed, which means that there were only two guys lifting all the stuff. And then when we got to the new place, it took him like two hours to put it back together. So at the end of the day, he came down and said, I'm done. And I said, the bed's really complicated, right? And he said, no, it was really easy. I was like, what do you, you spent four hours today putting together the bed. It's crazy. I know they got to do it every day. I'm, that's why I'm like, <laughs> well, I feel like a, a traitor to the working class because I'm like complaining about how badly the movers did. But at the same time, I'm like, it's not that I think I could do better. It's just that. I've had movers who have done a way better job, so like, make it make sense. Anyway, I feel bad, cause like, it, you know, when someone does like a shit job cause they're being, oh, good garlic. <laughs> when someone does like a shitty job cause they're being lazy, you're kinda like, fuck you. When someone, they, they were really working their ass off, man. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's, it just sucks that they, like, I hope it doesn't end up reflecting badly on them when customer service gets this, like, uh, you know, m and verse that I'm going to send to them to try to get some money back. But I'm like, they really, I want to make it clear. Like, the email is going to, maybe this is a Tim Robinson bit. I just want to preface this email by saying that the three guys who did the moving really did their best. They had a great attitude and we would definitely work with them again in the future. That being said, they fucked up the house we moved out of and the house we moved into. They were woefully unprepared for the size of the load that we had prepared for them, and it took them three times longer than it should have taken them. And but at the same time, I really they were sweating and grunting, and they kept asking for glasses of water. They were working really hard, and they were cursing our name when they thought that we couldn't hear them, which is their right because it's a hard job. I understand. I would be. I was cursing my own name. I was like, "Why did I buy half of this stuff?" And I was the one moving it. Anyway, so we're like. You know, we're largely moved now, which is exciting. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm liking the new place. Have my moment of zen. Like, moving, I, you forget how much it sucks. Until you do it, and then you remember, like, real quick. Like, after we got all the boxes in the house, your brain is like, we're done. But that shit hasn't even fucking started, dude. Now you gotta unpack, like, 50 boxes. And like, I don't know if anybody else has moved recently, but 
there's almost like a little, I have like a, a competition. There's, there's box drafting. It's like Magic the Gathering. Like I would look at some of the boxes. Let's say I'm unpacking the kitchen. I open up a, a box and I see um, two spices, a, a plastic plate shaped like Pikachu, a mug shaped like the anime character Umaru, and then like a bag of Epsom salt. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm leaving, I'm sorting this shit down to the bottom of the fucking pack. I'm opening up another one and it's 16 glasses that are exactly the same size and shape. And I'm like, don't let her see, I'm taking this one. I know exactly where the mugs go or the cups go. I slot them in, in four rows of four, it's perfect. I open up another one, it's like half shit from the pantry and like half baby socks. And I'm like, mm, not quite yet. Maybe if it, if it wheels around, maybe I would take that one. Ooh, eight plates. Okay, eight plates, I can do that. Opened up one box, it was just the air fryer and like a French press. And I was like, this is for me. Honey, I can't help right now, I'm unpacking. Tunk. She doesn't need to know I just finished a, a box in four seconds. Yeah, I unpacked like 10 boxes. I was really busy. Box one, rice cooker and the thing that keeps water hot for your tea. Box two, three boxes of cereal and granola bars from Costco with a couple of bags of beef jerky on top of it. <laughs> her, the boxes that are left for her. I'm like, I did 10. You could just do like eight or just do whatever you can. And then she opens it up and it's like, 128 loose, unsorted screws of different sizes and gauges. I don't listen, sorry. I just did the ones that I saw. Where was the baby and all this? On the, on the moving day, she basically was just like sequestered um, with either myself or Kate, depending on what the other one of us was doing and what the movers were doing. So that like we couldn't, basically we were like a man down for like the whole moving day. And then unpacking, we were trying to just like basically keep her out of the way. And then we're trying to de decompress. <laughs> you know, we like went back to the old place, packed up even more stuff, went to drive back to the new place. Kate and I are had like debriefing from the moving. We're like, oh my God, we're gonna have to contact customer service. I hope we can get like at least a few hundred dollars off or like what, maybe we should contact like a handyman and get a quote for how much it's gonna cost us to repair this stuff and then attach like a PDF of that quote to the email where we ask for a partial refund. And then we're trying to like work out all these logistics of like our plan and in the background, it's like the first time my daughter has seen darkness in three months because she goes to bed at like 8.30 p.m. And she's like, I like the night. I like the night. Actually, 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 mom, dad, mommy, daddy, I really like the nighttime. I like the night. Actually, I think I like the nighttime. And we're like, ah! <laughs> we're trying to, it's just, it was, Wednesday was a lot. She was doing her best, though. Kate, I was actually looking into like volunteering today because I woke up at six and didn't have like shit to do because I <laughs> don't have a computer. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, man, they, people probably need help like volunteering. I could, vol I would love to just walk around for like four hours on a Saturday every two weeks, pick up some garbage or something like that, chop some vegetables in a soup kitchen. Apparently, I didn't know this, that shit is all full. Now, because everybody wants to do it. So, if you want to be a volunteer, you need a fucking PhD, and then you can go to the community center and you can teach, uh, you know, quantum physics to senior citizens for free instead. Oh, oh, you wanna, you wanna walk around and pick up trash with like a neon vest on? Guess what, motherfucker? That's like an eight-year wait list. Oh, but are you a cardiac surgeon? Because we're looking for volunteer cardiac surgeons to do uh, aortic valve replacement down at the community center on the first Tuesday of every month. It's fucking crazy, man. So you will not catch me picking up, <laughs> picking up the trash. <laughs> Just pick up the trash? Well, if you do it through the city, they give you a vest so the cars don't throw grimace milkshakes at you. And they give you one of those little sticks that you can use to pick up the garbage. I'm not doing it for the merch, but I'm like, if I'm going to be picking up trash, I'd like to have a stick. I'm not, I don't want to buy this stick myself. I'm donating my time. <laughs> this 
just buy a stick? They should fucking give me a stick. I'm volunteering. NL, you the kind of guy who would try to, cherry as, try to carry as many folding chairs as possible during a volunteer event? Absolutely. That's what I want. Like when I was looking for, for how to volunteer, isn't there just like a place you can go and be like, don't, don't you need somebody to just like lick stamps or something like that? I would love to show up to a charity two times a month and lick stamps for like six hours or like lick envelopes or whatever. But I honestly think that that's what I'm realizing. There's too much demand for that kind of work. What they need is people that are like, we're going to do like the logistics. They need people that are going to run the fucking show and like do shit that nobody wants to do. Everybody's like, if they're volunteering, everybody's like, I want to chop the carrots, you know? I, I want to, I, I would volunteer at a soup kitchen for sure, but I don't want to do the ladling. Because I'm not like a social butterfly. But I would love to be in the kitchen chopping up celery. I'm a celery. I'm really, you got to probably graduate to the celery cutter. Because that's easier on the joints. They're probably going to start you on potatoes or something like that. I'll be like, oh, I've got fucking carpal tunnel syndrome. Cutting up these damn potatoes. Oh, how'd, how'd you get the job as the person slicing the celery? Oh, my dad started this. So fuck you. Give me that celery. Shit drives me crazy, man. Same thing, I was thinking I could, maybe I could volunteer at the library, but I'm like, I bet that if you volunteer at the library, they're not like, hey, put these stacks of books away. They probably got like 10 years of uh, wait lists for people to put books away in the library. They'd be like, hey, guess what? The fucking shitter exploded. Get in there. <laughs> oh, no, again. And then there was another one... I saw that was like, you can drive senior citizens to like their medical appointments. And I was like, I could do that. But then I was like, ah, it's probably annoying sometimes. You gotta like talk to them on the way to the hospital and stuff like that. And like, that's not what I'm here for. I'll just put, I'll be the guy who drives with his AirPods in. <laughs> like, buddy, I'm just here for the, I'm here for the solitude of the drive. There's another volunteer that'll come and listen to the story, okay? It's just, I just, I'm not saying you shouldn't be allowed to tell it. I'm just saying it's not, it's not my area of expertise, okay? Also, I'm like, I don't want to... I don't know where to park. <laughs> Got to call them on the phone and be like, where could I park? And I bet they're not going to explain it that well. They're going to say some shit that I don't interface with. They're going to be like, park on the north side of the building. And I'm going to be like, what fucking side is the north side? Let me get out my astrolobe. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making shit up, basically. I'm like, I want to do stuff. And then, like, all the stuff that I think I want to do. I'm like, I don't want to do that. Are you crazy? I have to be stupid to do that for free. You got to pay me for that. <laughs> But all this shit that you would do for free is already taken by other people who started volunteering in like 1991. Yeah, like I, my, my dream for volunteering, I guess it's naive, but it's kind of based on like when you would volunteer for shit in like high school. Like don't they just need somebody who's like good at mental arithmetic that can man the, the cash box at the bake sale? And then I'm like, well, cookies are $2 each or three for five. And then they're like, I'll take three. And then they give me a 20 and I give them $15 back. Like, that's my dream volunteering job. Get a job at a grocery store? No, I just, like, because then they're going to want you to show up, like, whenever. My ass just kind of wants to be like, I don't have anything to do today. <laughs> but then I'm like, uh, I, rem I remember now that I'm like, oh, I have a kid. So, well, trust me, that time will get filled. Man goes without his PC for one day and loses his mind. <laughs> That's actually a perfect encapsulation, I think, of what happened. I was like, oh, I've got an hour of free time. Maybe I should volunteer for the rest of my life. When's the last time you went Goblin? It's a great question, unless you're going to say Goblin D's, <laughs> in which case never, I think. Depends who you are and where you went to college. Um... No, it doesn't. Well... Dave, is that you? <laughs> what does goblin mean? 
is when you're like a total trash human. It's been a while, man. Like, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not trying to ruin anybody's life or make them feel like shit or whatever. Sometimes I'm talking to Twitch chat about like hygiene, which is like my first mistake. And there's people in chat that are like, I was going to sell a penguin to buy a penguin. That's, that's where my head's at right now. There's people in chat where I'm like, you should brush your teeth two times a day. And they're at least, and they're like, why would I brush them in the morning when I already brush them at night? And I'm like, you're lost. Like, I'm sorry. It's just, <laughs> I, <laughs> I can't bring myself to that level of goblin. That level of goblin, it's been a long time. I don't know, since I was like eight. <laughs> Like, ate at a sleepover and I forgot a toothbrush. I'm like, I guess I won't brush my teeth. It's not like I drank three liters of Pepsi today. I don't know. I think it's just different strokes. Strokes for different focus <laughs> as well. I don't like being dirty. But I see, like, sometimes you'll see, like, a post on the internet that's like, my wife's been out of town for a week. I've been wearing the same shirt for seven days. Isn't that cool? And I'm like, no, buddy, your ass fucking, you're smelling your own... B.O. Moron. <laughs> like, I get it that you, like, you, you've gone nose blind to your own stench, but it's like, it's a problem you could solve in literally, like, a five minute shower. Like, this shit's just gross as hell. She should leave you. Well, maybe that's too far, but she's probably thinking about it. <laughs> You a naked sleeper? I've been thinking about... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a shirt and underwear guy. But I've been thinking about downgrading to just underwear. Maybe some people might consider it an upgrade and I'm flattered. But... I, I think it's nice and cool to sleep with uh, no shirt, no pants. People are going to laugh at me for this one. I think the reason I always want to keep underwear on is because I'm worried about experiencing testicular torsion. The odds of it happening, like my balls getting twisted up because I'm rolling around while I, while I sleep, is probably pretty low. But it's just for me, it's not worth the risk. Wear one of those rubber band things for your balls. What? <laughs> one of those what's for my what? That's called a cock ring? I don't think a cock ring is a rubber band that goes on your balls. You need a ball, though. Have they made it to market yet? I know they were... <laughs> really took the wind out of their sails when everybody started making fun of them like that. What do you think about the ball jacuzzi? <laughs> I don't know, like, listen. I don't even know what the ball jacuzzi is, but I can, like, come up with some expectations. By the way, thanks for the 10-piece yet again. This is the best Friday for SAP in, in history. I think... I'm not, I, this, you're going to have to just choose to believe me or not believe me on this one. I'm not trying to yuck anybody's yum, okay? Whatever you got going on in your life, they, whatever you need to get your thrills, it's probably okay with me. Being an illegal crook, the worst kind. But I feel like with all the inventions, the hedonistic inventions like that, I feel like you lose track of some of the simple pleasures of life. Like, once you got the ball jacuzzi, like, you're never going to be able to just go out on your back deck and, like, have a coffee while you watch the sunset or something like that, right? Because you're going to be like, yeah, this is nice, but, like, it's pretty fucking mellow compared to a jet of hot bubbles hitting me in the scrotum. Like, you, I feel like you sort of lose your connection to... <laughs> I could be getting my balls boiled right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's plus two for that. I, st I stole it from Chad. That was an all-time comment. I've been thinking more about that, because, like, I'm... You're always aging, of course. Like, when I was a kid, nothing was more annoying than, like, oh, on Saturday, you can't play ESPN NHL 2K5 because we got to go to your grandparents' house for, like, a family reunion and see... Um, like your uncle who lives in Nova Scotia who you haven't seen in five years. And I'm like, oh, uh, uh, eating hamburgers and hot dogs outside on a nice summer day, drinking lemonade and stuff like that and having old people be like, wow, you're doing really well in school. That shit is so annoying. I just want to go home and play with my toys. And now as an adult, I'm like, man, I got to start setting up like a family gathering or something like that. 
I'm, I'm getting down to like, I'm, I'm trying to get to the simple pleasures in life. A little bit of lawn mowing. A little bit of, uh, hey, the, the, the shelves in the refrigerator are not aligned the right way for our use case. Why don't we take everything out of the refrigerator, move one shelf up, move one shelf down? I don't need one big shelf that's really tall and then like two half-size shelves. I need two full-size shelves for all the bottles and stuff. Like those stock cold brews are pretty tall, man. I don't need like one quarter-size shelf. I can't even put a dozen eggs in there. Yeah, dude. Was any, is this thing on? Is anybody listening to me? <laughs> now, and then you, you talk to 22-year-olds in Twitch chat, and they're like, hey, have you done the Grimace Shake Mentos up your ass challenge? Have you had a Grimace Shake enema yet? It's the new hotness. And I'm like, brother, I'm sitting on a patio chair watching, watching pollinators. Like, I'm, I don't know if, if it's regressing or progressing, but... We're moving, that's for sure. You're going senile? I don't think it's senility. I think you just, you know, you do, oh, wow, well, maybe. What, we, what was the question? <laughs> I don't know, I just feel like the expansion of, like, the, what people request from a thrill, like, the, it's, it's getting so high these days, man. Like, back in the year 2000, I feel like people were like, oh, um, have you tried the new energy drink? It tastes like root beer, but it hits like a coffee. People were like, wow! Nowadays, you pop in the chat, and people are like, sorry, I was AFK getting my cock crushed with a sledgehammer. And everyone was like, again? Whoa, is it 2021? Is People are losing their fucking minds out here, man. What I'm trying to say is that we live in a sick world. <laughs> and I am a material girl. But you do you, like that's, I, I'm, I mean that without judgment. I'm just like, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you actually need the cock boiler to get off, then buy the cock boiler. But don't let society trick you into thinking that everybody needs the cock boiler. Some people need to have their cocks boiled. Some people are content with them just being at like ambient human body temperature. It's the same with like skydiving or dancing, you know? All I'm saying is these pro skydiving motherfuckers have been real quiet ever since the submarine imploded. Copium, I don't need the cock boiler. I don't need the cock boiler. Me waking up in the morning, I'm not gonna boil my cock today. Me at 4.30 p.m. Hey honey, I'm just heading out to the cock boiling store for a minute, be right back. <laughs> Me waking up, I don't think I'm gonna, you don't need to boil your cock to have fun. Me at 12 p.m., you know what would go really nice with this lunch? Mm, a boiled cock. After a baseball game, this is why I think climate change is real. 10 years old, finish a baseball game, all I need is a damn popsicle, and I'm back to 100%. 34 years old, walk to buy lunch, Come back into my house, I need two liters of Gatorade to feel normal again. You don't think your age is a factor? How could my age be a factor? Me at 10 years old? I'm hitting fucking 350, which is not good for the league that I was playing in. And I'm hitting singles, maybe doubles. If you drop my 34 year old ass into the same softball game that I was in at age 10, I'm telling you, I'm hitting the homers all fucking day. The balls are coming in at like 10 miles an hour and they've all got that fucking sexy little arc on them too. Like they're not laser beams. They all go like parabolic. They go like, and if you catch it like right here, it's just boom. You could send it to the moon, man. Every, <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> Every Little League team should be allowed to call in one of the dads for a pinch hit only once per game. Imagine if it was the bottom of the ninth 
you know, base is loaded, your team's down by three, and you're like, <laughs> Dale, we want Dale. We want the, the plumber that sponsored the jerseys this year, so all of our shirts say, say Dale's Plumbing. I guess they could just walk his ass, but... But little kids don't know any pitch strategy, man. Like, whenever they throw a strike or a ball, it's basically just random chance. It's the belt guy that moved me last week. So true. I saw him pick up the combination washer-dryer. All he did was wrap, like, a piece of duct tape around it. <laughs> wrap the duct tape around the small of his back. Took it to the elevator and said, Ah, it's taking too long. Walked it down eight flights of stairs to the parking garage. Dude, we're, we got no no Cheetos. Dude, that's a first. Yeah. We killed all those F-words. <laughs> we can do this. We can do this. Now, now I realize what... <laughs> oh, man. Okay, you can't put anything, even if it's high, you can't put it down yeah. straight or we lose. Or Our highest right. has to get slotted in that little left yeah. spot. Yeah. That's pretty high. Maybe. I think I, I, I think that's a great spot somewhere in there, wherever you can get it. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> okay. That's got to be oh, higher. No, no fucking idea. I, I, no I didn't think so. Idea. No idea. Oh, okay, okay. I trust you. When I went I to school, they told me starting salary for a veterinarian was 45 grand. Oh, uh, unemployed? Zero? <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> maybe not for long. Anyway. Uh, uh, gonna put it in that little spot I think, here. I think that's fair. My wife would never be mid. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is relatively low. I think we're fucked. <laughs> I think we're so fucked. I, I think it's you probably... Yeah, why not? They'll at least put the Cheeto in a good spot for us. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, Oof. okay. I was fucking like crazy. Um, what the fuck does that mean? I, I think this is probably fake even though it's a real job, so yeah. I'm going to put it in the trash. Micro influence? That's like when Mike Bloomberg pays you 20, 10 bucks to say you're voting for him. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Yeah, you gotta do what you can. Fuck. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, fuck, that's really high. Oh, oh. It's, it's all right, I got a spot. Um, heart surgeon, heart surgeon, yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> How is he doing? We still need the streak, though. <laughs> Podiatrist will probably be right now, higher, I think. But... Oh! Oh, 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 where we like lived! <laughs> oh, so All of these people funny. are rich. What the Look, hell? Dude, CPA was the lowest? Some important ones. Look at this. Oh, I guess, was this a survey of the highest paying jobs? <laughs> they tell us she would. Ooh, <laughs> what is it gonna be? Oh. Someone's gonna write like uh, oh, like the plank from Ed and Eddie. I don't know how old Chibli is, so I don't know what yeah, 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 cartoons yeah, yeah. he watched. Totally uh, I I have no idea, dude. Oh, I thought that was a funny answer. Jackbox. Jackbox what the like hell is Jackbox what like? What the fuck? Really? Oh. Oh, oh that's cute. Isn't that like the a... audience thinks I love the Queen. <clears throat> SpongeBob! Damn, that's Dude, fucked up. You wrote that, Ryan? I, I did. The same thing. Hey! Oh, <laughs> no, no, old no, old no, 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 no. You all fucking wrote SpongeBob! <laughs> all of you? <laughs> Dude! Holy oh, <laughs> Dude! What? <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> That's why they were the Jackbox line. I feel like I got scammed because I put a space in between Sponge and Bob. That could have been a game changer. 
That's so good. No, I'll take SpongeBob. I feel like I can. Oh. I, I can have some SpongeBob. I just can't name any other character. Like, <laughs> no wonder all the other answers were like pure ass. Ew. Who's Donnie Thornberry? What? That's the little fucked up one. Oh, the like the kid who's just like goes. <laughs> Yeah. I thought it was the guy with the nose. That's uh... That's Nigel. Oh, that's like, Nigel? Ah. Yeah. It was like, quite... <laughs> or something. You know what he says. <laughs> Does he say something like that? Uh. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, Ryan's getting real philosophical with yeah, it. Yeah, he's Ryan. really thinking about this shit. Where should I buy my fourth house? This guy's wow. crazy. Ryan. <laughs> should I, I raise really... the rent? <laughs> I want. I need Ryan to do a house tour like he's a 2015 Call of Duty commentator, dude. Dude, I just need I the need segue that. from that uh, sped up video where it says like uh, Hassan giving you a tour of his three million dollar essentials only house, and then it's the dude on the Segway zipping around at like 70 miles an hour. Oh man! Can he do that? I don't think so. That did it not was, sound was Italian. That, that sounded... <laughs> <laughs> I should have had us voice act Italian. What are the immortal elder names used in the acronym? The fuck? <laughs> I have no idea, man. This is real? What well. the hell? What about you in the audience? You'll win the pot again if no one picks the same slice you do. He's gonna, he's gonna hit 20,000 right here. Oh, I was one off. Wow. <laughs> is yours now what the hell what is this part of the game he's going dicko mode dude <laughs> i've dicko never mode? seen this what is this part of the game oh let's do a quick recap holy yeah, I've never seen that. always wins is this what <laughs> he's got 14 000 points man a little older a little wiser I do actually like this okay. game, I can't lie. Who was I really into in the oh. oh here we go and I'll follow up with some blues it's a band that was founded in 1990. Oh, God. I don't know when they... Oh! <laughs> Wait, you guys got it? Shit, Victor, we're crazy! I know, what? we're cracked. We're cracked. What is it? I don't know this! I wasn't alive in the 90s! Kind of. <laughs> Dude, we got that in eight seconds. That's it's pretty good, right? That's pretty yeah. fast. What was oh, your first guess gone, before you got a clue? I said Jennifer I Aniston. I said Will Smith. I said Leonardo. Fair enough. Okay. I think I said I tried to spell Britney Spears like five I times. Let's go. I put Adam Sandler. Very reasonable, yeah. reasonable guesses. Oh, that's a oh, few. Look at those solos. Cool. I got a solo. Start this spinning adventure you need to get on my uh, power slice. The only, I've only got one. Please. Hey! Oh, what's a fucking popcorn? Oh, what does it do? I'll laugh so hard Let's if he wins again. <laughs> oh, no. I think he will, Corey. Should I skull up the single player slices or the shared slices? Fucking skull up. What does that even skull, mean? Skull up the shares, the bro. Skull the singles. Skull the shares. What does that skull mean? Skull them singles. Go for chaos. Get rid of them, I think. I think. Go for yeah. chaos. Things the people with solos get fucked. Oh, that's but that's me. That's a lot of me. But I want the people with that's shared to get fucked. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Stop the steal. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I have no tiles now. <laughs> <It's gonna go laughs> Holy shit. The day I win this is going to go crazy, dude. It's going to happen one week, oh, I promise. No. That's a spin right there. Oh. Ah. Come on, that was oh, my really last right right Holy I cow. I lose 4,000 <laughs> points for that shit. That is kind of incredible. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Corey might just win. I'm just, my hands are shaking, man. Don't win. I want to keep playing. I love this game. Oh! oh. Not happening. <sighs> How come he doesn't lose 4,000 points? Because that was a winner. That's a different kind of skull. Tell me what you got. You mean different no kinds of skulls? Same thing. Yes. Yes. 
Why me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got money. I got Ryan's money. I'm getting so close Whoa. again, dude. No! No! Spin this shit. Spin it. Oh my god. Please fail. Please Come fail. On, 50%. Please. 50%. Boys, spin is about to yes! Oh, <laughs> Don't let it come true. Don't let Ryan. Please. Don't let Ryan take it. Please, there's so jam, many. Jam, jam. Just... No, power slice. Power oh, slice. Huh? Power slice. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> now the solos. Now get the solos. Oh, don't get, get the, the solo. Oh. Do you want my spin meter to fill up? Oh. Fill it. More mean? questions. Fill it. More questions. Everyone He's right. He's right. He's right. I love the will of mythicality, and the dude. Was... <laughs> Ooh. And so it shall be. Those other spins meant nothing to me. My power Last slice. Spin. Oh, there's still another. It's Corey. All right, Corey, you got to hit a power slice here. I'm in third. Spinner. This is massive for me. <laughs> oh, oh, I... No! Oh, my God. Oh. It landed on that one every single time. Let's go. <laughs> I don't have 20,000 anymore. Ryan's in first place. Uh -oh. <laughs> Earn the points back, quick. Yeah, but after this oh. round, everybody's going to be at 20,000, except Titanic. maybe Justin. Titanic. <laughs> Titanic. Please, please. please. Please, please, please. I'm gonna ease so these questions. I'm coming back. Funny, right? This feels like a much more of a game than you. I was in Holy. second. Maybe it was you. Chib, <laughs> how did Chib get in third? I'm a genius. That's Dude, why I knew everything. Could make it. He could make it. He's, he's, he's skull young slices. slices. The f I don't even know what that word means. Oh, I should, <laughs> <set the world laughs> record. I should know this. I should know this. I should know this. Um. What'd you guys guess? You oh, I was way wrong. I was way wrong. The correct answer? Oh! oh Seventy-five. <laughs> I didn't realize ten minutes for somebody. I just didn't. Ooh. I didn't absorb that. Wait, you broke the point limit too? Oh, this is getting interesting. Fuck! <laughs> We're gonna make the prophecy come true. <laughs> Ooh. Have another one. Oh! <laughs> The chosen one, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just keeps. Yeah, you know what? Here go two more for y'all. What might you say to yourself according to the talking heads here? It's my favorite song. I picked all of them. Dude, I have no clue. Hey, I remember when that song first. Came I picked out. way too it's many. The same as it ever was. No, I picked there's a lot of them. One, so you're okay. Oh wow. wow! All right. Hey, picking every single one doesn't work, guys. Just an FYI. They're so no. good. Another one. Fucking Jesus Christ! Holy cow! He's gonna have the whole peacock. wheel. I can still win this. Your you you this literally can. It's it is anybody's game. Well, pick a perfect holy <laughs> fuck, that's a lot of slices. I, I love this game. Can we do this instead of quick sort every week? <laughs> if you want, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a big I fan. I like it. I actually I like genuinely it like it. No one the wheel. Works. You're crazy. Over. I thought other people were going to go on. I picked every single one of these. Me and who's orange? Orion, probably? Me and who? Uh, Man, it's, why is this the wheel so fucked up? Speed. Whoa! This is it, man. You're going to get two spins, huh? Spin. You get a spin, spin, then I get a spin. Now, Corey. Corey spin just wins. Watch, he wins on the first wait. fucking one. Watch. No, please did. Please did. I want to keep going forever. Nope. Oh! Oh! Incredible. Very nice. How much? Wow. Oh, it's Borat, man. Very nice. It took you that long to type it? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of something. Incredible. What the fuck? As much as you can get! Oh! Oh. oh my god. It's. Damn. Play again. So, uh, I don't think I can. I gotta I gotta get out of here. He's gonna yeah, literally a new house. He's gotta go Ooh. to his other house. <laughs> I go buy his third house. Uh, <laughs> Alright, well, it's nice playing with you guys. So, I'll oh, fuck myself <laughs> later. I love you. The streak lives. The streak oh, lives. Man. I hope everyone has a cool day. You, you too. too. Thank you. 
Holy cow, man, what a game. <laughs> what a game. <laughs> Ooh. Dude, that was the most exciting game of the Wheel of Enormous Proportions that's ever been played. It only took 20 plays to get a good one? They're all good, brother, if you're the one on top. Yeah, yeah. Me at my kids' 14th birthday party. I'm like a cool dad drinking a seltzer. How you kids doing? Anybody need a ride? You want to go home? They're talking about R-rated movies. You don't want to be uncomfortable? We just recently let you watch PG-13s. No, I haven't seen Scream 2. I heard it's very gory. Good for you. Uh, please fade out. I can't keep this going forever. Bars, bars, bars.